Good, Good morning. morning. How's, How's it going? It going? <laughs> How do, How I, do sound? I sound? Do I sound good? Voice, Voice sounding, sounding excellent. excellent. Testing, testing. testing. <laughs> it's echoing. echoing. Okay. okay. Here, Here one, one second. second. How's that? Man, oh man. Still echo. Okay. Echo gone, fixed, better. Okay, perfect, wonderful. Okay. Okay, okay, we're good. Excellent. Yeah, just let me know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't really know the whole streaming thing so well. So, yeah, just let me know if it gets crazy or stupid or weird or whatever. Here, one second. I'm trying to figure out how to do this, uh, this music crap in the background here. Uno momento. Did that just explode your ears? I'm sorry if it did. Uh, David Salazar, thank you so much. That's uh, that, that does uh, put put some pep in my step. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. 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 How are we feeling? Can you hear the music in the background? Got no the uh got don't got the freaking echo anymore, that's good. Ask us to say something like one. Okay, everyone say one. So I can see what this delay is like. Oh, that's a ghoulish delay. That is a terrible delay right there. Oh, God. Not good. Not good at all. Okay, well. I guess we're just gonna plow forward. I don't, I don't really know how to remedy something like that. <laughs> eh, it's all good. I don't feel like fixing this stuff anymore. You guys can hear me. That's fine. Uh, I got the music's not blasting loud or anything like that. Um... See, maybe I could turn my voice up a little bit. Like somebody said, my voice was a little quiet, quieter. Maybe I could turn that up a tad. How's this? All right. Last, last check on the audio. How are we feeling about this? They don't stream snipe. I don't know what the, the definition of that is exactly. I'm like totally boomer over here with this shit. Music and voice is perfect. Excellent. Meh. Audio good. Seems good. Okay. 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 Excellent. Stream is starting shortly. I should probably change that to Dwarf Fortress. See if I can do that smoothly. Uh, there we go. Okay. Perfect little transition there. 
I learned how to do that this morning. I'm pretty proud of it. Okay, so, as you can see here, I'm gonna be checking checking in on the uh, chat every once in a while, I suppose, to make sure it's, uh, music is slightly loud now. Okay, I, well, I don't know what you want. We're gonna go with this for now. I got a brand new thing in Dwarf Fortress here. I'm gonna let the world generate, okay? We're gonna start something brand new. No frips, no frills, nothing, nothing too special. I think we're just gonna do a plain old Dwarf Fortress world and see how it goes. Create a new world. Yeah, no, 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 um, usually I would do the, uh, you know, like the advanced settings or whatever the hell, but I'm not gonna even worry about it today. Do a smaller world and you know what? I'm gonna keep all these settings as they are. It's probably gonna be fine. Let's see. There we go. Oh, I forgot. I used the um, used some other tile set for this one. It was for uh, Fang Mountain. One of the uh, short forts I did a while back. So that's why we have little bobcat statue icons in the world map there. Okay, so year 200, we're in the Goblin Age. This does not bode well for us dwarves. Okay, year 250, Goblin Age, in the Cyclopean Universes. Wonderful, let's do this. Except, I'm going to check in on you guys in just a second now. You know, I should probably get a second monitor so I can actually see what you guys are saying while I'm playing. That's going to be kind of a pain in my butt, I think. Here, one second. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. Uh, text that had those artifacts. Eh, I don't care. I'm a dwarf. I love my artifacts. Audio is crap. Music is slightly loud. Okay. 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 Open chat on my phone. That's an excellent idea over here with the, the galaxy brain. Here, I'll go find my phone. One, one second. One second. Headphone cable wrapped around my throat. One second. <laughs> My boomer tech skills are endearing. <laughs> we'll see if you're saying that another half hour after I'm uh, messing around my phone and crap, huh? <laughs> Here, one second. One second, one second. We're getting there. Do, 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 do. Is this... Is this a chat? I don't know what I'm looking at. I'll go find my phone, for fuck's sake, Krug. <laughs> yeah, it's just a vanilla game. Tartofu, thank you. It means a lot. I appreciate it. I'm gonna apologize for my creaky-ass chair, too. It has to hold up my gargantuan rump. It's... It's pretty haggard. It has had it. <laughs> okay, I think we're about good here, guys. Sorry about these delays. Just a learning process. You know how it goes. You guys are so kind. Thank you very much. I'm glad my audio is doing okay, too. Okay. Okay, we got our world. We're in the, the Goblin Age in the Cyclopean realm. Let's start playing, shall we? Hmm, how are we feeling right now? Dwarf Fortressy or Adventure E? Let's take a gander in that chat. I could really go either way, really, I think. Hey, Melifera, how's it going? Hell yes, hell yes. Pause the video, it's looking at live comments. That's the truth. Wholesome Krug. I try. I try. Back at you, Chief. Back at you. 
the BRB screen is up. Oh, let's <laughs> see technical difficulties. I'm still learning. Thank you very much. There we go. Boop. Wonderful. Adventure. Adventure. Fortress. Adventure. Fortress. Adventure. Adventure. Both adventure. I've seen a lot of adventures. Fortress. 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 Fort. 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 Legends. Hmm. Looks like we're going to have to have a flip of the coin there, my dwarves. Let's see. Let's see if I can even locate a coin in this day and age. Um. Mm -hmm. How about a D4? I can't really, uh, <laughs> you have to trust me, I suppose. One or a two will do adventure mode. It is a two. Okay. We're going to be playing adventure mode for now, anyways. And maybe, you know, uh, we'll play it for a bit. How about, like, what is it, 8.30 right now? Um, we'll see how far we can get in like, I don't know, maybe an hour. And then we'll switch over to fortress mode or something like that. And we'll just keep playing in this the same world and see if we can like populate it with a bunch of weird people or something. I think that'd be fun. Okay, so what are we going to play as is the question. We have a Vuz Kosat's hand, some sort of a necromancer creation of some variety a dwarf elf goblin hand of atir human hmm i always like my intelligent wilderness creatures they're just fun and so we're gonna do that i'm gonna hold up the up arrow and i'm not gonna look at the screen this is how i generally like to create my adventurers i'm not looking say three two one we are gonna <laughs> A slug man, wonderful. <laughs> Off to a great start. Uh, do we want to be from Agopisor, the Geared Confederacy, or Masami Rarami, the Cactus of Symmetry? That's got a good ring to it. I think it's an elf civilization. Yeah, what the hell? We could be a slug man hero from an elven civilization. This is this is not going to go well. I'm telling you, right right now, this is not going to go well. We're, we're <laughs> a trader by uh, by trade. That's terrible. We have no beliefs. Screen is cut to the left. Screen on the left is cut off. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I mean, okay. I don't really know. Okay, I guess I could just like make the whole thing a little bit smaller. There we go. That works, right? A little bit smaller. Just kind of fit it in there like that. Nice like. There we go. Wonderful. That's going to get the job done. Oh, thank you very much. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Urauro. I'm Scott. I'm so sorry I butchered that. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Appreciate it. Okay, there we go. That that should be better. Um, better fit on the screen, I believe. Man, you guys are great. I'll tell you that much. Okay, let's, let's get this going here. Um... Elven civilization. We're gonna be from. Hmm. I'm not sure which place. It looks like the civiliz this civilization is spread over the entire continent. It's very, uh, very sparse, very thinly spread. I guess we'll be hmm, over over here in the east. It looks pretty, pretty tame. Roars sprayed. Okay. We are emerged from the wilds and came to be a trader in roars sprayed in elven forest retreat. Okay. Okay. Now, as for our skills, let's see here. If we were smart, we would put more points in like, you know, strength and agility and stuff, but that's boring. So I'm gonna choose these at random too. I'm gonna look away and boop, create <laughs> creativity. Good, that'll be great. We're gonna choose another one. Let's see here, let's see here. Boop. Linguistic ability, oh cool, great. So stupid. All right, I'm gonna put one one little point in strength here and one in agility just to give us some sort of a chance if we have to fight anything. Let's see what else. Uh, recuperation. I I don't know what half of these do for our adventurer. Like while we're actually playing, probably nothing. But we'll see. I'm gonna put a point in patience just because you know patience as a hero is gonna be excellent. I don't know. The rest of these things here. Um. Okay. 
Well, just to give us some sort of a chance, I'm gonna put some points in Dodger, because, like, if you gotta fight something, you gotta be okay at dodging, all right? If you're not good at dodging, you're gonna get hit, get, get hit, period, you know? And in Dwarf Fortress, if you get hit once, it could be a career-ending mistake, you know? Let's see what else we got here. Dodger, um... Reader. I'm gonna put a point in reading, just because it's always fun in adventure mode. Get to read books. Possibly necromancer books. Always good, always good. Um, what else, though? And I don't know. This is not gonna go well. I keep saying that, but just just you wait and see. I'm spending all this time making the, the <laughs> freaking adventurer, but uh, they're going to be dead out the door. How about armor? User? Sure, I guess. Ambusher? Be good. Maybe we could sneak around and avoid being killed for a couple of moments. Its skin is Ekru. Wonderful. My, na <laughs> My name is Feci? That's terrible. Fisi Amui Pana. Okay. Creature workers. Wonderful. Personality. It is incredibly brave in the face of looming danger. Perhaps a bit foolhardy. <laughs> it doesn't handle stress well. It tends to be passive in discussions. It finds helping others emotionally rewarding. Okay. So we're going to be brave and helpful and incredibly stressed out. Cool. We have our spear. A, a Kapok spear. I think that's how it's pronounced. Bunch of really bad elven clothing. No armor whatsoever. Whew. Yeah, that's rough. That's real rough. Um. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's see what else we can have here. I don't think we can have that much because because we're from an elven civilization. The most we can get is like wooden stuff. You know. Um. Hmm. We got 255 points. I think actually the first thing we should do before we do that is look at the mounts and pets over here because elves although they don't have good armor and weapons and stuff they do have a lot of you know access to cool animals which could be beneficial so let's see maybe we could just cram a bunch of points into getting something that's like like you know we can get an elephant maybe it could be handy actually we can get just straight up and get an elephant and not have any points for anything else hmm is that going to be good, though? Like, man, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we could get something that's flying. Flying animal might be good. Hmm. Let's have a look here. I'm going to give it a second and maybe go down the list here. And you guys can take a gander and just shout out anything that sounds cool. We got giant. We got a bunch of giant animals here. Could be good. Giant fox giant gray linger. I don't know if I can ride all of these things or what. Giant moose. Crap. That'd be huge. Not to mention, I mean, got giant, giant porcupine. Can I ride that? Probably. Elephant riding slug. Elephant. Okay. Salt. Mm -hmm. Slug down a cheetah on a cheetah. Hmm. That's a cool idea. Do they have a giant cheetah? Can I get that? Let's see. hard to parse through this list sometimes. I don't see Cheetah. This is going to be upsetting to me. I'm upset. My day is ruined. A gorilla. <laughs> a gorilla. Hmm. Can, I, can I ride a gorilla? I kind of like the idea of getting a gorilla and trying to ride the gorilla, but mm, yeah, what the hell? I'm going to get a gorilla. His name is Nakalo Walkedfords, or Bira Roro. <laughs> Bira Romimi. Wow, that's terrible. Nakalo Bira Re Romimi. I'm not going to try that again. We're just going to be all set. Nakalo is what we'll call them. Four points remaining. Actually, let's not let those, those go to waste. <laughs> what could we purchase for four points? A. Eh? How about, uh, look back at equipment here. New. Hmm. Fruits and nuts. Oh, banana. Excellent. Wonderful. Good to go. Got our bananas. Got our gorilla. Adventure. Let's get it underway. Let's go, Feces. That's terrible. 
You finally got your equipment together, such as it is. Now it's time for action and adventure. In the rush of excitement, you've forgotten where you were going to go. Perhaps some of your friends here can remind you. Okay, I guess we'll see. Now, the big question is, can I ride on this gorilla? If I can't, my day is going to be ruined. Cannot ri I cannot ride the gorilla. That is terrible. My goodness, you guys are freaking too nice to me. John Russell and Kadaba, thank you very much. Thank you, that, that means a lot, my guys. My bearded bastards. Man, I really hope I don't miss seeing any of those. Um, okay, so, having a look up here. We got a bunch of people sitting in this tavern. That's what this is, this is an elven tavern. It's horrible looking, it's really just like a big sandy square with a bunch of furniture and stuff. Let's see what we got on the ground here. Smooth mudstone, got some sand. You know, this might actually be a good time too for an adventurer, uh, adventure mode tutorial sort of a thing. We're not going to get too tutorial-y with this, but like, I, I hear a lot of people say that adventure mode is difficult to understand, and like, I guess I get it, but it's a lot easier than fortress mode, so I, I don't really understand where that comes from. Like this, I'm just moving around with the arrow keys right now. Super easy. You can see on, you know, there's like people here. Got this guy right here. It's a, a human warrior. Up here, we have a goblin. Probably a traitor, architect, some sort of noble position. You can hit L to look around. Goblin Bard is who this is. Nako no song ordax. Okay, over here we have a human. The human animal dissector. If B Karbudzu. Up here we got another human. The sacred muffin. Stozu. <laughs> Kastatu. Excellent. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Everyone's just hanging out here. It's rainy, but not in the tavern here. Actually, we can look upwards, too. And we can see the ceiling of the tavern. Got some pine branches here. It's a big tavern made of a, a pine tree, seemingly. Excellent. Now, um, I'm ready for my adventure. This gorilla is going to suck it. I've wasted, I've wasted my points on a gorilla. I can guarantee this thing dies straight off the bat. I'm not going to be able to control it at all unless I, like, lead it around all the time, which I guess I could do. Let's go. Nikalo. Actually, if we have a look over here, sometimes elves have like little pastures with a bunch of tamed animals, which I believe this is. Um, they don't have anything good though. It looks like they've got iguanas, dingoes, and uh, pea hens. That's, I mean, it's not good. I was hoping for like, you know, I've had games before where you'll see their pens and they're filled with giant elephants that you could just take and ride away on and claim as your own, but no, we got iguanas and dingoes. Not good. Well, they might have something actually over here. It looks like I'm going to bet these are horses. Uh, a stray chubby horse. Okay. Excellent. That could be good. I can, I can ride a horse. A slug man riding a horse. That poor horse. <laughs> Just laying across its back. Yeah, I don't, I don't see much else, anything. Um, what are these? Guinea hen? A, a gibbon, okay. I could claim these gibbon, but it just wouldn't, uh, I can't really pass up a monkey now, can I? I cannot. I'm going to claim this silvery gibbon. So now we have a gibbon and a gorilla. Let's see how this goes. All right, now I am I'm said I am brave, I am helpful. Um, so, I guess we should probably talk to some people and figure out how we can help, eh? How about this guy? The Dwarf Tavern Keeper, Delair Kolsarek. Uh, let's see what your deal is. I'm gonna greet this person. Hello, Delair. Hello, it's good to see you. The Serpent of Food greets you. Hopefully your friends can dissuade you from this foolishness. I imagine... This dwarf gesturing towards the, the gorilla and gibbon, as they say this. Um, let's see here. I'm going to inquire about troubles. How have things been? Well, let's see. We've got beasts, bandits, skulking vermin, bone-chilling horror, and the missing treasure. Hmm. Which of these sound interesting? Chat, which of these sound interesting? You tell me. As I check in on the chat and see what technical issues I'm currently experiencing. <laughs> Can the gorilla ride a horse with you? My god, that'd be amazing. No, unfortunately, that'd be really cool. But turn the music down a little bit, please. Like 5 to 10%. Um, mm, 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 mm. Is the music too loud? 
my bearded bastards? Let me know. Giving me the DF itch. Bone chilling horror. Bandit. Bone chilling horror. Vermin. Missing treasure. Treasure. Horror. Missing treasure. I don't know. A couple of you guys are pretty quick on the horror train there. I think I'm going to have to go for that. Music's fine. Mic sound is a bit low. Turn up my gain a little bit. How about that? Give me an extra second. Tad too loud. Okay. We're all over the place here. I'm, I'm, it's probably fine. Horror, horror. Yeah, okay. We are going to go for the horror, I suppose. Let's have... Uh, uh, let's continue on. Ask about the bone-chilling horror. Tell me about the bone-chilling horror. There are foul goings-on over at the Fort of Sunken Flame. Okay. Um... I will ask for directions. Can you tell me the way to Sunken Flame? Sunken Flame is far to the south. You receive a detailed description. In the mid-spring of 237, the Plains of Veiling constructed Sunken Flame. Okay. Let's have a look at our map. Alright. Is, uh... Okay, this is it right here. So, you can see our map up in the top left there. You can see me, my little dwarf icon. And you can see the, the flashing circle. That's the location. So it is to the south. But we know exactly where it is now. I don't really know what this quest entails exactly. Uh, the guy really just said, Bone chilling horror in the places over here. I don't know what this horror entails. I'd like to know before I get there, but... Who could say? <laughs> well, I guess we're going to find out together now, won't we? So we got our gibbon, we got our gorilla, and we're just going to head off on an adventure. Let's have a look at our equipment real quick. We have a kapok spear, loincloth, skirt, dress robe, wood cap, uh, uh, gloves, backpack, water skin. Really not a whole heck of a lot. We got our two bananas too. That's in my right hand. I wonder if I can, um, let's see if I can give the banana to the gorilla, to Nicalo, sorry. Hello, Nicalo. It's great to have a friend like you. Let's see if I can exchange. Here's something you might be interested in. The gorilla just looks at me, dumbfounded. I can't really exchange anything. I don't think the gorilla has like a inventory per se. Um, let's see. Ask favor, make a demand. Demand an item. Oh, okay, okay, I'm demanding an item, but maybe I can like foist this banana upon, I'll give you one, one banana for you. Can I, can I foist? There's no foist option. I cannot foist a banana upon Nicalo, sorry. Well, that, that really stinks. Here, maybe I can just throw it at Nicalo. I'm going to throw my banana, one banana, at Nicalo. Womp, he jumps away. He? She? Well, I guess I don't know. Uh-oh, that's not good. Nicalo did not like me throwing a banana at uh, Nicalo. Uh-oh, that's even worse. It looks like the, the gibbon is... Since the rage of Nicalo after the banana tossing and has started attacking the gorilla. This gives me a second to escape. So I, I'm not too sure of my previous relationship with Nicalo, but I imagine it was shaky at best. Because, boy, I, I really, I can't tell what's going on here. It looks like the gorilla is now running away from the gibbon. Greatly afeared. I, I now have no monkeys. But the gibbon is returning now extremely gravely wounded. Let's have a... Okay. So the gibbon went off where I couldn't see it for a second, and now it's coming back just wounded. Um, it's faint. It is faint. Looks like uh, her right front foot is cut open. Her right rear leg is cut open. Her left rear leg is cut open. Both their legs are just torn open now. Faint from blood loss. No, come, come, help me. Come, where, where did you go? Oh, I'm just. This is a sad story right now. A real tragedy. We have a slug man with no monkeys to speak of. <laughs> I just meet this person on the road here. Human herbalist. Belza Abanra. Uh, whatever. Listen, I'm going through some stuff here. Oh, oh. Oh me oh my. We have some orangutans here. Just sitting in this grove. Looks like we might have some monkeys after all, my friends. <laughs> Wonderful. Crazy Monk 27. Uh, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Monkey, too. 
That's wonderful. Keeping up our, our monkey themed adventure today. Uh, I think I'm gonna grab these orangutans just, you know, just cause. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna claim an orangutan. I'm gonna claim this orangutan right here. And this one right here. So, hey, we're back in business. We got our three, three orangutans <laughs> and we're heading to, heading to the south. I can't ride these by chance, can I? No, I cannot. I didn't think so, but you know, it's not gonna hurt to try, right? Hey, look at this. Is that another orangutan? I wonder if Gibbon came back too, that's good. Uh, no, <laughs> I thought it was an orangutan. It was just a tree trunk, you know. At that distance, they kind of look the same. <laughs> Let's do our fortress for you. Okay, we're heading to the south. Let's go. We got our Gibbon, our gravely wounded Gibbon, who I did not think was going to survive, and our three orangutans. Heading to the south. Looks like we have a temple here over to our right. That's pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure what it's a temple to exactly. Let's have a look in. On the ground, we have a Ranu Rosmo. What is this? The Cinnamon Butters. A large linen cloak. Oh, it's an artifact. Hmm. This is a large linen cloak. It is sized for humans. It is encrusted with round native platinum cabochons and encircled with bands of sandy loam. It is made from linen cloth. Interesting. Well, I mean, I am kind of a troublemaker. Maybe I'll just snag this real quick. Let's see what else we got. Uh, we have a die here. Hmm. And, ooh, looks like we have another artifact. A totem, I believe. Berry breakfast, the apple of harvesters. A human skull totem. With no frips or frills about it. I'm gonna leave that one, just cause it doesn't seem very interesting. But we have a die here on the ground. I'm gonna grab that. And I think I can roll it. I believe this is a, you know, something I can, um, what's the word? You get the word from the gods. I forget what the, uh, the word is for it. Where did I put it? Oh, it's in my, okay. So Dwarf Fortress is weird like this where I've got two items in my hands. So I just, I, I pick up the dice and I put it in my backpack, right? But you can only use the die if it's in your hand. It's, it's kind of weird sometimes. I'm gonna put the stuff in my hands into my backpack. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll eat this banana as a show of force for the uh, the remaining apes that I have with me. Um, okay, all right, let me see here. I gotta drop the die on the ground and then pick it up and now it's in my hand. <laughs> I say adventure mode is easy, then I go and do this sort of stuff. You can only use the die if it's in your hand. I don't know, man. I guess I'm just... I think I'm so used to Dwarf Fortress now that I don't even see how difficult it could be for new people. So, to take everything I say with a grain of salt. It's an incredibly complex game sometimes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to roll the die. Let's see here. You roll, divining the will of Tickbo, according to the practice of the Buttery Fellowship. The con conglomerate oct octahedral die shows five. Have faith and all shall be rejuvenated. Okay. Okay. I will have faith in Tickbo, I suppose. I'm, I don't know who Tickbo is. Maybe it's someone I worship. Let's have a look. Hmm. Does it say that anywhere? No, it said I don't believe in anything when I was making the um, character originally. VC does not believe in any gods. But I will take this and uh, remember it always. I will have faith that my apes and monkeys will pull us through. All right, we're gonna enter travel mode here and speed things up a little bit. Heading to the south. It said, I think it said a long distance to the south for this place, but I'm relatively unsure. Let me check that map again. Yeah, it's a good distance down there. A couple days travel at least. We'll try to keep it quick, avoid any trouble. You know what, actually we should be hunting down trouble and getting some sort of skill in combat, which we do not have at all. Ooh, some turkeys. I'm gonna scramble at them. Gotta remember that slugs do not, slug men do not have uh, legs. And so the most we could do is like kind of like scramble around. <laughs> yeah, th this isn't gonna go well. I keep saying it, but um, yeah, I, I just hit a turkey there and my orangutans have followed my lead and are just going absolutely ape at these guys, which is extremely apt. 
just beating down some turkeys right now. I don't think they gain skill because they're not like intelligent really. Like Dwarf Fortress doesn't class them as intelligent. In reality, they are quite intelligent, but um, they won't actually gain like combat skills from fighting, which is a damn shame. It looks like they're all just like they're they're all fought out. They're just tired now. <laughs> The Gibbon, though. Gibbon's going to town over here, just chasing down a turkey. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Getting tired, apparently. Go get him. Go get him. What is a Gibbon's name? I like the, I like its spirit. Oh, it doesn't have a name. Okay. We'll have to give this Gibbon a name. Where are you going? Hard to keep up. Let's go. Did you give up? No, it's right over there. Go ahead. Go finish it off. All right, you're getting a name. Come here, Gibbon. Uh, I'm gonna greet you. Uh, my name is Feci, Creature Workers. How do I name this thing? I forget. Lead the Silvery Gibbon. I think I can name it just by talking to it or something. Um, name Pat. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. So it's this whole thing here. I can like use the pre generated word sort of a thing to come up with a name for this gibbon. Hmm. But I don't know what. McCarthy? Tira? Omo? Almost kind of cute. But it's past now. I don't know how to get back there. First name. Oh, I could type in whatever I want for the first name. Uh. Hmm. What are we going to name this gibbon chat? Match Beast is a cool last name. I like that. Let's see. Let's see. What do we think, chat? What's a good name for this gibbon? Ale. Name it Ale. Okay. Just just Ale? The Relentless Monkey. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gibbs is good. <laughs> I like that. Mr. Gibbs. Rafiki. Mr. Gibbs, we got a couple Mr. Gibbs in there. Biter, Gibbous. <laughs> I like Gibbous. I like that. Gibbous, Gibbous Match Beasts. Oh man, now that we've named it though, it's gonna be dead. Like you get that right? It's gonna be dead soon. What's this over here? Let's see. A bull moose. A worthy opponent. All right. Okay. I'm gonna go in slow mo here. Explain what I'm doing. I've dropped down to the ground. I am I'm slithering on the ground like a like a real slug. Uh, actually, I'm gonna release this gibbon, then drop down to the ground. And now we're gonna go real slow, creeping and sneaking over yonder way towards Yon Moose, which you can see by its little um, sight radius. There is looking away. This is perfect. I'm being tailed by a trio of orangutans, though, so I don't know how stealthy I'm actually being. <laughs> but let's see. I'm going to sneak right on up. Real close. Just like that. We're going to take a shot at the moose. We're going to strike it right in its dumb moose uh, throat with my spear. We're going to stab it right in the throat with my spear. Weak. Okay, you silently stab the bull moose in the throat from behind with your kapok spear, tearing the skin. The force bends the neck. Attack monkeys, go! I'll try to take another hit real quick. Actually, you know what? Before we do anything else, I'm going to speed back up. Up to a scramble. Stand to my feet. And, uh, okay. It's, it's off. There's no way I'm going to be able to catch up to this thing. But, ugh, I can't jump. Jumping's really good in adventure mode. But, there's no way. Yeah, thing's off. Took up to the north. I might be able to catch up to it, though. It seems confused. Orangutans, pick up the trail. Go. <laughs> My tracking apes. Get it. Kill. I'm trying to look at the ground for tracks, just in case I lose sight of it, but... I have no tracking skill whatsoever. I can't chase this thing down. Every time I get up to it, it runs away. I could potentially... Uh, maybe circle around. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Get up to it. Okay, it looks like one of the orangutans bit, bit the bull moose in the right antler from behind. <laughs> and it latched on firmly. Okay, it's a terrifying mental image. But yes, it seems to be working. 
The bull moose breaks the grip and kicks the orangutan in the left front foot with its right rear hoof bruising the skin. Uh, then it charged at the orangutan, which it knocked backwards. And now the moose looks to be trying to escape again. Am I still sneaking? I don't want to sneak. Okay, no, no sneaking. And we're going to scramble too. I thought it was going faster. Apparently not. Chase this thing. Okay, okay, there we go. There we go. Catch up to it. There we go. The orangutans are getting at it. Oh man, someone took a hit right there. The orangutan scratched the bull moose in the left front leg. Let's get it. Let's get it. We, we can't let it get away at this point. Come on. Ah, damn it. We keep getting right up to it and then it runs away. Maybe I can circle around this tree here. Oh. Possibly? No. No. Not even. Not even kinda. Oh well. I'm getting uh, tired at this point. The, the slug is getting tired at this point, so... Maybe I'll just stop. Come on over here, you orangutans. Stop it. We're, the fight's over. Oh, yeah. There's Gibbous. Hey, Gibbous. Where, where the hell were you just then? This whole time. We need you in this fight. That's exactly why this isn't going so well. I'm, like, over here. I'm trying to crawl as fast as I can, but I'm, like, falling unconscious at this point. Oh, no. <laughs> one, of our, one of our orangutans was hit. Let's have a look. Winded. Upper spine has been damaged. That's not good. His left front foot is bruised, his head is bruised, his neck is torn open. Hmm. Skull is bruised. No bueno, no bueno. Uh, fun fact, a group of orangutans is called a buffoonery. Huh, okay. Awesome, thank you very much. That's actually, I, I love learning that sort of information. Oddly enough, uh, in, the, in that pumpkin episode I just did, I realized a group of badgers is called a seat. C-E-T-E. Who would have thunk? Oh no, our orangutan died. I didn't think it was that bad of a hit. Oh, that's a that's a damn shame right there. So, I mean, right at the current time, we have a gibbon and an orangutan, and is that it? I don't know where the other orangutan went. Hmm, they're not here though. Yeah, that's it. We got uh, me, gibbous, and orangutan. <sighs> well, this is a sad day. A sad day indeed. The only thing we can do now is just butcher this orangutan and not let its corpse go to waste. So, we're gonna take its meat. Can I? I mean, I would assume I could just eat this stuff, right? Like, it won't let me eat, uh, like, intelligent people meat if you butcher them, which, thankfully, is the case. But, uh, I don't think it classes orangutans as intelligent, as I said before. Oh, yeah, you could just eat orangutan meat, no problem. Just raw, flabby orangutan meat. Excellent. <laughs> Hardly effed up at all. See on the ground we have some orangutan fat, skin, bone, its skull. I should do something with that skull. I can't just leave that behind. And maybe it's bone too. Um, I'm going to take the orangutan's bone and we will... I'm going to create. I'm going to carve bone. I'm going to make a figurine. Oh man, I can't do that. Maybe I have to, I always forget how it works exactly. Um, maybe I have to put the bone on the ground. Then I can create a figurine. There we go, a regular bone. We can carve the bone with my Kapok spear, which makes no sense at all. But let's see how it goes. And I'm just gonna let my mind wander. We'll carve whatever. Actually, you know what, maybe I'll, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create a, um, Historical figure, and my name is Fisi. Fisi Creature Workers. I'm gonna create a figure of myself. You make an orangutan bone figurine of Fisi Creature Workers. Excellent. Is that is that it? Like, is I would assume I'm doing something. Uh, no. Just pretty straightforward. Okay. I've done that, but I, we still have some bone, too, so I'm going to carve another one. I thought... Oh, right, I left it on the ground. There we go. I'm going to create another one. Another orangutan bone figurine of nothing in particular. I'm going to let my... I'm going to let feces mind wander. Uh, okay. We've made a orangutan bone figurine of monarch butterfly men. Wow, that is wonderful, isn't it? 
Okay, so we have our two figurines here, Monarch Butterfly Men, and one of myself that I made. As well as a whole slew of orangutan meat. Um, I, I think this is slowing me down considerably, actually. I can't really carry all too much. Let me see here. Yeah, my speed right now is like half of what it should be, I believe. Let's see how much it goes up if I drop this meat. Yeah, the meat is incredibly heavy. Believe it or not, like I, I don't know how big a slug man is in Dwarf Fortress, but I would imagine it's probably like half the size of a dwarf or something like that. Yeah, one second, I'm gonna catch up on chat. Rough says most evil. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, do -do 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 -do. Let's see here. Ah, yeah, species craft. I am I'm a master orangutan bone carver. So that meat is pretty darn heavy. Um, I'm thinking I should probably just... I'm going to pick up a couple pieces of it. There we go. That didn't slow me down at all. I'll just eat what I can for now. There we go. I'm starting to feel full. But I'll grab a couple more pieces for the road. The old dusty trail, as we call it. Okay. I got three pieces with me. We got our orangutan. We have our gibbon. I should probably name this orangutan our last remaining orangutan. Let's do that. I'm going to... I'm going to greet the listener. Greetings. My name is Feci Creature Workers. And I'm going to name the orangutan. Uh, what should we name this orangutan? What do you think? What do you think? I'll, I'll leave it up to you, chat. I, I do kind of like the last name Breach Flower, though. Efeka Sima. It's, it's lovely, lovely. Ain't it? Odd Mimic, thank you. Hey, Krug, would you be interested in possibly collabing with another artist for one of your future vids? Love your stuff. I I would consider it. I'm considering it more and more these days, honestly. Like, yeah, it would be pretty cool. Absolutely. Name it. Number one, the loneliest number. Len Ki Kong. Len Ki Kong? <laughs> Sharkle? Brumbo, lanky. Well, you know, maybe we can actually here before we jump into that. I'm gonna take a look at this guy. Let's uh get a description. A huge intelligent ape found in the tropical forests. It is bright red and found it. It is bright red and found living in the trees. He is short and not very strong. His hair is orange. His skin is sepia. His eyes are brown. He's short and not strong, so he's just a frail little guy. <laughs> oh my god. Wonderful. Okay. Here, uh, jumping back to that name thing. I'm going to name. Name. Where the hell is it? Name. Am I not, why am I. I'm not seeing it. Oh, did I. Did I. Ugh, okay, I named it Lolly Breach Flower. Damn it. I didn't mean to. Okay, so we have Gibbous and Lolly, which I don't I don't love, believe it or not. Here's the corpse of our other orangutan. Damn it. I'm not gonna say Lolly either. We'll say we'll say Lally. Lally? We'll call him Breach. How about that's got a cool ring to it. I'm gonna butcher this corpse. Okay. And we're gonna take this skull, as per tradition, as well as the bones. Which are incredibly heavy. You can see down at the bottom right there, our speed. It's now 0 .641. I don't know what that means exactly. But I know that the higher it is, the more uh, fast I can go. Or something like that. The more efficient I am with my actions or something. Um, so, I'm gonna... Yeah, I guess I'll drop some of these, these bones here. Maybe I could take a couple for the road, though. You know, we get bored one night. It'd be nice to have some bones. Oh, man, I picked them all up again. Drop them. Drop them on the ground. I'm going to take a couple. Oh, I thought I could pick up just a couple, but maybe not. That's fine. We got our skulls, at least, and our meat. So, that's going to have to do. Oh, there's a damn moose. I'm pissed. Let's go. We're not going to let it get away this time. Even if it costs all of our apes. Gibbous caught up to it. 
Gibbous bit the bull moose, which is now named Tima Casina, in the left front leg, tearing the skin and bruising the fat. Boy, this Gibbous, I'll tell you, already building its legend. We gotta catch up with this thing. We can't let it get away now. Gibbous. Gibbous bites the bull moose in the left rear leg from behind and latched on firmly. Let's get up there. Oh, this is gonna end badly. Come on. Come on. Damn it all. Maybe I could throw one of these orangutan skulls at it. Yeah. Ah, missed. Crap. Okay, it's gone again. Right, at this point, it's just taunting us. We cannot let this moose get away. Where the hell are those apes? Get back over here. Don't go running off. <laughs> Can't let anything happen to you. I got no one else left in this world. Uh, I think they're both still out there somewhere. That's what it looks to be the case anyways. They're both down to the southeast somewhere. Hello? Hello? My fear is that I'll just keep walking and then, like, see them dead somewhere. But they're up to the northeast now, apparently. Hello? Monkeys? Is that damn moose? Maybe I can, I, it looks like it's heading over to the west. Maybe I can, like, cut it off or something. We have our faithful... <laughs> Where are you guys going? They're just chasing this moose like crazy. It is their one mission in life. This has become our quest now, killing this, this one moose that did literally nothing to us besides defend itself. This lally uh, keeps biting. That's good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gibbous was kicked in the lower body. Uh, bruised Gibbous's guts. Well, I think Gibbous is still doing fine, which is great. Let's have a look up here. That's sand. Sand and uh, guts kind of look the same sometimes. Oh my goodness. Uh, Brandon, challenge. Write the complete lyrics of getting jiggy with it, but looking up monsters? Uh, what? I don't really know what that means exactly, but thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Let's have a look over here. Okay, okay, right. We're chasing this moose. Um, I mean, I, I hope you're into this moose chase stuff because, like, this is just what's. Oh, 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 oh. I think I think it's going down down there. Let's have a look. Okay, something's going on. We just had a pretty big chunk of combat. Gibbous and Lally are both biting the moose. Ooh. Gibbous collapses and falls to the ground from overexertion. Hmm. Okay. Let's get in there. Moving up to a scramble. Okay. 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 We're down here now. Uh, Orangutan and Gibbon both latching on. I'm going to try to take a hit. Let's go. I can hit this thing in no good spot. I'm going to go for the lower body, I suppose. And I'm going to take a big, strong hit. A heavy attack. A, a stab with my spear. Okay. Okay. Uh, I stabbed it, bruising the pancreas. Okay, it looks like the moose is actually having a pretty bad time right now. Let's have a look. Heavily bleeding. Uh, ooh, ooh, yeah, that's bad. Bleeding all over the place. We may have slowed it down. I don't think it's going to be able to escape appropriately now. Let's take a couple of just blind shots. I stab it. The attack glances away. Of course it does. I'm going to aim again. I'm going to go for its... We'll go for its... Hmm, I don't really know. We'll go for its head, I guess. Strong hit. Stab. Bink. Tearing the fat. Pulling the muscle. Man, this is a this is a tough fight right here. <laughs> you strike the bull moose in the upper body from behind with your orangutan bone figurine of monarch butterfly men. Okay. I mean, just going with those unique tactics, I suppose. Let's keep slamming away. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, yeah, this thing ain't getting away now. The, mo the moose is vomiting. Vomiting? The orangutan? Going absolutely crazy? I would imagine I'd like to think that the gibbon and orangutan are both just like screaming and hooting right now as moose blood flies through the forest air. Everyone's just going crazy. Slugman going insane over here just striking with his moose bone or uh, orangutan bone figurine of monarch butterfly men. See, this is... 
you got to take a second. You know, life goes so fast sometimes, but you really just got to appreciate what Dwarf Fortress can provide you with, right? Like, what other game could you see this in? We have a slug man adventurer with his finely crafted moose bone, or <laughs> I keep saying that. You know what I mean. I mean, just imagine just how beautiful this is right here. Just like picture it. It's lovely. Let's go. Let's keep slamming away. We're just <laughs> pounding this poor moose, which is, I believe, unconscious on the ground. Yeah, the moose is, uh, it's passing out now. Um, uh, it looks like an artery is just open. So this thing does not have much longer to live, I don't think. There we go. Good job, team. Team. Good job. We've done it. Look at this this deadly encounter that we've just saw our way through right here. The orangutan stands up. The gibbon's still on the ground. Let's hope they're not terribly wounded. Let's see. How you doing, Lally? His head is torn open. His head is bruised. His right ear is mangled beyond recognition. That's good. That's good, though. Nice scar for your efforts. Treasure it. Gibbous, how you doing? Not quite as good as Lally. Overexerted on the ground, covered with gibbon blood. Her lower body is bruised. Her guts is mangled beyond recognition. I love the dwarven grammar. Wonderful. Look at these scars. Her right front foot bears a massive straight scar. Her right rear leg bears a massive straight scar. Just scarred up. Many more to come, my friend. Many more. This is wonderful. You know what? I think for the occasion, we're going to butcher... Tima Casina, the moose's corpse, with my K-Pox spear. And I'm going to grab... Can I carve the antlers? I don't think so. Let's give it a try. I'm going to create bone. Uh, let's see. I think it would specify antler if I could use its antler. But I don't think so. I think I'm going to get decked out in rings. Make a moose bone ring. Okay, rings and like we'll just make a bunch of other little adornments, a little accoutrements for our slug man. How about sound good? We'll keep carving. We'll make an earring. Do I? I don't believe I have ears, right? Like, <laughs> could I? Could I do that? Shoe off the bots. Where are these bots? Give me, give me a bot. Remember to report bots. What a, what a bots look like? Tell me what a bot looks like. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh no, you got the sex bots. Oh shit, there they are. God damn, get out of here. I don't want you. <laughs> Your own second. Get out of here, you. Can I, uh. I don't, I don't know how, how do. How do. It's fine, just ignore it for now, I suppose. Uh, anyways, okay, so we're gonna create bone probably need two earrings assuming I can even wear the things I don't I doubt I can I suppose but we'll see uh, rings I think I could wear two rings bone amulet sounds good what else create bone bracelet gotta have a bracelet got it create bone two bracelets why not let's do it create uh, a crown There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, I'm, I'm holding all of these things right now. Right. Uh, I'm going to just wear everything. Ring, ring, amulet, bracelet, bracelet, crown. I cannot wear the earrings. Not a huge surprise, I suppose. I'm going to drop those in the ground. An artifact for a future adventurer to find. A couple earrings. Um... I... Uh, you know what? I'm going to drop my figurine of PC creature workers, too. Just so, I, I, my hope is that someday in the distant future, somebody could be wandering this uh, this forest-bound glade here and come across this figurine of VC creature workers next to this titanic, indomitable moose skeleton and be like, wow, that slug man must have did this. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen, but we'll see. Man, Gibbous, I don't think, is doing so good, guys. Hate to tell you, but Gibbous is not standing up anymore. I don't want to have to put you down, my friend. You know what? We'll give it a little rest, actually. We're going to head over here, and I think we've deserved, we deserve a rest at this point. So we're going to head over this way, make a little camp. 
Actually, can we find a river or something? Here we go. Right down here. Here we go. Okay, Gibbous is up now. Shaking off some blood, it looks like. I thought they, were, they just started bleeding, but nah, I think she's good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Head down to this brook. And I'm gonna make for us a nice little, a nice little warm campfire here. There we go. Just relax, guys. Relax by the fire. Don't let the smoke get in your eyes. There you go. I do kind of appreciate how Gibbous like came over and like rested directly on top of me. I imagine Gibbous is just wrapping her her long, long gibbon arms around the slug man Feci. We have uh, Lally over here, just kind of relaxing, looking out of the brook as the fire crackles. Let's have a look at this. right now. It's the fifteenth of granite, two fifty. I don't know much about this place where we are currently, but I imagine it's pretty uh, cool outside. Let's see. Strongest odor, moose. I can smell moose currently. I don't know if that's from the moose parts that we are covered in, all the, the moose viscera, or if there's another moose about. We're going to have to keep our wits about us. I don't want to get in another fight with a moose, okay? We could just leave the moose be out there somewhere. Um, what else we got, though? It is cool currently. So it's cool. That's not bad. Um, early in the year, I imagine it's a temperate area. Springtime. Brook babbling. That sort of stuff. We're, we're looking good. You know what? Maybe, um... So it's it's 9.23 my time currently. Maybe we could take a little break from Dwarf Fortress and draw a picture. How would that be? I don't know. I, I was kind of thinking about, um, you know, like kind of bumping back and forth between... Uh, whatever mode we're playing in and then like drawing some stuff but I don't, I don't know how that would go here I'm gonna give me one second here see how this goes momento technical difficulties yeah, I'm gonna window this down for a second I hope that doesn't screw anything up too badly but we'll see give me a second give me a second here just relax you yeah, guys this one here okay here we go just one second just one second my beautiful bearded bastards okay okay there we go can we see this I think so it's probably like kind of cut off though huh Oh, MS Paint. Is that MS Paint? The tool of pros and champions? I believe it is. <laughs> mm, let me see here. Not a bad idea. Keep the stream fresh. A slug must be drawn. <laughs> Sounds good. Here, one second. I'm going to do a little BRB sort of a thing. Let me see if I can make this transition cool without hardly bringing it up. There we go. BRB. Two shakes.
Okay, we're back. We're back. How's it going? How are you feeling? You feeling good? I hope so. I certainly do. Okay, sorry for the blinding white. Just gonna be how things go, though. Um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll tone it down a little bit here. Oops. There we go. How's that? Okay, so I'm gonna draw our slug, slug fellow here. With MS Paint, yes. You heard me right. What is this absolute madness? Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And hopefully it isn't too boring either, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel. I'm just gonna try to kind of focus here for a minute to do a little bit of a sketch. Okay. Our slug fellow. Don't get any ideas, all right? It doesn't look that much like anything lewd. Relax. Okay, here we go. What a slug's got like little like Ted drill things coming out of their face, right? Little eyes. I think that's pretty cute. I picture like a mouth kind of like, you ever see a slug's face that kind of have like that dopey sort of a, I don't really know what you'd call it. I think you call a slug's mouth, right? It's like a, like a tongue called like a, it's like a radula, right? Why, why would I know that? This is just a sketch right now. What I'm gonna do is like, this is kind of how I draw in MS Paint. I do like a little sketch with like an awful color, like this red here, right? And then I go over it with a different color. You'll see, you'll see, it'll make sense. It won't look this terrible the entire time. Just kind of this terrible. I'm gonna try to do it kind of quick too, you know? Just so we're not taking up too much time with this. But I tend to get more attached to characters when, um, after I've drawn them. You know, you get a better idea of how they look and stuff. Back in on my character here on um, on Fisi, and just see what we got. We got our spear, a loincloth. How does a slug man wear a loincloth? Got no legs or anything like that. Um, hmm. <laughs> got a robe. Oh, cause they're wearing a robe, so like their entire body is gonna be covered. They also got a dress on. Okay. So that's that's fine. We're gonna do like a little. Uh, this sort of a thing, I guess. Keep it simple. Usually when I draw stuff, like... I really like drawing robes and stuff. Typically in my videos, like, if a character's got a robe on, then... It makes them completely formless. And it's a lot more, uh... Forgiving. When it comes to, like, body shape and stuff. You just throw a robe on them, and they become like a blob. And everything is more forgiving that way. Of course, it also adds the problem of, like, textile folds and stuff. And, like, I'm not super good at that. Every once in a while, if I put the time and effort in, then I can be okay at it, but like, usually it's, I don't know, it's whatever. I just put a couple of like, these little little waves like that. That'll, that's fine, it's serviceable. What's an orangutan skull look like? First off, okay, first off, I'm gonna have a look at the Dwarf Fortress wiki real quick, and I'm gonna look up a slug man size. Slug men are 35,000 units, I forget. They're, it's half the size of a dwarf, I believe. So they're not huge. I, okay, how about an orangutan? I'm gonna look up an orangutan. Orangutan are 80,000 units. So, I mean, they're bigger than a dwarf. It's a dwarf and an additional third. So, I'm gonna make a dwarf or a orangutan skull. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Hopefully this is all working for you. Let me take a look in that, that chat, make sure everyone can even see the damn thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drenched in Slugman slime, absolutely. Uh, is much of the video art done in MS Paint with a mouse? No, 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 no. I, I, um, for the videos, I do the art with, like, pencil and paper, and then, like, a uh, pen over top of that. And then Mrs. K colors it in, usually with crayons, but recently we've been doing, like, um, colored pencils, which seems to work pretty well. 
She seems to, uh, she seems to like that. Make a little, little nasal cavity right here. And like, I think orangutan's got like some pretty prodigious canines right up on top. They probably got some sort of like a ridge stuff. I don't know. I'm not exactly going for 100% um, authentic orangutan skull action over here. Do a little spear sort of a thing. Just like that. I should probably put Gibbous in here too. What's a silvery gibbon? I assume that's a type of gibbon. Silvery gibbon. I'm looking it up real quick. Okay. Silvery gibbon. Here we go. Excellent. Um. Okay, okay. So we're gonna go pretty pretty small. I got like this like hunchback thing going on. They're they're cute, cute gibbon. This is probably like a, a bloody fresh skull, eh? <laughs> I would imagine since like the thing died and we butchered it like immediately afterwards. So that's gonna be an unpleasant thing to to witness, I believe. Okay, there we go. This should get the job done. Closer, and now we can start on the actual lines. A little bit more careful now. A little bit more careful. We're gonna go like this, right? Gotta keep these semi-symmetric. Semi. Of course, I guess I don't have to. Actually, I'm remembering now Bunyan from uh, Spider Face Two. There. I have drawn. I, I wasn't a slug man. This was a snail. Snail person. But, um, pretty similar. In the face, anyways, right? Of course, I don't like to draw things the same all the time. So that's why this guy's got a little bit of this, like, overhang thing here. Just kind of a droopy upper lip. I thought it would be funny. There we go. Okay. A little robe fold action here. Actually, this snail's got a backpack as well, so I'm gonna add that on there. Oh, what am I doing? Here we are. Maybe I can, like, after this is done, like, put the image on screen or something like that, too. Again, I'm not very uh, stream savvy, so I'm not sure if that's something that's possible, but I imagine it would be, right? I found out how to um, put just a static image on screen, so wouldn't be too bad, I'm thinking, right? Layers and paint would have been nice. Yeah, they would have been, but it's not it's not totally necessary. Like, I don't know. I've got a very um, caveman-like <laughs> way of operating, I suppose. Like, if I know how a program or something works, then I'll just use it, and it's fine. Like, it's not an efficient way to be. It's not a good way to be, but it's just how I am. I suppose, like, I just don't want to learn something new. Like, this this, this works. You'll see. Watch. I, I'll show you now, just so it's not driving some people crazy. But, like, here, one second. I'll make this a little bit smaller, too, while we're up here. How's that? There we go. Don't need that big old window. Okay, so if we select a color like this red, like the line is red back there, and you do the eraser and make sure the red is in the primary shape, primary position there, and then you make your little eraser thing as big as it can go, and you right click, it can get rid of the red, leaving just the black lines. See? So that's kind of like how we can do layers in MS Paint. See that? And then just control Z, get all that stuff back. But, you know, it's pretty handy. I like it. I don't know. Something about MS Paint, I just, I like it. It's easy for me to understand. I get super overwhelmed if you open up, like, any art program and there's just options all over the place. Like, I can muddle my way through, but I don't know. I just like doing what I can with simple tools for the most part. Again, terribly inefficient. Not a good way to be, but it's how I be. 
It's how I be. Oliver Caldwell, thank you. I love your videos. Thank you for all the worlds and stories you create for us to enjoy and lose ourselves in. Really enjoying the stream, too. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Actually, um... You know, while, while we're at it, I suppose while I'm streaming here, um... Anybody have any questions or anything like that? Maybe I can ramble on about something if... If you got some sort of a... Question that could be answered, I suppose. Might be fun. Give me something to talk about. I don't really have that much, honestly, besides the snail adventures we just embarked on. And we'll continue to embark on shortly. Hopefully this doesn't take too, too long. Let me see here. Hands. My worst nemesis. Hands. I just, I don't care enough to do a good hand, I guess. I just, I always hit this point in hands where I'm like, you know, it's good enough. Actually, that one's pretty good for me. I'm proud of that hand. That's a good one. I like it. But yes, um, let's see. Bring up the dumb questions site. Eh, I don't really feel like it. I, I think I answered most of those. The bot is back. Get the hell out of here, sex bot. Nobody watches. Krug, are you excited about the tutorial they're finally doing? Um, tell, us, tell us about the dog. Oh, Lorona. Lorona's good. Lorona, my dog, is out in the uh, living room right now sleeping. And I am, I'm happy for that. I'm sure she's going to be up at some point raising hell. So I'm just taking advantage of the time that we have while we have it. Uh, tutorial that they're doing for the Steam release. Yeah, I don't really know how, how they're going about that exactly, but it should be good. I'm glad more people will be able to experience Dwarf Fortress. Absolutely. It should be good. Definitely. I still would like to do maybe a video after the Steam release comes out and... I don't know. Maybe uh, do a little bit of a tutorial thing or something, but... I don't know. I've been saying that for a while now. We'll see how... What mood strikes me when the Steam release is finally out? <laughs> Assuming it comes out at some point. I... I am willing to bet the Steam release is going to be out, um... Maybe early next year, sometime like that. But I don't know. I've been I've had all kinds of ideas on when it might be out, and none of them have been correct so far. <laughs> I just keep pushing it back a couple months every time it doesn't come out. But but yeah, um, tutorial. Uh, yeah, it'll be good to have more people play the game after it's finally out. Let's see what else we got. Get the fuck out of here. How do, okay. Mm, 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 mm. Can I? I'm, I'm trying to get rid of the sex bots. I think that worked. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think we're. I think we're good now. The stream is going to have a VOD, right? I believe so. Yeah, it should be up afterwards. I guess, right? It, like, it goes up automatically, I, I think. If it doesn't, then you're <laughs> shit out of luck, because I don't know how to do that. But yeah, it should go up. Actually, you know what? I, I put the other one... I did one stream, like, last week, and I made it unlisted, thinking that, it like, people wouldn't be able to see it, but I kept getting comments on it, so I don't really know how people were seeing it exactly. I guess it was showing up for people. I think they got some new way that they list unlisted things or something <laughs> which shouldn't be the case if it's unlisted but here we are YouTube it's a silly bastard okay go quick here I mean it's basically gonna look like a human skull right I got that prodigious cheekbone that all orangutans are known for <laughs> I don't know I think that big frill on their face what it's just like a like skin right some sort of a like a Pad or something. I think it's only the males that have it too. I don't know if it was a male or a female that died in our adventure just then. Um. Hi there, General Cog Smash. How in your videos do you solve S FPS death? Recently, I started to have huge problems with it. Thank you very much, Jacob. Um, I, I, I guess I don't like. When's the last time I did a fortress that was giant? Like probably one of the fortresses last year that I did. Um. I, I did like a, the, the Long Night Fortress, right? That one had a few Martians in it when I played, and things did start to slow down. But no, there's there's not really a way to solve it, I guess. It's just kind of like how you want to play, I suppose. Oh, for those of you who don't know right now, who are just popping into the stream, right? <laughs> this is going to be a strange image, but it's a slug man and an orangutan skull. 
and a Gibbon sitting atop the skull. This was an adventure mode character that we had just got done playing, and I figured I'd draw him real quick. And here we are. That's that's pretty much the heads and tails of it. But yeah, I don't really solve FPS death, I suppose. It just kind of like depends on the fortress you want to play in. Um, like, if you want to play in a giant big old fortress with a bunch of people running around and all kinds of projects, it's going to slow down. That's, there's really no way around it, unfortunately. Um, if it really bothers you a lot, you can go in and change your fort cap, like the population cap. And, um, like, that, that'll remedy it quite a bit. Like, sometimes I just don't feel like dealing with that slowdown. I like when things go extremely fast in Dwarf Fortress. And so, like, um, if I ever have a fortress that I play, like, just by myself, which is pretty rare, then I will usually crank the population down to, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 or something like that. And just, like, see what those few dwarves can do. Like, I might do that, too, actually. That'd be kind of fun. You know stream sort of environment do like a really small population fortress and just see what they could do because like you can really crank up the speed too um just like in the game um one second let me focus for a second <laughs> it's a stupid looking face maybe i'll just put the eyes out here there we go that's cute and they has got like a big old fuzzy head which is kind of hard to do fuzz accurately and paint believe it or not believe it or not paint is not an optimal tool a lot of the time I don't know you might not believe that but you're gonna have to take it from me it's not optimal this is the jankiest looking gibbon I've ever seen but I'm here for it <laughs> I mean the thing just got done <laughs> four arms way out there you know we're just going with it. this is how I typically draw things for my videos like I just like Whatever, it's fine. There we go. I usually don't have time to mess around with things all so much, so... Just whatever I happens to come out of my pencil is how things will look. And then it's kind of a pain afterwards, because I have to continue drawing things like like I did. Okay, there we go. A little leg out there. We've got our, our gibbon fur. It's terrible looking. Terrible. But I, I'm like it. Am I drawing with a mouse? Yes, I am. Again, it kind of falls into the whole, um, you know, after I learn how to use a tool, I don't change ever because I'm fine with it. Like, I learned how to draw with a, a mouse and then was faced with the, uh, like, a, a drawing tablet, which I have tried a few times, but I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I am incapable of doing it. Terrible. Um... So this doesn't really look like an orangutan skull to me. It just looks like a weird pointy tooth skull. But I think that's just how we're going to roll. Here, even worse than uh, hands is straight lines. That's that's pretty good for a mouse right there, ain't it? <laughs> I'm proud. Let's try, let's try to do this longer one. I'm not going to be able to do this one, but we'll see. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. Got, got a little, little fat there towards the bottom. But that's fine. Again, it doesn't got to be perfect, right? It was just through a battle with a bull moose. It's not going to be perfectly straight. I mean, the spear's a little little haggard. That's fine. We could just say it's a stylistic choice, right? Maybe that's how I wanted it to look. That's fine. You shoot those arrows. You paint those targets around them. Everything you do is A-OK. -okay. <laughs> there we go. K-Pak spear. I don't know what K-Pak is exactly. I don't know if it's got an interesting look to it. Probably not. I, when I'm drawing pictures for my videos, sometimes I'll like look up different types of wood. It's all the same. I mean, if you know wood, then I'm sure there's significant differences between the types of wood, but to a lay dwarf like myself, it all looks the same. It's all wood, damn it. Not like stone where there's real differences. Look at this, this gibbon. <laughs> this Gibbon seen some shit. Why did I sign on for this? I didn't think it was gonna be like this, man. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Oops. All right, let's color this thing, huh? Got our wooden spear. Bada boom, bada bing. There we go. We got some 
I think I said the slug man was Ekru, but I kind of like that. That's a slug color, I feel. Right? Yeah. I feel it is. I know I'm missing little pixels here and there, too, but it's going to be okay. All right? It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. We can actually do this right here. So it's not fine. I know it's not fine. There we go. Any others? Boop. Boop right down there. What kind of what color robe should this slug man have? You tell me, chat. Oh, also, Krug missed my donation. Did I? I'm sorry. Some Texagon. I'm so, so focused here. I didn't mean to. Why does the Gibbon have such a deep voice? It's just because he's haggard from this life on the road. It, he used to have a, a very high and sprightly voice, but now it's just deep. Oh my god. This is terrible. <laughs> Purple. MS Paint. Yes, this is MS Paint. Purple robe for a slug man. I like it. And we're also going to do one of these, like, we're going to make it a little bit, a little, a little deep, kind of gray purple, because I like that. I like making my, my colors are never very bright, which Mrs. K does not love, by the way. I'm always like, make sure those colors aren't too bright. It's got to look rustic and terrible, and she just is desperate to use those bright colors, and I've been being a little bit better with it nowadays. I know she likes to use the bright colors. But I figure Dwarf Fortress is kind of a grungy and crappy looking world most of the time. To me, anyways, that's kind of how I picture Dwarf Fortress. Everyone just kind of... Like, I've never really generated a Dwarf Fortress world that's like, Ah, that's a place I'd like to live. Most of them just appear terrible. Like, I would never want to live in this Dwarf Fortress world. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, mm, do I play D&D? &D? Yeah. I do, actually. I've been playing D&D recently. It's great. I didn't play for, like, uh, quite a number of years, actually. And I've just started playing again. And, it's yeah, it's, it's really great. I've been enjoying it a lot. Big time. I, I got, I'm trying to think of what else I could even say about it, really. Uh, the character I play as. Anybody care to guess what kind of character I play as? <laughs> Let's, let's see what chat thinks my Dungeons and Dragons character is. Anybody who knows, you can shut up. Shut up. Don't say it. Don't spoil it. Shout out to Mrs. K for being an absolute unit. I'll pass on your nice words. She's not watching right now. She's at work, actually. I like the muted colors. Looks like an old tapestry or parchment document. Exactly. That's kind of how I picture it. You know, it looks realistic. Absolutely. Um, no, let's see. A druid, a dwarf, barbarian, dwarf, dwarf, orc, dwarf, berserker, dwarf, elf, ab obviously an elf, elf, rogue. <laughs> you guys are great. I play, my character is a forest gnome warlock. I didn't choose it at all either. I um, used a random generator online. And like when I got set up for this game that I'm in, I was just like, I'm going to hit this thing once and whatever comes up is going to be my character. And I... I'll tell you, when I saw Forest Gnome Warlock, I was not happy at all. <laughs> I was like, this is clearly a mistake. But, you know, I stuck stuck out with it, and, um, you know, it's it's worked out. It's worked out pretty well. I actually really like this character. I don't think I've ever had a Dungeon Dragons character I've liked so much. Of course, I also haven't played a Dungeon Dragons game in, like, you know, freaking 20 years, so. But, yeah, it's fun. It's been fun. So I can, I can use that same trick I was doing before with getting rid of the red lines and select this gray color, right? And then put another color in the secondary slot. And then when you right click and you pass it over that one color, it'll just change the color that's in the primary slot to the secondary color, you know? So that's how I can do things like this, you know, change the little hands like this without mucking up the colors around it. Um, that's also how I can do like a, like shading and stuff. So I can go like this and change this dark color like that, right? And just like right click and swoop it up in here. Okay, just a little bit, a little bit like that. A little bit of the, uh, the old ape undercarriage. Actually, I can do like this, make it really small. Uh, eraser like this, right? And then kind of like boop, 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 like this. I'm not going to take too long. Sorry, I'm not, I'm, I got to finish up just so we're not drawing all day long here. It's been nearly half hour, I think. But um, you can go like that, then you use your paint tool and you just fill in the areas and hey, look, it 
it looks like you shaded things. Oh, not like that. There we go. No, nope. right there. There we go. Wonderful. A jankly shaded little monkey right there. I have to color in this one eye. The appropriate hue, though. There we go. Give the same treatment over here for the orangutan skull. Which should really, I guess, realistically have chunks of viscera and stuff hanging off it, but... Eh, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do without this time. How about... Sound good? Sounds good. There we go. There we go. A little bit of shade ski, just like that. Two shakes of a lamb's tail. Pretty easy, right? A little under here to act like I can shade things competently. Here we go. That is looking lovely, isn't it? I'm already getting more attached to... Actually, if I gotta be perfectly honest, I'm getting more attached to the Gibbon than I am to the Slugman. And that's really not good. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. Almost kind of like it's looking up towards the slug man who took it off on its death quest. I'm so sorry, orangutan. I would rather it have been me than you. Such a fate is not deserved by one so noble as you. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? When, when I go back to uh, Dwarf Fortress right after this picture is pictures done should I resume the adventurer or should we play some fortress mode it's supposed to be a shadow but it really just looks like like a smiling mouth let's see if this remedies it it kind of just looks like a smiling mouth I'm not gonna put that shadow there it's fine maybe we'll just add some uh... we'll add some little spots cuz I feel like a slug has got to have some spots just like that. There we go. That is lovely. Let's see what we're saying. It's a mouse. It's a mouse. Adventurer. Resume. Fort mode. Fort mode. Fort mode. Fort. 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 Got a lot of forts. Got a lot of forts. Fort modes. Teach me. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we gotta do some fort mode then. That's fine. We're gonna have fun. It's okay. And I think, you know... It's probably for the best. Sometimes it's good to let adventurers just sit and be happy and know that they're out there in the world. So we're going to be playing this fort mode, and the whole time we're going to be wondering what adventures, what shenanigans Feecee is getting up to. Feecee the slug man. Because they're still going to be out in the world, which is it's great. Great to know. It's going to enhance our fortress mode experience immensely, I feel. Maybe we'll uh, we'll try to make a fortress in that same area or something. Like, we're not going to be able to play as the elven civilization that this uh, Feecee hails from. But um, maybe we could do something in the area. Maybe somebody will heard of will have heard of the Slugman's exploits. Probably not. Wasn't really any exploits to, to speak of. But I guess you never know. Maybe set up a tavern or something. And, like, I don't think Feecee will come and partake of drinks in our tavern, but never know. There we go. How's that? That's looking great. Wonderful. I don't think that looks too shabby at all, does it? Maybe a little bit of shading on the backpack here. There we go. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Hey, excellent. So there we go. There we have it. I think that's pretty much done. A janky little illustration of our snail person adventurer. <laughs> Such a crappy drawing. It's fine, though. I like it. And that's all that matters. Okay, back to streaming Dwarf Fortress. How about... Let's see. We're going to try to move this, this thing up over here. One second, one second. Technical difficulties and all that. How do... Oh, do two shakes. Ta -ta. Okay, that should work, right? Here's open. Okay. <sighs> Here we are, camped out at the stream with 
uh, Fisi, Gibbous, and Lally, the orangutan. And now I guess we can just, uh, well, I mean, I can't retire here, I don't think. We can give in to starvation, but that's not what we want. I'm gonna have a look at the map. We never really made it down south there. Um, oops. I'm gonna have a look at our map. Okay, now I think you guys can all see this, right? Just let me know if you can't see this for some reason. I think we're good. Nobody's nobody's screaming at me. No, I think we're good. Okay. Over here, we have some dwarven fortresses. Uh, Naram Kubuk, Relieve Lanced, Ahilix. We have Aseneseth, Gravel Quest, and Limuludos, Golden Men. Hmm. I'm thinking we should take a quick jog over that way right there. Maybe if we can retire Fisi here. Maybe Fisi, you know, we just got done fighting that moose, right? We killed the moose, but like we, you know, we suffered some heavy losses. Maybe we can just go and settle down in that dwarven civilization. Um, just take a little rest. And perhaps, perhaps when we pick up a dwarven fortress, Fisi here will be there in some manner. Not like living at the fortress, but like. Maybe they'll come to visit or something. I don't know. I guess we shall see. Okay. Was that it? Did it go? I think it did. Oh, okay. No, I wasn't. I, I thought I was sleeping. Never mind. Sorry. Sleep is necessary till dawn. Okay. Wait until dawn. Hopefully we don't get attacked. We have that little asterisk there moving around us. It didn't, didn't bother with us though, so that's good. Open up the map here. Going to continue on to the west and hopefully find this place before long. Shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't take too long. Got some bridges over here. Going to cross the bridges, get across the river, and continue on our way to the west. We're almost there, really. To this uh, dwarven, whatever the hell this is. Looks like a group of hillocks. And that should be fine. We're getting chased now by this group. I don't know what this is, but you can see that asterisk that's right on our tail. It's probably not great. Zombies or bandits or something. I have another look at that map. Okay, so we now are at um, Iwam Akak, Sunken Flame, a fortress. Oh, no, no, that was the place we were going. Never mind. Um, we are at uh, Noram Kabuk, Relieve Lanced. Okay. Um, so, like, I don't know who owns this place is the thing. I should We should get into one of these places and then ask around about the local leader. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know what that asterisk was that was following us, but it seemed pretty uh, persistent, but it's gone now. Okay, that's good. Having a look at our map real quick. We have no significant structures. We have a civic mound here, though, this little white uh, zero on the screen. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to go inquire as to the local leader. This is so that when we go into fortress mode, we can start a um, civilization that is linked to this civilization right here. We're down underground now, having a look around. We have a bunch of dwarves, a goblin, an elf, I believe, some humans. The stout holy guard, an elf. A long nose holy guard. Mm, some books. Books about siphons. Siphons? I don't know why I said it like that. Siphons. We have a Baroness over here. I'm gonna talk to this Baroness. Let's greet. My name is Feci Creature Workers. The Baroness Consort of Earthen Trailed Iteb Berthim Assure. Hello, Slugman. I am Iteb Earth Partners. Praise be to the blanketed armor. I am going to ask about the local ruler. Tell me about the local ruler. The skirts of culminating rules gravel quest. Sass, a carnal scholar, is captain. They are outlaws. Okay. <laughs> hmm. It is very hard to parse through information in adventure mode sometimes, because, like, you're only ever viewing one little fragment of things, like... <sighs> Let me see. The skirts of culminating rules gravel quest. I believe that's probably a bandit group or something that has laid claim to this settlement. So, yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna retire here, okay, and maybe not worry so much about picking an appropriate dwarven fortress to start off as, dwarven civilization to start off as. Uh, let me see here, I'm just reading through chat real quick. 
Feasty is an unfortunate name. It most certainly is. But the slug man is greatly skilled. It is excellent. Um, man, why do you play XL? It's fun. It's great. Thank you, Sealed. Is this real life? It is real life. It is. Yes. Okay. Now let's have a look here. I'm going to look into Legends mode real quick before we get started in Fortress mode. And just to see what we're working with here in terms of interesting character. Okay, so we have PC right here, born in 216. It is year 250 right now, so math, math. What does that make? Um, oh god, I can't math. Is that eight? It's 250. Someone, 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 math for me. I can't, I can't the math. It's Thirty something years old. PC mortally wounded the bull moose, kiss gripped who bled to death with a cape box spear in the strifeful forests. Our only action that we've ever taken. Became the owner of an orangutan. Became the owner of an orangutan. The cinnamon butters was stolen from roar sprayed by Thesey. That is something we did. Hmm. Yeah, we only killed a turkey and a bull moose. That's fine, though. The cactus of symmetry and the whiskers of quickness are two groups that we're a part of. Interesting. What's the Whiskers of Quickness? That sounds like a Dwarven group. Let me see. Whiskers of Quickness. Elven group from the Cyclopean universes. Uh, an Elven group. Okay, so that's, that's probably the rulers of the town that we started off in, I would imagine. Interesting. Okay, so that doesn't appear to have anything interesting to it. Um... How about that artifact that we stole? Let's have a look at that. Feci. Let's see. What was that thing called? The Cinnamon Butters. Okay. Let's have a look. Cinnamon Butters. A linen cloak. Linen cloak sized for humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, received its name in Roar Sprayed from the dwarf Bosa Nightmare Trots in order to sanctify the human Us Breach Chewed as the item was a favorite possession. Okay. So it was created and then named in honor of this human and stored in that place that we stole it from <laughs> excellent uh oh uh oh guys looks like a puppy came to visit this puppy came to visit guys what do you think puppy you want to go on camera real quick I don't know I'll, I'll ask the stream stream what do you think do you want to see this puppy oh no puppy they're saying oh, looks like they hate puppies sorry puppy nobody likes puppies no. Let me see here. Yeah, they hate dogs from the, from the looks of it. So, we're not going to see a puppy. <laughs> here, one second, guys. One second. Maybe I can, um... One second. Technical difficulties. You know how it is. You know how it'd be. Come here, puppy. Come here. Hey. Now she got shy. You guys said you hated her too much. Come here, puppy. Hey. She thinks I'm up to some shit. Dare I turn on the face cam? She, do you guys deserve to be assaulted in such a manner? <laughs> Probably not. Come here, pup. Come here. Hey. Fine. Here, one second. How's it going? Good, I hope. Come here, puppy. Come here. Come here. She's giving me this look like she doesn't she doesn't trust me now. <laughs> Not that I'm calling her. What do you want from me? Come here, pup. No interest. Come here. I don't know what to tell you. I promised puppy and now I can't deliver. Two shakes. I get up and she just sails off. <laughs> One second, I'm gonna go wrangle her. I'll throw her on, on screen.
What do you think, puppy, huh? What do you think? You do good? <laughs> kicking, my, <laughs> kicking my shit all over the place. How you doing? She got that thousand, thousand yard stare. <laughs> How you doing? Doing good? Huh? She's doing good. What do you think? Can you say hi? You just want to get the hell out of here? <laughs> I don't blame you. There you go. That's all I could do. Here, I'll, I'll stop assaulting you with this ghastly visage. Two shakes. If I can figure out how this works. Um, yeah, that's better. How the hell do I get this up there? Two shakes, two shakes of a lamb's tail, of an orangutan's tail. Oh my god. Shit all over the place. Two shakes, two shakes. <laughs> the puppy's barking out in the living room now. Great, great stream content, ain't it? Just a, a BRB, got a dog barking in the background, got my chair jangling around. I'm just mumbling into the mic. How the hell? Okay, there we go. Dwarf Fortress, back on screen. Phew, okay, we're good to go. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, thanks for asking. I have enjoyed this, good. Yeah, the puppy came in and just raised hell for a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're good. Krug only fans. Yeah, it's coming. Mumblecore. Dwarf YouTuber with the dwarfest beards. Solid. Never work with animals. Never work with animals. Absolutely never. Um, okay, on this note, I got things settled to get to jump into fortress mode, but I'm gonna be right back one second. Let the puppy outside and um make quick peeps. Be right back. Hey, how's it going? I returned. Okay, let's see here. Dwarf Fortress. Actually, before we start Dwarf Fortress, I'm going to quit out of Dwarf Fortress. I know it still says BRB. One second. I got to check that population thing to make sure I can, like, what my population is set at. Like, what my population cap is set at. One second, one second. Let's have a look. Where the hell is it? Set the maximum population. Maximum population currently is set at 200. I think that sounds good. That's what we'll go with. 
high population fortress. Sounds just dandy. Okay. Um. Ready? Oh, 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 oh. Uno momento. I don't know what's going on here. I forget what uh, what file I had open. I've got like eight instances of Dwarf Fortress up on my desktop and I think I opened the wrong one. Is it DF? Is it DF copy? DF stream looks like a possible one. But I don't think it is actually. I think it's DF Halloween. I don't know why I would have named it that. But I think that's the one I'm currently playing. Let me check the population in that one. Set the maximum population set to 200. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. There we go. Okay. We're cooking with gas. Dwarf Fortress. Gonna move that on up. And okay. There we go. Ready to play some fort mode? My bearded bastards? I sure hope so. Let's, uh, let's uh, give it a look. Give it a look. Let me see here. <laughs> Have I seen Seth Dean Chatch? I don't know how to pronounce that. The review of Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, I've seen that. I have. <laughs> it's really something. Do I ever bake? What, like fucking food? Yeah. No, I don't. Anything, just things out of the box. Alright, let's start playing. Dwarf Fortress mode. Let's get to it. Okay, now then, we can see our world, the Cyclopean universes. Right now, this is here. This here in the, in the south is the Abated Land. Right up to the north here, we can see these couple of hillocks. Now, these are the ones. I think it was... I think it was this one down here that the Snail Man stopped off at. Right down here. So, maybe we'll make a fortress kind of in this area. Let's have a look here. Um, got two dwarven civilizations. We have the Sword of Gliding and the Cloister of Ash. And it looks like, well, it looks like the Sword of Gliding is only centered down in this one tower down here, which is intriguing. Uh, this tower right here. So I, I'm not too sure what the deal is with this particular civilization, the Sword of Gliding, but it looks like its entire population center is down in this one tower. The other one, though, um, the Cloister of Ash. Oops, one second. That one's up here, up in the north. Uh, I, I don't know who the hell controls this fortress down here. This uh, hillocks down here. It doesn't look like either dwarven civilization is in control of this one hillocks. So that's that's weird. Well, well, let's let's have a look here. We got all kinds of areas here that we can settle off in. How are we feeling? How about I'll ask chat. We got all kinds of possibilities here. How are we feeling, chat? We feel uh, like a nice, calm, serene sort of a place where we can relax. Maybe a mountain slope. Maybe a seaside sort of a settlement. Or maybe you want to see me suffer in a place like this hellhole over here. This tropical shrubland. The prairie of, <laughs> the prairie of comedy. A sinister place. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think, guys? We got bad lands, we got forests, we got swamps. Dig into the mountain. More fun. No, says Michael Becker. Get a vol volcano. Hellscape is the best scape. Ocean, seaside, seaside, suffer, volcano. Seaside, vista, hell, seaside, cursed, haunted land, big mountain. I love you guys. So we're look, looking like Seaside Hellscape is going to be the place of the day. Let's see, over here we have a nice haunted place. Uh, we do have a tower right here. That's no bueno. Um, okay. So if we go right over, <laughs> this is a bad place, man. Uh, okay, right over here. We, we, get, we get a haunted area over here. Temperate broadleaf forest on the sea. With no metal to speak of. There's no metal here. Just an aquifer and some flux stone. 
Let's have a look at our neighbors. We have dwarves, elves, humans. Good, good, good. Also goblins, not so good. And a tower, which is literally right next door. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what we're gonna do, huh? Spooky season is a coming, so it's perfectly apt. Let's let's do it here. And you know what? Actually, because we're not looking for our, our slug man or anything like that, we can start off as the sword of gliding. This dwarven civilization centered in a old necromancer tower seems apt. Yeah, let's do that right over here. It's an area with salt water. Might be very difficult to survive here. And there's also a light aqua in the area. Mm -hmm. Gonna prepare for the journey carefully, of course. We're not gonna be too careful about it because I'm just kind of a careless person sometimes. We don't need any of these wooden items at all. Buckets, splints, we can make those. That's it's easy. Quivers, unnecessary. Ropes, I'll take a couple, just in case. Bags, I don't really, don't need them. Cloth, mm, we can keep some cloth just in case somebody's got an artifact. Also, I'm gonna wanna bring some, uh, some wool and some silk would be good too. Thread, unnecessary. Got some seeds, got our wine, got our beer, picks. Mm, let's see here, we got 780 points left. Let's see here. Hmm, what kind of animals we're gonna wanna bring with us? Um, all kinds of options. I don't know what kind of an area this is. It could be a reanimator biome. So if that's the case, we're not gonna be wanting to do a whole bunch of butchering. Pigs are always good. Pig is my go-to. That's like the easy animal to bring. They give you a lot of food, they give you leather. I think you can milk them too. Um, but they don't require any place to graze. They just eat air, apparently, which is silly. Uh, okay, we got some. We got somebody. I was having a glance down. Somebody said pig, so that's what we're going with. I like a pig. It's probably going to be pretty difficult here, anyway. So um, we could do this at least to alleviate some of the tension, I believe. We're gonna bring one more pick than necessary, and um, how about some axes? You know what? I'm gonna bring seven axes, which is unnecessary, but like. Again, we don't know what kind of area this is, and sometimes I've seen these places start with, like, intelligent undead wandering through the area. And if that happens, like, I doubt we're going to be able to kill it, period. But, like, if we have seven axes, then we might have a slight chance at it, so that's what we'll do. Gonna have a bunch of wine as well, just to give us a little bit of extra drinks and maybe some more food as well. Mm, food, food, food. Lobster. Gonna be eating good, my dwarves. Got some lobster, we got our wine, we got our pigs, we got our axes. Fortress name, Diamond Lanced, no. Labor Clean, no, no. Splattered Ringed, no. Tombs Spire, hey, I kind of like that one. Racust Detour, Tombs Spire. We've got to make it a little bit more flashy than that, though. It can't be it. It's way too simple. Um, Tombs Spire, the... Yeah, I'm gonna hit this just like real quick. Just have a look here. Whoa, hey Krugs. Hey, how's it going? Mushrooms, more. Someone get the raid. We got a pest. I don't know what that means. Oh, oh, one of these, one of these pervert bots over here. I'm going to get rid of this person. There we go. They're good. They're good. We got them. Uh, the labyrinth. The labyrinth of. Squatting could be funny. Squat's a funny word. Tomb Spire, the labyrinth of brass. Sounds cool, but we're not gonna have any brass here. God damn it! I gotta remember too that there's, there's no, um, there's no metal in this area, so we're not gonna be able to produce anything essentially. Evisceration, how about? Tomb Spire, the Labyrinth of Evisceration. Here, let's go. I'm going to give this one go. Rakustator, Lum Num Nilak. Okay, that's not so bad. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Group name. The Apes. The Everlasting Apes. I Sunnizak. I like that. And our symbol. Our symbol will be a creature. An ape, perhaps? I think so. An orangutan. Maybe unnumbered, un unnumbered, plural orangutans. Just orangutans. Hmm. 
And what can these orangutans be doing, eh? Screaming. The girder of talons is an, an image of orangutans. The orangutans are screaming. I think it's so funny that you could just make anything you want in here screaming. And like, I don't know what my mind does to make that so funny, but like, I don't know. It, it just, I, I find it very hilarious. We also make like an asparagus, one asparagus. And the, the <laughs> like, it, it, all of these are funny. Like a weeping asparagus is hilarious. Um, a confused looking asparagus is pretty funny. But like, the asparagus is screaming too. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I know it, it doesn't really, it's just kind of funny. Like, maybe the dwarves thought it'd be funny. Like, to make a bunch of orangutans and a screaming asparagus. Apes screaming together strong. <laughs> yes. Maybe it's just apes and monkeys in general in this world. They're, like, very prolific. Maybe the dwarves and elves and stuff, they just, like, they each select a, a totem monkey or ape. I'm not, I, I guess ours would be the orangutan, right? That's gonna be our symbol. Our holy symbol is the orangutan. Of the, uh, that's our that's our totem creature of this fortress. Fortress, Rakustator, Tomb Spire. Okay. Let's get this done. I just hit embark. Let's see. You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Dastat Bavast. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings, ere the cougars get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Rakastatur Lumnum Nilak. Tomb Spire, the labyrinth of evisceration. Strike the earth. Cougars. You know, I always thought it would be interesting in Dwarf Fortress if, like, the winter did actually entomb you. The winter really is nothing in Dwarf Fortress. It just kind of snows. And stuff does get icy. And, like, if a dwarf happens to be standing in a foot of ice when things freeze up, then, like, they'll die. But other than that, <laughs> nothing really happens. I, I don't know. I always thought, like, facing the weather would actually be a cool challenge in Dwarf Fortress. But, eh, it's kind of not. Okay, we're in the game now. Let's have a look around before we do anything. I pause the game, hitting you. We're gonna have a look over. We have a cow moose, one of the most dreaded creatures in all of the Cyclopean realms down here to the southwest. It looks. I'm gonna zoom out. See how things look. Okay. 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 Not not so bad. Zoom out a whole bunch here, and you can see we have a lot of trees. I'm gonna go up. These are all the treetops here. There's a lot of trees in this area, which is good. We have access to plenty of wood. A lot of wood. Going back down, you can see up in the uh, the north there, too, there is a not-so-evil area. So, that's, that's okay. It doesn't benefit us so much, but just something to know. Uh, we can see the water over here to the southeast, and we got ponds all over the place, too. It's kind of a swampy, mucky area. But we have the, the sea down to the southeast going down it, it goes down a bit there's a bit of a bit of a shelf there but uh yeah pretty straightforward We've got half land and nearly half sea gonna zoom back in now Boop. to our dwarves now we have our dwarves we have our pigs we have our looks to be water buffalo uh two of them yep i don't know they've got a male and we have we've got two males so that, that's not gonna benefit us too greatly but that's fine um now, what I'm going to want to do, personally, is make a nice place right in kind of like the smack dab middle of this place here. Because, uh, you know, that's going to give us some time to work with. If something pops up at the edge of the map, if we're too close to the edge, then it could pop up essentially right on top of our dwarves. And we don't want that, you know. I, I don't know what this area is about. It could have evil clouds, and that would screw us up big time. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want that. Okay. Oh, that's something I forgot to do is give any of the dwarves skills. That's completely fine, though. I do not mind. We're going to give uh, this guy here, Tossed, the peasant, Tossed Wheel Urge. We're going to make you the woodworker. And actually, Dastat, we're going to make you a woodworker, too. We're going to get some wood chopped ASAP. We're gonna also going to make you both architects. 
Okay, then you, Kibish, I'm gonna make you a miner. Um, you, Muffcat, miner. Primarily miners. And then you, Moral, stone worker. You, Catan, stone worker. Um, and you, Kubuk. You are gonna have an important job. I'm gonna have you making... Like, I don't know how... Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, hey chat, what should we produce here? But like, you guys are gonna give me something dumb, like like pottery or silk or something. It's gonna be impossible to manage. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get a little cheesy here, I think, and just do like wood crafting. I guess we're gonna go with wood crafting, Kubuk, and we're just gonna produce some wood crafts. Cause like when those uh, trade caravans come, we're we're gonna have to get something to trade. We don't have any metal. You know, so we're going to have to get metal from them. There's always goblinite, but in order to get goblinite, you have to kill goblins, which we're completely incapable of at this particular juncture. So, yeah, we're just going to get started like this. I'm going to cut down some trees just in this main area around the wagon, okay? High priority task, just like that. And they're going to get straight to that. I'm also going to start digging down. Got to remember there's a light aquifer in the area, so we're going to dig down pretty straightforward, just maybe a two by two little down stairway right here. And we're just going to head down do, 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 just a few levels. I'm sure we're going to hit that aquifer somewhere down there. But yeah, let's get straight to it. There you go, dwarves. Head off. There you go. Wonderful. Got a couple of guys chopping down trees. We've already hit the aquifer. It's right down there. Of course, we're at the seaside, so it's not too surprising. We have the aquifer right here. They stopped automatically. We're going to dig through that, though. Let's see. Hopefully, it doesn't continue down much farther than that. And it doesn't look to. That's good. So we have like uh, two levels of aquifer here. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm going to dig through right here as well. There we go. And continue down just to where I told you to go to. And I'm going to build an upstair right here. Oh. An upstair, not an up down stair. You silly bastard. Just right here. We're going to get down to the bottom and going to try to carve out some stone really quick. Then use that stone to block up the aquifer. That'll take two shakes, won't be too bad. Uh, sometimes this, this process right here can get a little dicey, but I think we got it, I think we got it. Checking back up to the surface here. Okay, we got a lot of this wood cut down. I'm also gonna build a craft store workshop just right over here with some apricot logs. Who's not working? You, what's your job? Okay, you're a stone worker, that's fine. Heading down underground here. Yeah, you can see the dwarves are carving out the stone. It's taking them a little bit just because they're not trained miners. They don't know what the hell they're doing. But uh, that's fine. We're getting to it. Going to carve out this area big enough so we can fit a, a mason's workshop down there. I want to make some stone blocks so um, we can get this aquifer settled. You can see the water is dripping down the stairs now and already accumulating at the, the bottom level here. If that happens too much, it's going to make this whole place be underwater. Can't have that happen. Let's see here. Uh, maybe it's been asked. Uh, what's the Krug Smash view on the Steam release coming soon? Uh, it's it's great. I mean, what do you mean? Just in general? Like, it, it's great. I'm glad that it's happening. Uh, am I going to play it? Yeah, probably. I'm going to at least give it a try. I'm, I mean, you can see it now. Like, I'm so accustomed to the way Dwarf Fortress works as it is. Like... I, I'm very happy that Dwarf Fortress is going to be able to be played by more people, you know? Absolutely. But for me personally, like, I, I enjoy the game well enough as it is. So it's, like, for me personally, it's not necessary. I'm going to be happy once the Steam release is out and, um, you know, they can continue working on, like, new advancements to the game. You know, like, they've got that Myth and Magic release and all kinds of other stuff, too. Um... It's going to be cool to see those updates when they finally get to work on those in earnest. So I guess that's the, the thing I'm most excited for with the Steam release coming out is for the Steam release to be out and that's it, <laughs> you know? I think that'd be cool. But yeah, it's going to be exciting in the future. Let's see here. What do you, what do you have to do? We still got these stone workers not up to anything. I'm going to... Here, one second. I'm going to let them work for a moment. Oh my goodness. Got a dog barking here. One second. Let me, let me handle this, folks. I'll leave it on pause. It'll probably be fine, huh? Two shakes.
gosh. How's it going? I'm not dead yet? Sorry about that. These lazy dwarves. Got Kubuk here making wooden crafts, and that's about it. Let's see. A, B, R, N. Get to work making rock blocks immediately. Gonna make another mason's workshop down here, too. It gets more trees chopped down as well. Not gonna hurt. Gotta keep an eye too on our surroundings. I keep forgetting. Just having a kidna and a cow moose currently. That's fine. It won't affect us. Let's see how many blocks are made. Mm, getting there. Really gotta stop up this water quick. It's going to be fine, though. I don't want to use wood, though. Like, I could just slam some logs down there, but I'm like... Like, the dwarves don't care that it's logs, but I care. I feel like it's got to be stone blocks, right? You know? Why you not turn FPS on? I don't care. Why would I care about the FPS? I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. Like, what, what does knowing the FPS affect anything? It just makes me dissatisfied with the number drops. I'm all set. Chop down some more trees. Yeah, we've got a lot of wood now, huh? Whole bunch. I'm gonna make a little wood pile, I think, over by the Crafts Dwarf Workshop, and maybe our woodcutters can get to work stacking some wood up. Better yet, I'm gonna have this pile give to this Craft Dwarf Workshop, so that Craft Dwarf will just take wood from this pile that's right nearby. A little bit quicker. Ooh, and I should make a, a trade depot as well. Um, we'll make it just right over here. Quartzite. How's that sound? Good. Good. Right here. We're gonna get to work now carving away this aquifer level. And just replace just replace that real quick. <laughs> Dwarves don't like numbers. What do you mean? Dwarves hate numbers. That's human talk. Dwarves like steel and muscle. That's about it. Chirp blocks. There we go. We'll have this aquifer taken care of in no time, my dwarves. No worries. Does Krug have a day job? This is my day job. I, I do uh, YouTube content. And apparently streaming sometimes too. And this is new to me. But it's fun. It's good. I like it. Chirp blocks. Gonna slam some more in there. Almost done with this one wall segment. I think we need, we got to start thinking, chat, we got to work together and think of some sort of a mega project we can get to get started on. Like our, our place here is named Tomb's Spire, right? So I think maybe some sort of a spire would be in order, right? I think that sounds pretty cool. Is it possible for frogs to have beards? I don't, um, I don't think so. Wait, isn't there a hairy frog? Isn't that, isn't that a thing? I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Google that and be careful with your Googles. <laughs> I think you get into trouble if you Google that too hard. Let's have a look here. Okay, still working on those blocks, I believe. Work harder. I was hoping for some nice quartzite blocks up top there, but it doesn't look, to, look like that's what we're going to get. Okay, we have our miners down here not working. I think we should get to work carving out an actual like place to live, right? Um, how are we gonna do this too? Hmm. 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 Let's think. We got all kinds of ideas here. My goodness. Um, build a statue in the sea, a tomb. That's also a spire. Genius. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Dystopian landscape. Uh, da, 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 da. Long pier. Interesting ideas, my bastards. Okay, Th first though, I think before anything else, we have to get to work on uh, like a, a home, like a proper home for our dwarves, right? Because right now we don't got anything. I still don't know what this place is. It's haunted, right? So there could very well be bad stuff here. And because we haven't seen anything yet, 
I'm thinking it might end up being like a like evil clouds or something like that just cuz just cuz like it, there's no good reason for that really I just <laughs> like to think negatively I'm gonna be annoyed if there's evil clouds those things can kind of suck big time like well we'll see oh it might also start raining too there could be some freakish weather going on too that wouldn't be good I've actually had it so that like um you know, the freakish weather will kick up and your dwarves will just die immediately. I don't know what causes that. It's like acid rain or something, huh? <laughs> don't want to die. Ron. What, what is Ron? What, that's uh, some sort of currency. Don't bury any dwarves. Make a spooky haunted fort. That's what we're going to try to do. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, uh, I guess, guess we'll see. We'll see. It's so hard for me to keep all my dwarves busy. I just don't often care enough, which is dumb. Uh, okay, we're going to get these woodworkers to actual work here. We're going to make a couple of craft dwarf workshops. Right there. And we're going to start producing some beds. And I think some cages would be cool, too. Maybe we can catch some stuff out there? Like, I just noted we had a bunch of uh, boar and a single koala over here. That's cute. I don't think I've seen koala in actual dwarf fortress. They're... They gotta be kind of rare, I would think. Hmm. Cool, though. It's cool. Do we have any eucalyptus trees? Uh, dead apricot tree. We have a, a dead pecan tree. These are all dead trees, the gray ones, so... This poor koala is just <laughs> walking through this wilted, dried-up, dead forest. It's pouring rain currently. Not good. Okay, so we have our, our woodcutters workshops, or uh, carpenter workshops. I'm gonna make some beds. We're gonna get started pumping out beds big time, and then this guy over here is gonna start making um, cages. We'll start pumping out cages and beds. That's gonna be our two things. Um, this place down here is pumping out the wooden crafts. That's good. I'm just hoping something doesn't pop up and like maul us in just moments. Highly plausible. Let's have a look here. Got some nice quartzite blocks. Gonna put those those down here. This isn't an aquifer, apparently. I thought it was, but there's no water coming out. So we, we've already conquered the aquifer, which is great. Excellent news. What the hell are our miners doing? Drinking, currently. Proper dwarves. That's right. Gotta wet that whistle. Uh, do koalas and DF carry syphilis? No. No, I don't, I don't believe they do. Would wood cups be actually feasible IRL? Yeah, yeah, you could. You could have a wood cup, absolutely. Wooden cup. Definitely. Um, could be killed by drop bears. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you could have a wooden cup, IRL. No problem. Probably gotta make sure it's, like, you know, coated with something or some sort of sealant so it doesn't soak up too much of your beverage, but... Yeah, I'd imagine it's feasible. Absolutely. Look at that. Everyone's so busy, we haven't even built these walls down here yet. That's probably good. Probably good. I'm not complaining. We have our uh, peasants down here, our mason peasants, sleeping in their workshops currently. That just won't do. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to place some beds down. Just uh, just here in this hallway. We've got five. Two, three, four, five. Right here. I'm just going to place them down in this hallway. And um, I'm going to make like a little dormitory or something like that for them. Already, and thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for all your awesome inspiration, Sport Krug. You are and will always be my favorite bearded bastard. Also, love you all, chat. Hope your day is full of awesomeness. Thank you very much. That means a lot, my dude. Truly. You rock. Uh, let's see. Quickly, tuning in to say that I absolutely love your channel. I'm happy to see you stream. Sadly, I'm still at work, so I gotta go. Hey, good luck at work, my friend. Absolutely. Wood cups are protected with a food grade coating. Yeah, I would, I would imagine you'd have to coat them with something, right? Gotta have something. Looks like one of our masons is now a proper mason, so that's good. I imagine their skills are coming along. You see, we only have one peasant still left here. We have a woodcrafter, two miners. Yeah, we're looking good. We actually don't need so many rock blocks anymore. I don't know what I'm thinking. We actually need um, some tables. We're gonna make 10 tables over here. I could create a manager, but um, we don't really have an office or anything yet, currently. <laughs> I always take way too long to make a manager in Dwarf Fortress, and I'm always kicking myself after I do make one because they're so useful. So 
y yell at me if I still haven't made a manager in like another half hour or something. How about? Because right now we're just we're gonna pump out some tables and chairs and this up here I'm gonna have be our meeting hall for now. I've got this long hall that's leading to it just so we can maybe put some traps and stuff in there. I'm still a little afraid of this area. We haven't seen anything bad though, so it should be pretty okay. I'm thinking. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I hope in Steam uh, Dwarf Fortress we can like, um, cause like like right now I would like to um, like look at one of my dwarves and just like read through their information and stuff. But I'm hoping in Steam release you could do that and like have the game still running, like in the background. Just like open up a window with the dwarves' information, just so you can peruse it while the game is still going because like right now I don't have much to do right they're just kind of working about their business they're going to take a little bit longer to do that so it'd be nice to have something to do in the meantime you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying all right these guys have finished mining and I'm tempted to make them mine some more stuff out but I'm actually going to let them go about their business and maybe they can get these beds created right here there we go excellent um uh, Take a look at the chat here. Mike, thank you very much. Speaking of drinking, have a round on me, Krug. Very kind, very kind. Should I start drinking? It's 10.45 in the morning. Maybe I should start pounding him down. I'm making this a really interesting stream, eh? I'm not going to. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That'd be far too interesting for YouTube. Uh, how often do you draw non-Dwarf Fortress-related art? And would you consider making a sort of sketchbook tour video where you flip through your past sketchbooks? Your art is wonderful. Thank you very much, Armand. Um, I don't draw non-Dwarf Fortress art a whole heck of a lot, if ever. Uh, I mean, I, I have been doing it more and more recently, but, um, not a whole heck of a lot. Would I do a video, like, looking at art, though? Um, I don't know, maybe, I guess. It's, it's an idea. Like, I'm, I'm trying to open myself up, open my mind up more to doing different things, like this, uh, like this stream here. You know, I, I hope you're having fun. Maybe, maybe I'll try to make this a weekly thing? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I guess if this goes well, it seems to be going pretty well, though. Um, I'm satisfied with it. I was worried I'd experience more technical difficulties, but that doesn't seem to be really happening so much. Good. It's good. It works for me. But yeah, maybe a little art video would be cool. Actually, I just packed away all of my, my drawings. I uh, bought a tub for them, and I just slammed them all in there, and I put them up in the attic, and I hope they're okay, but I'm sure it'll be fine. There's so many of them. I mean, like, it's heavy. It's a, It was a heavy tub after it was all filled up. Just like a solid block of paper at this point. As I told you, I, you know, it's traditional art. Um, so it's got to be thousands of pictures at this point. I don't really have a good estimate as to how many, though. But, I mean, like, I used to do 30 pictures a week for, you know, at least four years. Uh, you do the math. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see here. How are we looking underground? Using up a lot of this stone. That's good. Got to make a dorm here. Just a little little area. Dormitory. Boop. There we go. Now the dwarves will come here and sleep. They're still not going to be happy with this place at all, but it's better than nothing. Better than what they currently have. That's for darn sure. Okay. Let's see. Construct building. Oh, did I, did I say quartzite blocks? I didn't mean to do that. Well, that's fine. That's what they're using. All right. Well, the aquifer is all dealt with. That's good. Got an eye on our surroundings. We have a moose and a deer in the area. Not so bad. Not so bad. Going to plop a couple of tables down. Right in here. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight chairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Right there. That's going to be our meeting hall. Our meeting hall is good to go, essentially. Um, after that's done, I'm going to put a couple of doors on it. We have to figure out, because like I'm still kind of paranoid, uh, how we're going to get food and stuff down here in case we're locked inside. That's of prime concern right now. Uh, I hope he sees that comment. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. What comment? Don't show me that ever again. I can't record. I'm not sure what comment you're talking about. Okay, so we're working on our little meeting hall there. Good to go. Got our dormitory. That's good. 
Now, okay, I'm gonna zoom out a tad here. We have our hull leading up, right? We have some cages being made currently. We also gotta make some mechanisms if we're gonna make actual cage traps. That's, again, of prime concern. Um, we need a place to go in case there's emergency, like right now. Like there could be some sort of horrible zombie that pops up this moment. Checking, no, we're good. Um, so if we put a couple of cage traps in this hall, we can at least have a place to go in and kind of starve to death for a while and hope that the zombie or whatever goes into a cage trap. So I think we should probably oops, work on that real quick. Like, what do we got? Um, everyone's working right now, making beds and cages and crafts. We can also trade away some cages and beds and stuff too, which that's why I'm keeping them on the task for now. Uh... But I'm thinking maybe the uh, these guys here, the miners or the masons, we can make into engineers real quick, mechanics. And they can make some mechanisms for us. Would be very handy. Extremely handy. Rhythm, thank you. Krug, what kind of music do you like to listen to? You strike me as a dwarf that might like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Is, <laughs> is that a thing? I've never heard of that. Um... I'll have to check it out at some point, if that's an actual thing. But, uh, what kind of music do I listen to? I listen to, I, I like a lot of, like, video game music. Like, old video game music, like, from NES games and, like, Super Nintendo. Some Nintendo 64 stuff. And, like, other games, too. Like, I, I just really like video game music for some reason. It really just puts me at ease and, like, it soothes me. I like it. Um, that's one genre I like, just video game music. But I also really like, like, high energy, like, <sighs> music that sounds like a, like a panic attack, I guess. Like, stuff that's highly energetic with a lot of beeps and boops and, like, screeches and stuff. I couldn't really even explain it. Like, electric, electronic music or something. I don't know. Some migrants have arrived. Oh, no. We can see right off the bat, too, that I don't like this one. Actually, you know what? These dwarves are from... A necromancer tower right so I guess I shouldn't be surprised that the very first person to pop up is a necromancer right goodness gracious let's see what we got here so we have our, our necromancer um, followed by a couple others here we have a carpenter and a jeweler it looks like uh, Shem the woodcutter actually I'm gonna turn Shem here into a full-blown carpenter and it looks like they got some farming duties on but I'm gonna turn those off we don't, we don't need that Shem, you're going to be a full-on woodcutter, and Tossid, our former woodworker, I'm going to take that off, and we're going to make you instead a... Hmm, let's, let's have a think here. What do you want to do, Tossid? They don't have any skills whatsoever, but we're going to need some stuff done, like food and drinks. Food and drinks aren't going to be good shortly. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to have you do, I, I don't think... There are many plants in the area, but maybe there is. Maybe we can gather some plants real quick. Let's have a stab at it and see how that goes. So I'm going to turn on plant gathering as well as brewing and cooking as well for Tossid. Now let's have a gander. I'm going to select an area of plants to be gathered. Boop. Oh my god, there's nothing. Okay. I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, maybe a bigger area. Maybe a bigger area could do it. Boop. No. Not, not a single gatherable plant to be seen. Ooh, up here in the top. That's right. We have this non-evil area. Maybe we can gather some plants up here. I'm going to try it. Boop. Okay, there we go. We got some stuff that can be gathered. Wonderful. What is that? A deer. Okay, we have a deer. Uh, okay. So we have Tossed gathering some plants over yonder way. And what I'm going to do is store our foodstuffs down here underground. We don't have a f proper food storage place quite yet. But this will do right here in this hallway. Just so it doesn't rot. You know, we don't have it exposed out in the open. And like also so Kias and stuff don't come and start yanking this stuff away. That would be quite unfortunate. Bruce Smith, thank you very much. Sorry to pester, but would switching to streaming and then editing them into story videos be a process you could handle? I don't know. It's something that I kind of considered. You know, like if I streamed and like recorded this whole thing, right? And then, like, um, you know, just did a voiceover thing afterwards. Like, I don't know, maybe. It's it's something I thought about. 
Um, but it's like whenever I try something new with anything I do, I discover that it's miraculously 18 times harder than I could have thought it would have been. You know, so like, I, I don't know. Maybe it'd be cool. Hard to say, really. Hard to say. Uh, back back to the game here. We have um, Catal, our necromancer. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this necromancer right now. Um, like, <laughs> I get we're from a necromancer civilization, apparently. But this necromancer could make things very difficult for our dwarves uh, to, to live through if, you know, it raises corpses and stuff. So, I'm gonna make this dwarf a uh, fisherman. Even though they're a weapon crafter and could be very handy to us, we don't have any metal to make anyways. We don't have any metal to use anyways, so um, we're gonna make them a fisherman. And... Uh, one second, one second. Go in here to jeweler. I'm just going to keep them as a jeweler for now. That'll, that'll be fine. I think we're going to make a little, like, fisherman place for the necromancer specifically. I think might be kind of cute. We'll make, like, a little hut or something off to the side where we can just keep the necromancer. <laughs> Sounds a little cruel, but I'm, I'm hoping it works out. Let's... Let's see here. Or maybe we'll just, we'll, we'll like, make it as far up in the, the top and northeast corner as we can. We'll just carve out a little uh, little area here. Boop, just like that, right? How's that? I like it. And, well, uh, you know what? I'm going to make it a little farther down, actually. Just because, like, you can do that thing where you chop down a tree and it makes a hole in the ceiling above, which is kind of a pain in the ass. And I don't want that. So we're going to make a tiny little house just up here. Just cute as a button. Little stairway that leads down. Right to, uh, right to this level. To this level, I think. There we go. There we go. Just like that. I don't think that's the aquifer level, but I don't know. Let me, uh, I'm gonna take another gander here. Wait a second. Do my eyes deceive? What is this? I'm gonna hit K and take a look. Uh, hematite. Wow, my dwarves. We do have metal in this area. I did not believe we did. Look at that. Hematite. We can make iron. I, I think that's what iron is anyways. I'm pretty sure. There's a lot, too. Ooh, the Iron Coast. It looks like we're in business, dwarves. Very cool. The orangutan bestowed upon us a great boon. A baboon, if you will. <laughs> and I will. Patrick Wells, have you ever played RimWorld? It is another great story generator style game, which you would probably love. I, I have tried to play it. Thank you very much, by the way. Um... Yeah, I, I have played it a little bit. Um, it's kind of like Dwarf Fortress, though, in, in my mind, where it's hard to, like, you know, you got to play it for a, a while before you can tell what's going on, you know? And I haven't really had the time to put into it, I guess. And so, no, I haven't really gotten into it, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's neat. Absolutely. I'd like to play it some more. I just got to put some time aside for it, you know, at some point. One day, one day, I'll get into it. Let's see what happens. Like, I've seen those, um, like, uh, statues that are generated in the game and stuff, and those are pretty cool. If outlandish, you know, I've seen, like, statues made that have, like, uh, you know, like a creature with all kinds of stuff hanging off of it, and, like, snails and weapons, and I, I don't know. It's, it'd be interesting to try to draw something like that. Yes, this is going to be our necromancer house, just up here in the, the top northeast corner. I think that'll be cool. Hopefully they get to digging that out soon. I don't want that necromancer in with our our dwarves. Maybe um, I'll link it up to the fortress proper at some point. But for now, I think it'll be fine just off over in the corner. Actually, I'll make a little fishing spot too up over that way. Because they're going to be a fisherman, right? I think that'd be excellent. We'll do it just like this. Fishing. There we go. Get to work, you bastard. Nathan Gubbler, thank you. Krug Smash, your content is so charming and it's always a charm to see it in my feed. Don't worry about output. It's something to be savored and rewatched many times. Well, I, I thank you very much. Um, I do. It's actually, it really sucks because lately I realize my stream of videos has decreased significantly, which I'm not pleased with at all. But like, like I've, I've brought it up in the past. Like, I don't think people realize it. But back when I was putting out a video per week, you know, um, I wasn't really in a good place, I don't think, for years when I was making those. And was kind of just, you know, in this workaholic stupor for a, a long time. So, man, 
as much as it pains me to say it, like, I don't think I could be that Krug Smash again. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are wanting that. I couldn't blame you for wanting that. I know, I, I get it. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's difficult, you know, like just like sunk into your work and doing stuff and like like I, I don't think people believe me when I say like that's all I was doing for four years say just working like uh, you'd wake up and you go to work drawing pictures working 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 like that's that's what my existence was when I was putting out videos like that you know back during I'll say my heyday you know um and it's not good it, it's not a good way to be like I couldn't I couldn't go back to that you know and I'm doing much better now, uh, you know, mentally and stuff. I'm doing a lot better, I'd say. I'm, I'm quite happy. It's fun to just sit here and stream. I'm having a great time right now, actually. You know, just kind of focusing on the moment, not worrying so much about tomorrow. That sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time, too. Actually, just playing some Dwarf Fortress on a lazy... Was it Thursday? Is it Thursday? I guess so. Weeks really flying by, I feel. Go figure. Oh, let me take a look here. Look at these. <laughs> the sex bots have returned. Get out of here, you. <laughs> yeah, hell out of here. I don't need you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had a short fortress in the past where I had a featured artist. Would I consider doing that again? I, I would consider doing that. I think that would be a great change to make. Um... Oh, Bruce Smith. Have you had any thoughts on the Wandering Village? It looks really cool. I played, actually, the uh, the, the trial for that, the um, little free demo version, and it was pretty fun. I didn't really get super into it, but it is up my alley. Um, I f <sighs> this was a while ago. It was months ago when I played that, but uh, it, it seems neat. It really does. Oh, we got a panda in the area. Okay, here one second. I gotta address this thing real quick. We have our water buffaloes are not doing well. And I think it's because there's really nothing to graze in the area. Um, all the grass appears to be dead, so. Hmm. I guess we're gonna have to butcher these guys. It's just what you gotta do, I suppose. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. I'm gonna make a, a butcher workshop and actually our jeweler right here. We haven't had doing anything so far. I'm gonna turn into a butcher and a tanner. And I'm also going to build a tanning workshop because we don't want that leather to go to waste, now do we? Yeah, that's what we'll get to right over there. Um, Wandering Village, yes. It was a while ago where I played it and it was pretty fun. I really like the concept. I like the branching paths that your wandering beast can take. Uh, the management of it seemed pretty fun. Um, I, I think I was expecting it to be more of like a city builder or something and... I don't know. I'm not sure. I noticed, I remember having some sort of an issue with it. And I'm not sure if it ended up being completely up my alley. But, I mean, again, that was like the demo version months ago. So maybe it's changed since then. I'll have to pick it up again. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Seeb. Really glad you have a better work-life balance now, Craig Smash. Thanks for doing this stream. It's just nice to see you play DF. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that an awful lot, my friend. You're, you're great. Uh, means a lot. Like, seriously, though. Like, when I say that sort of stuff, it, it means an awful lot just to see how many people care out there. Uh, you guys are great. It does a lot for me. I appreciate it. An awful lot. Truthfully. I don't know. Okay, um... <laughs> Stop being sappy for a second. I gotta kill these buffaloes. <laughs> okay, water buffalo. Ready for slaughter. Both yous. Okay, and I think our... No, no, no! Don't, don't, don't worry about storing stuff away there, Godin. We're gonna gotta kill these animals real quick. Get to it. There we go. Gonna drag a water buffalo over to our butcher shop and get it all taken apart into its component pieces. There we go, and tanning up the hide now. Good, good. I'm really afraid of like something popping up at the corners of the wilderness here. We could really be screwed fast if like like there's been times where I've started off in evil biomes and it'll lull you into a false sense of security and you'll be like, eh, you know what? Maybe this is a safe place. 
And then it's just not a surprise. It's just not. Like a cloud will pop up and turn your dwarves into thralls, or it'll start raining and everyone will become like ghouls or something like that. Never good. So we have our meeting halls all set over here. We have our dormitory. We have a food stockpile. Good, good, good. Excellent. Uh, we need some proper bedrooms down underground here. And, like, we should probably also start thinking of plans for an actual fortress, too. Like, this is all just a, a temporary sort of a thing, I feel. Uh, we should come up with an idea for something that is, like, um, a little more permanent, right? Like... I like the idea of, you know, coming down into our fortress level right here and then having to go up this this northern hall, right? Uh, maybe I can make something beyond the northern hall that'll be a little bit bigger. Maybe I can make the northern hall uh, kind of bend back around or something. Or maybe I can just make a stairway over there that'll continue on down to our fortress proper. Sounds like it could be fun. Oops, sorry. I'm going to zoom back in here. There we go. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe I'll, um... We'll carve out a way up to the north here, north of this place, okay? And I'm going to make a little place like this, and we're going to make a down, downward stair, and an up down stair, and just go down a whole bunch from here, just like that. How's that sound? And you know what? We've smoothed down the walls of this meeting hall a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that so much. We're going to we're gonna not do that, because, again, not permanent. We can do it in the future when we have some time on our hands, but... We should really be working harder at this point. Let's see, who's not doing stuff? We have, um, I tossed it up here in the northeast, still gathering plants. That's good to see. We should probably get some barrels and stuff. I'm hoping we're storing them and not just leaving them on the ground to rot would not be okay with me. Looks like we're good, though. We've got a bunch of barrels over here. Maybe we should start some production on barrels, though. We have a lot of wood, you know? <laughs> we have wood to burn, which might be apt if we get our hands on some of that iron. Now... Wouldn't it be? I'm gonna make some barrels. We're just gonna make 20 of them to start. Just like that. Okay. And then, well, I was saying before that we have to make some cage traps ASAP and have not even put any further thought into that whatsoever. So maybe we should do that too. Um, masons. Our masons aren't doing anything right now, so I'm gonna turn them into engineers just briefly. Both of down underground here. I'm going to set up some hot keys. I should have done that by now. Oops. There we go. Up, down, up, down. Wonderful. Working on those uh, mechanics workshops down here. It looks like they're both all set now. I'm going to make some mechanisms out of quartzite. I'm going to set that on repeat. There we go. And yes, I'm going to get some cage traps ready and then just kind of stuff up this narrow hole over here that leads into our meeting hall. Just so if something pops up, we can go on the other side of the cage traps and hopefully get whatever is attacking us stuck in some cage traps. Would be nice. Maybe export them too if it's a pricey beastie. How's it going, Mr. Krug Smash? I absolutely love all your past content. I've watched it all. Just keep doing what you're doing and stay healthy and happy, sir. I thank you for introducing me to DF. I, um, I appreciate that. I'm glad you like it. Big time. You guys are great. Make a manager, Krug. Lucas 777 Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to do that. Um... Let's see. You know, I'm going to make a janky little manager's office just in a hallway, I think. I'm going to make a table and a chair. Boop, boop. Just real quick. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to be even smarter than that. I'm actually going to get rid of one of these tables and one of these chairs. And you know what? I'm going to be even smarter than that and not get rid of them. I'm going to make uh, a study right here out of this one, one chair right here. <laughs> and this is going to be an office, just this one stool right here. We don't yet have a manager yet, though, so let's, uh, let's assign one. Hmm. Nobody. Nobody is good at managing. So, uh, how about you, jeweler? We're going to make the jeweler be the manager for now. And I think that'll, that'll work out just fine. Let's see, what's the name? Godin. There we go. Godin the manager. Now, we don't need them to make anything quite yet, but it's just, it's good to have one. That's for sure. Let's see a here. <laughs> Wall, roof, and drawbridge is all you need for defense. I'll have a second floor made of fortification so archers can deal with anything that comes. Oh, no, no, no. My friend, that's not all you need at all. What are you, out of your mind? What about delicious foods delivered to your dwarves? What about the raw thrill of adventure? You can't experience that. That's a dwarven need for sure. 
And that's not something you could have if you're locked up behind a wall, right? <laughs> Curse your tongue. We need that that excitement in our lives. All right, I'm gonna carve out a little area over here. Just this this here, I think, is gonna be our fortress main level. Want to see a little cheat, a little cheesy hack that my friend showed me? If you make a farm plot like this, I, I've shown this off in a video previously, but if you make a farm plot, right, you can't build it here because it's in stone. You can't build a farm plot in solid stone. That's madness. But if you go up and down, right, okay, I still can't build it, obviously. It's in stone. But I'm going to go down a bit, right? Going to keep going down, down, down. Right, Whoa, what was that? You see that? What is that? Oh, my goodness. What's happening there? Is that, is that, is this a cheat? Is this a cheesy little secret? We can actually see the ground underground. Isn't that funny? But yeah, like, uh, I mean, that's good if you don't want to experience like, you know, like, uh, you know, you know, build a big old plan out a fortress. And then sometimes you'll encounter a cave and it screws up your plans. But if you do something like this, you can, uh, you can be, be a little bit more prepared. It is super cheesy. I don't, I don't care for doing that, but like, you don't want your plans destroyed either, you know? I know what that's like. I think that might be like the, the second cavern layer though. I, I feel like there might be another one too. Like if you look around out here, sometimes you can scope one out before you run into it. I'm gonna look real quick just to see. Now these keep these secrets on the DL. We don't want the other Dwarf Fortress players to know about these. This is just a bearded bastard secret, okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing that much. I did not track where that other cave was either. That's so stupid. I should have, uh, should have kept a mental note. Oh, well. That's fine. It'll be fine. Where the hell was that tunnel? One second. I'm gonna find that tunnel again. Okay. Oops. I'm gonna try that again. Uh, let's see. Where was it? I think it was right below that. Was it? Oh, boop, 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 boop. here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Negative. Okay, it's, it's on level 69. Right down here. Wonderful. Okay. One second. Let me uh, try to scope out where this is exactly. Okay. 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 Now i got to, like, remember visually where this spot is so I can, like... So I think right here, right? That's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna go back up, see if I can find that tunnel. Oh man, that's really far down there, huh? Jeez. Yeah, we're up on level 27 right now, negative 27. So like, yeah, that's down there. Okay. Well, at least we don't have to worry about like, um, you know, running into a cave or something like that. I think we're just gonna dig out this for now and you know, try to make a actual fortress and not connecting to the caves just yet. Why make things harder for us? Like, <laughs> we're already going to be in over our heads at some point. But, yeah. Nice, nice live Krug. Yes, yes, it's live. Ooh, what was that? Masterpiece Cherrywood Earring. Oh, look at these masterpieces already. Kubuk didn't know what the hell they were doing at the start. But uh, already producing masterpieces. That's pretty excellent. It's late summer right now, actually. It's years progressing quite quickly, I'd say. Quite quickly. No undead creatures. I'm starting to feel safer and safer in this area, frankly. I don't think we have any uh, zombies or anything like that. It doesn't appear to be any clouds. No freakish weather. Like, it's been raining this whole time, and we don't have slime or glop or elf blood raining from the sky. Crying shame, but... <laughs> Seems to be working. Seems to be working. We have our little necromancer house over here we haven't yet touched. We'll work on that in a bit. We've got bigger fish to fry currently. I think that necromancer's going to be fine, though. They seem to be behaving themselves. It's not going to work out if I just keep them running around, though. <laughs> I think maybe I should make an underground place and, like, uh, keep them cloistered away. Give them some sort of a job that they can work on by themselves. Maybe I should, um... Maybe we should moisten up some soil underground and make them like a farmer. They can produce some paper and like start writing books or something. I don't think that would work well. Like, it might work for a little bit, but 
dwarves locked up like that, they, they don't tend to have the best, best uh, mental stability after a very short amount of time. Couldn't blame them, really. <laughs> Imagine being locked up in a ground, like a, a chamber underground and being told, yeah, just write books. Uh, this is your existence. Bye. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like that, personally. I don't think I would like that. Ah, you know, I might be okay with it. Yeah, maybe. I, I could be I, I could be fine with that, actually, yeah. This, this necromancer is going to be lucky, I think. All right, so we have our little chamber down here. Um, this is where we're going to start our fortress, our grand fortress. And we're going to start digging ASAP. Um, how to do this, though? I think it should stretch out down to the south, because, like, we have plenty of space down there to work with. Not so much up to the north. <sighs> okay. Let's not go too overboard, though. Sometimes I plan out, like, giant, lavish chambers and, like, you know, really screw myself that way. So we're not going to do that. We're going to kind of do, like, what we did above there and just make, like, this tapering sort of a chamber. And then make a giant, lavish chamber right out here. <laughs> it's so stupid. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. People wonder how I get, like, those, like, shapes and stuff, like, what kind of mods I use. I don't use, like, that sort of stuff. I just, I don't know, just kind of do it and get used to it over time, I suppose. I don't know. It seems to work, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then just mirror it on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 2 units down. Then 2 units down. And then 1 unit. And you know, sometimes it doesn't end up being totally symmetric either. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Dwarves probably don't care that much to make their chambers symmetrical, you know. That looks dandy, though. I like it. I like it a lot. You know what? I think right in the middle, actually, we'll, um... We'll... Let's see. One second, one second. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is six wide. Let's make a chamber in the second... In the, in the, the center... And, like, have it just slightly off-center. Right? Maybe the dwarves made a mistake while carving out this this, uh, this chamber here. <laughs> As people start leaving the stream en masse. <laughs> Listen, it's gonna be okay, alright? There we go. I like that. We're gonna make this little special room in the middle for some sort of purpose. Maybe we'll put levers in there. And it's slightly off-center, because I think it's funny. I like that. We'll do that. Corey Harper. Thank you very much, my friend. Hello, Mr. Krug. I am glad to hear you are doing much better. Just wanted to say thank you for all the entertainment. Under I can't talk. <laughs> thank you for all the entertainment since the day I stumbled onto Delirishly. That was a long time ago. Heck yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your kind words and for watching. And your support. It means an awful lot. Thanks. <laughs> my symmetry. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is an act of violence. Suffer. Oh, that's going to be terrible, huh? It's fine, though. It's fine. The dwarves don't care so much. They don't care, okay? It's fine. It's going to be okay, my guys. Let's move back up here. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is cruddy little chambers looking pretty dandy. Um, oh, right. We're making those uh, mechanisms. Let's see how many cage traps we can make, if any. Uh, T, C. Okay. There we go. Cage trap. Ah, yes. We've got a few. We've got a few here. One, um, oops. Oh my goodness. There we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's what we're gonna do for right now. And I'm actually just gonna turn these guys off and just get to work. Get those traps all set up there, you guys. Who's not working currently? We have a carpenter who's not doing anything. What are you doing? You get to work, you. We got plenty of things to do around here. Ain't no time for lollygagging. Up here in the carpenter workshop. Oh, right. I had to make you those barrels, which they have completed. I hope. I hope. Uh, we'll make some more. How about... Can't really make too many barrels. Um, can't go too overboard. Got plenty of wood in the area, so it's all going to go to barrels, pretty much. That, and um, can't forget that we've got that hematite there as well. Hematite? However you want to pronounce it. Um, I, again, I, I believe that's used for iron, but I'm not 100%. Okay, okay. I, I, again, I'm really paranoid something's going to pop up at the corner of the map, but 
I'm also thinking we're pretty good. I don't want to get lulled into a false sense of security, though, which is definitely going to happen. We have, um, our neighbors here are zombies, or a necromancer tower, and we have goblins as well. So we can expect to see both groups at some point. Usually, if your neighbors are a necromancer tower, then they come pretty quick. Like, usually within the first year. Uh, sometimes you have a couple of seasons before they'll show up. That's what I'm most afraid of. Like, we're not established at all. We don't have anything. Um, right now, our population is at 10. We have 10 dwarves here, not very many. So, like, we couldn't do anything besides possibly trap them in some cages. You know, actually, these <laughs> stupid dwarves. You'd think we'd have the mental wherewithal to put our food on the other side of the cage traps. Imagine, like, if we're stuck in our meeting hall without food and just, like, looking out across the traps like, Oh, I'm so hungry, though. <laughs> no, we're going to do that. Actually, our beds, too. Stupid, stupid dwarf. So brash. So brash. Too decisive. Too decisive. I'm going to put some beds down here. We're going to just cram them in our meeting hall and just make one hell of an uncomfy place for now. Temporary. You know, we're getting our grand chamber prepared down underground, I would like to think. Um, I would like to think. I don't know what happened with that. We have our miner up here storing items in stockpiles, which should not be the case. Uh, let's see. Muffcat, no hauling. No more hauling duties. That's enough. Same with you, Kivish. We need you mining. All right, ASAP. Uh, no, no sleeping. I'm just kidding. You can get some sleep. We don't need you swinging your pick around without the, uh, uh, I don't know. Wow, am I dreaming? Are you actually streaming DF? Yes, yes I am. This is no dream. In fact, it might be a nightmare. We'll see. Oh, goodness, we got the, the sex bots have again entered the chat. Get the hell out of here, you. Bunch of assholes. Together, apes strong. Maybe we should make, like, a, um... Some sort of a monument to just... Uh, like apes, orangutans, or something. For those of you tuning in now that didn't see the previous adventure mode antics, like, uh, they were pretty, pretty excellent, I say. We had a snail, or a slug man adventurer who had a pet gorilla, briefly, that was killed, right? It, it ran off. Like, we didn't see what happened to it, I don't think. Now that I'm thinking of it. We had a gorilla that ran off into the wilds and I believe was killed somewhere. And then we also snagged a gibbon and a whole bunch of orangutans. And we went running off to do some quest that involved bone-chilling horror, but never saw the quest. We ran to a moose, and the moose killed two of our orangutans. And so the slug man, the gibbon, and the remaining orangutan went down, and they hunted down this moose, and they were able to kill it. And it was just pure dwarf fortress is all I can say about it. But um, I think this world here... They have a lot of respect for orangutans and monkeys in general, just primates. And so, like, our totem creature for this fortress is an orangutan. Hopefully we can catch one one day. I don't have any high hopes. Maybe if the elves come to trade, they'll they'll bring with them an orangutan, one of those glorious golden beasts. <laughs> oh, I attacked the gorilla, gorilla with a banana. That's right. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, um... I brought some bananas with me, and I, I threw a banana at the gorilla, and that enraged the beast, who then was attacked by my pet Gibbon, who was able to fend the thing off briefly. And yeah, it was a whole thing. But yeah, <laughs> the snail man's off somewhere now. This chamber's coming along nice. This here is going to be our meeting hall, I believe. Uh, right now, we have a pretty straightforward fortress layout. This here is going to be the main level, our meeting hall. Big, glorious meeting hall. Then up here we have a stairway leading up to our temporary hall, which I hope to make maybe a trap hall or something like that in the future. We have some cage traps in place, so we should be nice and safe, hopefully. And then this stairway here leads up to the surface. Just kind of a winding configuration. It's not too bad. Let's have a look here in our area. Still no undead. That's good. We have our necromancers over here fishing just at this pond. I don't believe we've been turning any of the fish that they collect into actual food. Um, which is pretty wasteful. Maybe we should do that. Uh, yeah. What the hell? Let me see. Cage fishery workshop right here out of logs. Maybe I'll turn this fisher necromancer into a fish cleaner and dissector just briefly. Take off that. Oh, I can't take off the fishing duty, but yeah. I, I don't know if they've been collecting anything on the ground here. 
Uh, I, I don't know if they've been actually catching anything. Have you been catching anything, dwarf? I don't see any stored fish. Maybe it's down here underground. Maybe one of these barrels has some raw fish. Let me see. Wine. We got some wine. Uh, meat. Fish. Fish barrel. Cave lobster. That's the stuff we brought with us. Oh, fish barrel. Cave lobster. Raw pond turtle. Okay. There we go. Here we have some of it. Oh, the outpost liaison has arrived. Okay. Here they come. Just winding down. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. A couple of wagons. We got some other beasts of burden here. Excellent. Well, we should start moving stuff to the depot proper. Um, let's see here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to trade, surprisingly. I think we've been uh, pretty successful with the trade goods production just this first year. I'm going to trade all of our crafts. Let me see here. Now I'm going to move this category, the entire category. And we'll see how far that gets us. Hopefully all our dwarves are on the job currently. Yeah, except for our miners who are just happily digging away down here. That's that's fine. That's fine. I don't think it's going to be a big job to get all those items moved to the depot. Should be pretty good. Let's see here. Turtles in time. Kawabunga. Ka, ka, ka. Krug, the DF streamer. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I love watching stuff that makes 0% sense. There you go. Excellent. Well, this is straight up your alley then. Yes, take a gander at all these little blips and bloops on screen. Oh, look, a brown down arrow. That's slightly recognizable. Erdem Erib Zedat. I am your outpost liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. The world is the same as ever. Okay. What request do you have of our merchants? Let's have a look. What do we need here? I forgot to bring silk and wool uh, in case we have an artifact maker pop up. So maybe maybe some of that, I guess. We should probably... Oh, we have leather now. Leather's easy enough to get. We have those pigs. Uh, I'm going to request some silk and maybe some cloth just plant cloth how about wool you guys have wool cloth yarn i don't see that's one of the weird things with dwarf fortress is like why is cloth yarn down here and then like plant cloth and silk cloth is up here that's strange you know i'm hoping they uh get get the categories and stuff more homogenized during this team release i'm sure they will not too concerned they have metal bars which I was originally going to try to get metal bars from them primarily because I didn't think we had any metal in the area, but I think we're A-OK -okay on that now. Not going to worry too much about it. What else do we need, though, is the question. Hmm. 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 Well, not too sure. How about some drinks? Like, we've done very little at this point to produce our own food and drinks, which is terrifying. It's a ter terrifying realization to make. <laughs> this far into the year. I haven't looked at our food stock piles in a while. I'm hoping they're not like completely dried up, but we'll see. We will see. Right, I'm gonna bring some of this some of this stuff. I don't know. That's probably fine. We're not in dire need of anything in particular, just kind of everything across the board. Well then we have finalized the import agreement. Feel free to go over the documents. Here they are. Yeah, items we request. Let's discuss what we are willing to trade for your craft dwarf ship. Let's have a look. Uh, da, da, da. So, they want... I, I never produce these things, but this tells you what they will um, accept at higher prices next year. This is what they are in need of at the, the, um, the mountain home. And it looks like they need anvils, which we can't really make. They want toys. I, th I think that's toys. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, you know, because it's just such a giant space. But um, I think it's either toys or seeds. And, um, goblets, perhaps? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, no, goblets. Tanned hides. Okay. I don't even know why I'm looking at that. We're not gonna bother producing any of those. We're just gonna keep moving forward with our wooden crafts and stuff, you know? <laughs> Let's have a look here. Cha-cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Interrupted by Great Horned Owl. So it looks like we have a Great Horned Owl up on the surface, causing some trouble. These guys can be real troublemakers sometimes. But uh, I'm hoping this one doesn't cause too much trouble. I think it was being chased, actually, by a, by an archer, briefly. But they weren't able to hit it. That's good. See, something like that could be extremely dangerous. If we have, like, a corpse out somewhere, and the thing was to swoop down and, like, go after our necromancer that we have walking around... The necromancer would panic and just raise any corpse in the area 
uh, wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be good at all. Imagine if that happened, if we had, like, <laughs> say, an entire butcher shop filled with water buffalo pieces that somehow didn't, um, like, right, right there. You know, we had this the butcher shop here, which is just absolutely filled up with water buffalo pieces. Hair and skulls and all this stuff. I mean, not all of it could be brought back to life, but some of it can. Um, I think maybe the hair? I'm not, I'm not too sure. But yeah, we've... Man, I don't want to kick this necromancer out, but... We gotta do something with them. We can't keep on like this. We're just asking for it. I, like, I built that little house for them up in the north, but I don't know if that's gonna cut it. We have a lot of picks, remember that. That's one thing that we did. So... Hmm, thinking, thinking... We have a lot of picks, so what if we made this necromancer here instead of a fisherman? I'm gonna take off all their jobs. Okay, no jobs except for mining. We want you to go pick up a mining pick, my friend. Let's see, going, they picked up their the mining pick and they're going to dig currently. Um, right, I've got that big spa underground. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hold up, you guys. Um, Gotta figure out a way to get the okay we're gonna try this I'm gonna create a squad no uniform i'm hoping the necromancer doesn't drop the uh mining pick hopefully i don't but we'll see is that you that's right yes cattle okay so cattle i'm gonna have go up I'm gonna... i put them into a squad right the torrid vessels is the name of the squad i'm gonna have them go up here to this little little spot up here let's see if this works Again, if they drop their pick, then... And it looks like they did. It looks like they did. That's not good. I'll tell you what, we're just gonna keep uh, walking on a knife's blade for now. A knife's edge for now. With this necromancer. We're just gonna keep them active. And you know what, I'm gonna make them into uh, the, the miner there. I'm gonna keep them as a miner, just so they can stay down underground and, you know, keep working away. Maybe that's a good place for them, just down there. They're not gonna get tired. They're not gonna get hungry or sleepy or anything like that, so they're just gonna stay down underground. That's actually a pretty good idea, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Let's see here. That's a giant. Krug is definitely a purist. He doesn't even use mass trade with shift enter, but instead just goes through trade items one by one, pressing enter. That's right. Absolutely. The proper dwarven way to do things. <laughs> Listen, sometimes I remember uh, key commands, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I just don't care. I don't know. It's completely random. Uh, <laughs> but yes, dwarven purist. Absolutely. It sums it up. Dwar dwarven idiot, <laughs> I think. That's a little bit more concise. They're still bringing these crafts to the trade depot. We hit, we made a lot in that one year. I think they just finished, though. We don't have a broker. That's probably something we should have set up beforehand. Let's see here. Okay. Of course, our necromancer is a legendary conversationalist, so I think Cadol is going to be our broker for now. We can use your help, my friend. Uh, I'm going to request you at the depot. There we go. Okay, there you go. Just head on up there, do a little, little trade ski, then we're going to send you back down to the mines forever as we prepare your little dungeon home. <laughs> hey Krug, how large how large tavern is good enough? I, I don't know. Usually they don't have to be very big at all, honestly. Like, um, you can have a, a tiny, tiny, tiny tavern and just have a couple of artifacts in there and dwarves will be like, this place is great, even though it's just literally a, a little dirt trench, you know? So, it, I mean, you know, you can also have it be gigantic, and as long as you just smooth out the walls, make some nice engravings, then you'll be good to go. Um, okay, so we can trade now. Look at these. Look at these crafts. That's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. I'm going to have to make our crafts dwarf there. Um, maybe give him, a, give him a raise or something. That's, that's really good. I'll tell you what. Um, well, let's see what they've brought. They may not have brought anything interesting, so... I was gonna say, let's just trade everything, but they may not have anything here. Let's have a look. We got some sheets. Hmm, okay. These are just plain sheets, which can be used to be bound into choirs, I believe. I always forget how bookmaking goes, but I believe that's how it goes. Um, we're gonna get these sheets, okay? Because we can afford them. And, well, 
You know, we don't need crutches at all, but I'm gonna get a couple just because I happen to be thinking of it, happen to be seeing them, and every once in a while we'll, you know, end up with a dwarf who's injured and just needs a crutch, and it takes me forever to make the thing, so I'll just pick up a couple while we're here. We can, we can afford it, you know. <laughs> Got some cheese. Take some of that cheese. Probably don't need that much. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We'll get a whole bunch. Need that cheese. Wonderful, wonderful. Got some traps here. Uh, some trap components, that is. Let's see. Some thread. We can use some thread. If we have a medical emergency, it'll be nice to stitch a dwarf up, make their guts not be so spilled out and stuff. We have some garden vegetables. Ah. Raspberries, bilberries, plump helmets. I'll take it all. We can use that food, because we don't really feel like producing our own food currently. Um, we'll, we'll get to it in time, but for now, yeah, we'll just pick up what we can. Got some anvils here. Uh, haven't seen any Kias in the area yet. I don't think there are any Kias or Grey Langers or anything. I hate when those guys pop up and they steal all your stuff, though. It seems like they like to take the anvils. I'll take a couple, just because, like, we've, we've produced so much this year. Watch us not be able to afford all this stuff. I think we're going to be good, though. I think we're going to be fine. Got some bolts. Cloth. Yes. Okay. Got some wool cloth here. Got some plant cloth. Ooh. We got some leather. We got some silk cloth. We're good. Hopefully we can afford this. I think we can. Bags. We got chests. How about some drinks? Got some drinks? I'd like a drink. Got some socks. Hmm. Probably would be good good idea to get some of this armor and stuff, wouldn't it be? I'll tell you what, we'll worry about that in a second. Because I think we can make our own, and I don't think it'll take too long either. Ah, here we go, some drinks. Again, this is like, I was talking about the, uh, like the, how things are categorized as you parse your way through Dwarf Fortress, and like, I don't know why drinks would just be kind of like scattered in this section here. I guess there's a bunch of barrels and stuff, but like, you gotta like look, because this, this one's got syrup in it. This one's got ale. Okay, this one's just an empty one. This one's got sheep blood in it, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's kind of hard to pick through you know if you're just looking for drinks got some kangaroo milk here of course cardinal blood imagine how many cardinals had to go into that ghoulish just ghoulish we have a sow cage turkey hen cage some water skins some ropes take a couple why not some glass okay i think that's gonna be that's, that's gonna about do it now, let's see what we can what we can get for our crab. Shift enter. Mark all goods for trade. I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, if we well, if we do that, they, they make off with ten thousand units of profit. So we might as well get some weapons and stuff too, huh? Might as well. Maybe we'll just take all of their metal crap and just melt it down. How's that sound? We'll see how much we can get. Steel crossbow, silver, steel, copper. Like, if I was a careful man, I wouldn't be going so well. <laughs> I've already erased half of that 10,000 profit, so maybe we can't be so crazy with this. I don't want wombat, leather, armor, steel. Take some steel. Let's, let's see. Okay, okay, fine. You want to really gouge us, huh? How's that? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for your business. Yeah, yeah, get the hell out of here. We'll have more wood crap for you next year. Enjoy it. More crafts. Okay. Get to it. Start pumping out those crafts again. Let's have a look here. I'm taking a look in the chat real quick. Uh, Sajad. I am sorry I probably mangled that. Sajad. Hey, Dari. Thank you very much, my friend. Don't read this. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't, I won't read this. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's have a look here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, military commander necromancer. No more trading. Get back to the mines, you. Don't need you out and about. Creepy. Actually, I'm feeling pretty good about this, this uh, progress down here so far. Honestly, this place is getting carved out uh, really quickly. Oh, I like it. We'll get those traps going. Um... 
Our food and drink stockpiles are looking A-OK -okay currently. That should be more than enough to keep us sated through the year, I would like to think. But I suppose time will tell. Time will tell. I'm just trying to think now of, like, where we go from here. I like to have food production centralized near our actual fortress. That's going to be pretty important. And the best way to do that is by building a farm underground. Now, you could do this in a number of ways. You could do it by digging down to the mines, or the uh, tunnels, and you can just build farms out in the, uh, the moss and stuff, typically. Um, that carries a number of problems though like forgotten beasts and other beasties from out in the caves you don't want to deal with that sort of stuff certainly but then there's another pain in the ass way you can go about it where you um you make a make you can make your own chamber you can make any size shape farm you want underground really it's just uh it could be a bit of a process like if you make a if i had a water source a little bit farther down here then you can just set up a bucket brigade and dwarves will take buckets one by one and just start dumping them in an area. And it takes a little bit of a setup, but um, yeah, it, it works and you can get any size and shape farm that you that you like, but I don't really have water that close to down here. So um, what I could do is set up a water source down here and then set up a bucket brigade from there. But is if I'm gonna be setting up a water source underground, I might as well just set up a way to moisten an entire area, you know? Makes sense to me. So, to that end, I think we should, oops, sorry. I'm gonna make a farm area right over here. This is a bit complex. I don't often do this sort of stuff, so I expect there to be some sort of an issue along the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, one. Right here in the center, right? We're gonna start off by making just a small little corridor right over here right and this here is going to be our farm area okay one two three four five one two three four five just like this how's that let me get a little bit bigger nice big spacious area for a farm too big that's way too big but you know what that's probably gonna be fine yeah, we're gonna get that carved out, okay? Now, the best way to get this wet is by dumping in water from the surface. Now we have access to an entire ocean up there, which actually would make for a great trap too. But one thing at a time. Uh, what I'm going to do is build another tunnel this way. This is gonna be our, our water tunnel, I guess. I'm gonna build an up stairway. Ooh, you know, I just forgot we have access to a, um, a light aquifer, too. That's another way we can go about things, too. But we're not going to do it that way. I don't really, I don't really feel like it. That could be a, a little finicky sometimes. Though it is a, a good way to go about things. If we use salt water, does it ruin the soil? I don't, I don't think it does, oddly enough. I know I've gotten comments about that on my one ocean fortress video. But I don't think it ruins it. I think it just kind of screws things up. I'll tell you what. We'll put it to the test. As misguided as this may be, I'm gonna try to use salt water to moisten our underground fields. And if it doesn't work, then yeah, it doesn't work, but we've learned something, eh? I think it's gonna be fine, though. I think it's gonna be just dandy. So, what we're gonna do is build uh, a little tunnel right over here. And I'm going to, uh, and, you know, I'm not too sure how far these waves come in. But, and build it downstairs, right here, okay? And we're gonna go like this. That's where the aquifer starts. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All right. I'm gonna carve our way through the aquifer. Just, just right here, I think. Okay. See, this is why I'm, I'm always, like, afraid of, like, uh, doing Dwarf Fortress streams, because it hits these moments where I'm just, like, I have to, like, think about things and use my my pitiful amount of brain, available brown, brain power to, like, plan this stuff out, and it gets kind of gets kind of slow, you know? But, I mean, I guess if this is fine, that's fine. It's what we're doing, so, today anyways. We'll see how it goes. 
Let me take a look. I'm gonna go back down. I'm gonna try to line things up properly with the underground. I should set up another uh, hotkey, F3, F2, okay, one, two, three, wonderful. Let's have a look. <laughs> okay, up, 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 a whole bunch here. Okay, now I'm gonna try to line things up. That aquifer is right over here, or the uh, tunnel that I'm building is right over here. Now, let's see here. Now it's over here. I could just make like an L shape, right? Like this, but that's so unappealing. I don't want to do that. So <laughs> one second, two shakes, two shakes. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these. Well, we don't need that many staircases. Okay, okay, we're good. I'm gonna do one of these. There we go, isn't that lovely? I like that. Much more appealing. Well, we're never gonna see this. We're never gonna look back up here, but I'm just gonna be happier knowing that there's a, a nice, somewhat curvy tunnel right over yonder. And that's gonna lead down to our farm plot. Now, gonna need a way to control the water, right? That's gonna be about most important. It's gonna need a couple of floodgates made, as well as a couple of mechanisms and a lever. And then, I don't really know what we're gonna do with the water after it's in there, but I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't flow in rapidly enough where it fills up the entire chamber, like in the blink of an eye. I don't think it will, because we're just kind of digging into the top layer. But again, we'll see. We're just throwing stuff at the walls and seeing what sticks here, my dwarves. Let's see what happens here. Um, <laughs> do, 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 taking a gander. Fred Langan, remembering Moldaf the Beardless. Pour one out for our beardless baron. I love that guy. That's probably my favorite dwarf I've ever had in a video. That guy was great, wasn't he? Is it, Oh, one second. I got some migrants here. Uh, let's have a look. No necromancers. One, two, three, four children. And we got four dwarves, and two of them are children. Wonderful. Let's have a look. Lorbam, the clothier. And Ingish, the peasant. Peasant? I don't think so. You are going to be straight to work. In fact, I'm going to make you a dedicated engineer. How about? And I'm going to take one of our... Who was it? Masons? I think I made our... Yeah, our masons are engineers, so I'm going to take them off duty. And we have our clothier, who... I mean, I get you're a clothier. I get that's your whole thing, but I don't know that we need that right now quite yet. Ah, tell you what, you could be a clothier. That's fine. Just, you know, keep yourself busy. Don't let me see you slacking around on your phone or something. Here we have Katen, a child, uh, five years old. Five years old. It's looking a long way to adulthood, my friend. We got Fath over here. Uh, three years old, even longer. I've been rained on. It makes me so crouchy. Fath wind oiled. Okay. Two parents. Actually, let's see if they've got an extended family here in the fortress. Probably not, but no. Just uh, two siblings and their parents. That's fair. Up to 14 dwarves now. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We have our cap set at, I think, 200 for this fortress, so we still got a, a, a while to go. It is in mid-autumn. We've slowed down significantly since planting our water pipes and uh, doing that trading there. But we're going to pick things up again. I'm actually going to cancel... Oh, wow, they've, already, they've finished digging out our meeting hall. That's really good. Good job, dwarves. Very proud of you. Wonderful. So, yeah, they've, they've carved that out. We have eight idlers, which is unthinkable. Unthinkable. We cannot have this. Uh, back up here to the surface. Uh... What were we making? We were making cages, we were making barrels, we were making beds. Um, we have this, the Craft Dwarf Workshop is on duty at all times. But maybe we can give somebody else an, an interesting task of some variety. I'm gonna start pumping out mechanisms. Like, 24-7 we're gonna be pumping out mechanisms. Cause I always hit some projects where I'm like, I need a thousand mechanisms and I don't have any and it takes a long time to make them, so. We're going to get that one peasant, hopefully, on the duty of making mechanisms all day long. And we have three woodworkers, which might be a bit much. Um, 
We should put them to work, though. Might as well, right? We've got all this wood. Um, I want to make another carpenter workshop up here on the surface for now. And I'm going to start making some stuff. You know, we can be really cheesy and make some menacing wooden spikes because those trade for an insane amount. Um, but is that is that what we want to do? I don't, I don't think that's what we want to do. Uh, let me see here. Uh, right, talking about the steam release and the release date. Oh, we have combat. The crab is fighting. The flying steel bolt strikes the crab in the left third leg, tearing the muscle. Oh, no. Pour one out for this poor crustacean. <laughs> Just dead out here on the beach, being washed out to sea. <laughs> you poor thing. You poor thing. Ah, we've struck some lapis lazuli. Is that how it's pronounced? I never know. Lapis lazuli? I don't know. I am unsure. What is this? Graphite. Hmm. I don't think you see graphite all that much in Dwarf Fortress. I don't recall seeing it, actually. Oh, right. We have our jeweler. Who was our jeweler? Hmm. We had a jeweler, but we haven't had them doing anything. Might as well set them to work, eh? Tell you what, you can have a temporary little office in here made of marble. Just all to your, all to your, your, your own, yourself, all to yourself. And we'll start cutting up some of those gems and turning them to something. Um, one of the really cool things I like about Dwarf Fortress is every once in a while, while you're cutting gems, you can end up with an item that comes out. Like, well, you can have large gems, which are always cool to have. Um, they'll just like pop out every once in a while. But you can also have like, like a gem piece of furniture or something that will just automatically result from the process of cutting gems, which I don't really know how that works or anything, but I think it's just like random chance, like they'll make something instead of just cutting a gem, which is cool. I always like that. Marble, so fancy. Um, <laughs> manager is my jeweler, right? Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. I do remember that. Well, that's fair. That's fair. Got a lot of non-workers right now. Maybe I'll make some more rock mechanisms. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Clothier isn't doing anything. Um, woodworkers. I don't really know what I want to make. What do I want to make to trade? Oh, that's a, that's a craft dwarf workshop. I'll tell you what. We're actually going to uh, take one of these carpenters here. Um... Well, you, you were... Okay, that's right. Okay, we only have um, a couple woodworkers. That that last one there, I, I turned into a cook or a brewer or something like that. I'll tell you what, since we're not even, like, producing food, I'm going to have you be a stone detailer primarily. And that's going to be it. That sounds good to me. I'm going to set up a manager, and we're going to... Uh, manager order. We're going to make rock cabinets... And I'm going to make 50 of those. And rock coffers. Not coffins, not yet, anyways. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And some doors, too. Some rock doors. And wouldn't it be nice if we could just make them all the same color? I think that would be just lovely. Marble. That would be nice. Yes, we'll make some marble cabinets and coffers and doors. That's for when we get the bedrooms ready. Um... I'll need, like, probably ten times that number of doors by the end. I like putting doors places. I like making double doors. It's just kind of my thing, I guess. I, I like putting doors all over the place in my fortresses. <laughs> hey, Krug, love the show. Have you tried using the text will be text mod? It fixes the big blocks of text to use proper punctuation instead of dirt tiles and stuff. Uh, I, I, I've used it. I don't care for it, though. I don't mind this. I mean, I grew up with, like, you know, freaking, like, NES and stuff, so... I don't mind the, the blocky letters and the little dirt, you know, punctuations and stuff. It doesn't really bother me, I guess. You get used to it in time, if it's if it's bothering you. Like, I don't know. You, you get used to it. Oh, why'd I put a clothier shop down here? I thought I was making a, a jeweler shop. Get out of here. I really just stay on task here. Uh, looks like uh, we've already finished the tunnel from the surface, and now we're just finishing out this room here. Coming along faster than I would have thought, frankly. I'd like to get all this stuff out of the room, just so we can have a little bit of a, a clearer look of things. So I'm going to set to work clearing all this stone out ASAP. We should have a group of dwarves coming down 
in just a moment to clear some of the stone out of this room and just go, gonna put it right outside for now I could have put it a little bit closer to speed things up but yeah that'll be fine there we go there's some dwarves there we go we should probably clear all the stone out of the, the waterway period too because like uh, I'm just trying to think mm. it might be nice to have like a like a water connection thing down at this level or something if you know what I mean like oh no th I forgot this is salt water I'm pretty I'm fairly confident that dwarves cannot drink <laughs> salt water they can't drink salt water I'm gonna say that I'm not gonna even say fairly confident dwarves are not happy with salt water and they cannot consume it as for wetting the fields I'm pretty sure it's fine but I'm uns not not hundred percent sure I'm pretty confident it's fine but we'll see. Um, yeah, we should set up a water connection, but not not to the salt water. Maybe we can use the salt water for like a goblin trap or something like that. Would be cool to like pour an entire ocean down on the heads of goblins as they try to come into our base. Would be a sick. I like the idea. We'll get to it though. No big rush. Got all the time in the world here, my dwarves. Willow amulet pog. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maybe we can come here in the future as our adventurer that we left off as, the Slugman adventurer and his cadre of apes. Is that how it's pronounced? Cadre, I believe? Took a stab at it. I went into it confidently. Sometimes that's all you gotta do is just say a word confidently and it turns out okay. Yeah, I gotta dump all these things here. There we go. They'll get to it. Two shakes of a gibbon's tail. We'll clear all that out and then, okay, what we should be doing quicker is setting up a floodgate. Flood? Floodgate. There we go. Just gonna get a couple of them. And, oh, make them out of, how about diorite? Sounds good. Diorite floodgate. And I'm hoping we get that done quick. We got our mechanisms, that's all set already. So that's good. And now we're, all we're going to have to do is come up here to the surface where we have this little tunnel built. Right here. Okay, that's, that's right over here. Right, you can see the yellow X where that is. And now the water's right over yonder ways. I'm going to make a channel, right, and just connect that up. And I'm, I'm probably going to dig it out to here. Actually, we could just do that right now. Why not? And I'm going to situate a floodgate right in there. And, uh, yeah, we just open and close it and... That should work out just fine, I think. Just fine. <laughs> oh, BT Dubs, thanks for streaming on my birthday and day off. Hey, it's no problem. Happy birthday. Hope you have a good one, Michael Becker. Hope you have a good one. Well, let me see here. I think that and Cadre are both accepted. Okay, good. You guys are great. I just like looking in the chat and seeing what you guys are saying and stuff it's pretty exhilarating gonna get rid of this crap oh I forgot too we dug through an aquifer I don't think that's gonna be affecting us though nah it's fine it's fine we're all good get all this stone dumped away clearing out this water tube up here shouldn't take too long and then after that's all done we're gonna have a farm hopefully and hopefully the water isn't forever tainted by salt water hopefully the, the soil is that what I said soil isn't tainted forever by salted water we'll see at the very least we'll have a big uh, salty water room which we might be able to do something with who's to say what time of the year is it late autumn we've made an awful lot of progress for year one I feel I'm happy How's our production coming along? We've made one cabinet and one coffer so far. That's not good. Hurry up. What's the deal? I like that these dwarves here just seem to be having a pretty okay time just in our meeting hall. Just hanging out. Necromancers in there. A couple of children in there. All hanging out. Ooh, throat's getting a little hoarse. Got a, uh, a delicious diet sprite here to partake of, though. <laughs> Jeez. There goes my voice. I'm not going to be able to talk anymore. Just kind of gasp and burp into the mic. I won't, don't worry. <sighs> I'm 
good time to just relax. Look at the dwarves just chilling away in here. Still no zombies in the area. For an evil biome, this place is really incredibly tame. I'm like begging for something to happen, ain't I? I can't believe how peaceful and awesome it is in this area. It's great. There's literally nothing dangerous here. Nothing, nothing could ever harm us here. Nothing. I thought something would pop up. But I guess not. We're good. Water tube's coming along. Coming right along. We have our miners here not doing much. We should get them to mining. Because there's going to be an awful lot to do. One second. I'm thinking like... uh. We have to get a residential area. And I would like to make it fairly compact. So probably like, you know, stacked on top of each other. You know? But where to do that? Maybe like right out the end here? How's that sound? David Salazar, thank you very much, my friend. That means a lot. A round of salty ale! <laughs> Excellent. Of course, gotta have it. Perfect. Salt, salted Ale of Tomb Spire. It's one of our traditions. How about we'll come down here, right? We've still got plenty of room to work with. And, okay. I'm going to go about it a little bit differently than usual. How big should our rooms be? I like to do a 3x3 three three for the challenge. I think that's what we'll do. We'll do 3x3 three three rooms. I'll make four of them, okay? How's that looking? Okay. Ah, I like it. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then, um... You know what? We're gonna increase the risk factor of this living accommodation, because it'll be funny. I'm gonna go and... Okay, okay. I'm just, I'm thinking of things, I'm thinking of things. We'll make this a little bit wider. Okay. Just like, just like that. And... Maybe we'll do like a, like a channel? Like in the middle? Because I think that'd be really dope if like, the dwarves can like, you know, have to walk along the edges of this channel to get to their houses and stuff. Wouldn't that be cool? I like it. Maybe some bridges across just to these, uh, the mouths of these houses here. It's like so unwieldy, but <laughs> I think that's just how dwarves roll most of the time. Like, they don't want simple houses. You can't have a simple house. It's gotta be precarious and deadly to reach, or else... What's the point of living? <laughs> yeah, things will work. Hmm... Any crashes so far, says uh, Eggnog Monkey. No. I've, I rarely have Dwarf Fortress crash when I'm just playing. Like, it, it rarely ever happens. I, I don't... Like, it seems to be one of the things people say about Dwarf Fortress, but it really just doesn't happen all that much. Like, I, I don't know if I'm somehow lucky. My computer has some magic power, but I am inclined to think that it does not have some magic power. I think it's just fine. I don't know. I guess I tend to think that, like, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I have a feeling that, like, a lot of the mods and stuff that people use, kind of, like, they, they must do something. I'm not sure. Don't take my word for it. Uh-oh. Wait a second. What have I done? I've really gunked things up here, guys. Oh, no. We're good. We're good. Look at this. This is nice and symmetrical. How about that? Does this appeal to you, my bearded bastards? This nice and symmetrical living quarters here? It should. I hope you're pleased. Uh, you know, it's not going to be good if dwarves have to go along this single file bridge all the way to their houses, you know? Um. Mm, mm. Just trying to think here. Maybe I'll I'll make a couple of like little bridges across. Oops, just like that. That should be fine. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Oh, uh, you know what would be funny too? 
actually. There we go. I like that. <laughs> I love the chaos. <laughs> it's funny. Oops. Did I just I gunk that one up too. That's fine. I'll behave myself now. I won't I won't do that anymore. Okay. I promise. Uh let's see here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. That is lovely. I like that. Yeah. Now, how many rooms does this give us? It's gonna take me, like, my, my brain is like a computer from the 60s. <laughs> Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25. 25 bed rooms. Okay. That's good. That's a nice number, ain't it? 25. So, I mean, realistically, we're gonna need this times 8. For, to house, you know, all of our dwarves. Of course, you know, there, eh, it won't be times eight. We're going to have dwarves who are couples and that sort of stuff. So maybe like times seven or something like that, uh, I think would work. Michael Becker, thank you very much. Happy face. I appreciate it, my friend. You are a real bearded bastard. Yeah, there we go. I think that's going to be great. I think that's going to work out just fine for us. Actually, how about we do our... A little magic trick here where we look down into the ground <laughs> you know, as we run into the caverns like right out here or something like that after I've planned this whole thing up uh, uh, wait, look, I think we're good yeah we're good that's fine we're good <laughs> okay get to it you dwarves there you come they have single file all three of them I love it actually want to see this really cool thing you can like speed up the game if you if you hit alt and plus you can do it up to like 20 times, I found. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working, actually. I don't know why that is. Maybe. Oh, well, these guys are going. See these guys zipping around? Yeah. Makes the game go faster. As, as long as there's not a lot going on. Like, if I had a fortress of 10 dwarves, you can crank it up this fast and it would go this fast all the time. So you could probably get a better idea if we look up above ground, like at this great horned owl, which is just going to be zooming around at light speed. You can't even follow that thing. That's pretty neat, though, huh? Like, if you don't have any dwarves and you just crank the speed up, like, I've gotten through, like, 15 years in a day, just with, like, a tiny little hermit fortress style thing, you know? But we're not going to play like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One time I really tested it and I just started, like, you know, see how fast it can go and at some point it just it crashes so just don't dick around with it all that much and you'll be fine uh, having a look up here just got a couple more pieces of trash to get rid of but we'll be fine uh, I'm going to I don't know where I should put this floodgate you know I, I'm inclined to just throw a floodgate wherever but I, I tend to put something somewhere and then be like oh if I put it there, then this happens, and I don't know. I don't really know what I'm saying. You can make a decision that doesn't seem like a big deal, and then, like, you find out that it screwed you somewhere down the line. Like, say, uh, putting ocean water in your farm plot. <laughs> Might not turn out to be such a good idea down the line, but we'll see. Our farm room here is looking pretty clean. Just make sure all the rocks are getting taken out, taken out of this tunnel here. But yeah, it's looking good. Looking real good, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I like it. Maybe we can set up like a water cistern as like an emergency fail safe or fail cause. Like if, if something bad happens to our fortress, we can flood the entire thing in a go would be kind of neat. Maybe not the best use of our time and resources, but it could be funny. You know? 
<laughs> the south closet room is mine. <laughs> it says, I don't know how to pronounce that. Cavalling. Okay, that'll be your room down there. I get the big one. I claimed it. Okay, farm room's looking pretty good. I think we still have a couple pieces of garbage up there, though. Like, I think I saw some wood and some gems or something. That should be really easy to move, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Oh, you know what? They won't... That, that's another ridiculous thing I find with Dwarf Fortress is like, see how they haven't touched this wood or this gem that's in here? Like, I've got it set to be dumped, but they haven't touched it yet. And that's because you gotta hit O, go to Refuse, and say, this this thing here. Dwarves ignore Refuse from outside. They consider this to be Refuse, so if you hit that, O, they will gather Refuse from outside. But they're still going to ignore Vermin Remains. So, but I can turn that on. You can ignore Vermin Remains, that's fine. But now they will come and move these uh these gems and this these logs here down to that spot that i designated underground I'm, I'm also hoping somebody comes and takes care of this okay they did i'm gonna build a floodgate now just right here uh yeah yeah that's the ticket that'll be fine oh you know what that might be dumb I'm not going to build a floodgate, floodgate there. I'm going to build it underground. Oh, that might be dumb, too. Hmm. Just trying to think. Because, like, okay. If I built a floodgate right here at the bottom, it's going to get all that water collected up behind it, right? And then the pressure is going to increase so that when I open up, all that water is going to at once flood into this chamber. But I'm kind of hoping for a slow trickle. So if I put the floodgate up at the top, it, you know, it's not going to have that pressure built up behind it at least. And so I'm hoping it will come in slower. Um, that being said, if I do put it up top like that and it comes in slower, then I, I guess I could put one at the top and one at the bottom if I wanted. Do I want? I think I might. Hmm. See, this is another problem too. Something that's pretty dumb of me. Because now i got to put the floodgate right here, right where this X is. Right? And it can open and close. But a floodgate can be destroyed by building destroyers and stuff. And, like, say a building destroyer came down through the tunnel and got behind the floodgate and just decided to take out that floodgate. Then that could flood the entire fortress. I'll tell you what. Let's throw caution to the wind. It's fine, my dwarves. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to put a floodgate right here. I'm not going to even think about it. No sense in uh, thinking too hard about it, right? Progress lies forward, not behind or in the present day, my dwarves. Krug smash. Pass to water through a diagonal gap and it loses all pressure, I believe. It does. It does lose all pressure. That's one of those things, though, like... I, I don't, it, like I've been using some cheese, cheesy stuff before, but, like... I don't know. That one, for some reason, kind of, kind of bugs me in a way. I, I don't know why. Like, I'll use some cheesy things and not others, but... That one bothers me for some reason. Like, I like messing with the pressure and, like, you know, figure out how to use it and utilize it and stuff. Mm. Just me. I've always been kind of, like, against doing, like, the diagonal hallways like that. It's just very unappealing to me for some reason. A strange idiosyncrasy, I suppose, from a Dwarf Fortress streamer isn't too surprising. All right, let's have a look here. So we've got this layer carved out, which is pretty surprising. Those miners are doing a bang-up job. We're midwinter. We're not even done with our first year. Look at all they've done. That's crazy. Uh, real quick, I'm going to set up another layer to be a dugout. I don't really know how they're going to get down there. Um, I guess we could... You know what? Maybe we'll set up a little hub over here where they can just choose a level to walk to, if that makes any sense. And, yeah, I, I like that. We're going to set a, a up down stair right over here. And dwarves can just go to whatever level they live on. Okay. Look at that. I didn't make this this hallway center. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Wow. Anybody pick up on that? That's terrible of me. That's not, that's not centered. I don't care. It's fine. The dwarves make a little mistake from time to time. That's not important. It's not important to my dwarves. I'm gonna go up here. And this is gonna be the top level of the living quarters. Right up here. And actually that's gonna be a that's gonna be a little 
little ugly looking. A little vexing looking. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna dial that back, actually. I'm gonna make a up, down stairway. Right over here. Okay? How's that sound? Right here. Okay? I like it. And I'm gonna go above your stairways. Right here. And I don't I don't totally love this layout right here, because like, you know, there's gonna be these up down stairways right in the middle of this hallway cluttering things up, but it's gonna work out in our favor. It's gonna work out in the grand scheme of things. And really the dwarves don't mind. So it's gonna be fine. What we're gonna do is um, make this room here into a uh, kind of just like the, the landing zone, the entryway to all the rooms above and below. I think that's gonna work out. Mm -mm. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I know I could create like a macro or something like that, but sometimes I just can't be bothered. It's kind of a pain, you know? I don't know. I always kind of like forget how to make macros and like <laughs> it takes me so long to set the things up and like think about how to make them and stuff that like I could have just been making the rooms beforehand so I don't know it's it's stupid it's inefficient but that's how I be stupid and inefficient that's the name of the game when it comes to Krug Smash Alright, gonna make some channels here. It's, I'm gonna make that channel that was in the floor down here. Just kind of like reach from the top level all the way down to the bottom. So it's just this deadly, horrible drop if anybody has an accident. <laughs> Proper dwarven architecture, right? Um, let me see here now. Just making sure chat wasn't exploding real quick. One second, let me, uh, let me get through all this here and... And we can continue on. I'd like to at least get this done so the dwarves can be working while I chat in the background, you know? But in the meantime, let's see. What can I what could I chat about? Because like I guess I could chat and just it's a little bit of a little bit of idle idle chatter here. Um I, I've tried this idea before. And it has worked. Actually, I remember um I think it still says it in like the dwarf fortress wiki but like if you get like because dwarves can be overthrown by the stresses of day-to-day -day living right and they go irreversibly uh you know like uh insane right which i don't like to use the word per se i don't know anyways um so like dwarves can be haggard by the stresses of day-to-day -day living right and i've done this idea before and had a big like drop uh in my living quarters, right? And I had a dwarf who was melancholic and they jumped off the top level all the way down to the bottom. And they did it many times because the first time they landed on the ground and slowly crawled all the way back up to the top with a broken leg and then did it again. And then did it again. And eventually, they were so wounded that it took them a while to start moving again. And they crawled off to a side cavern and just stayed there. And eventually they died. But I was like, what the hell kind of game is this? Like, what happened? That was pretty early on in my Dwarf Fortress experience. And, um, yeah, it kind of stuck with me. Pretty ghoulish. Kind of horrible. Did I gunk up these rooms? Oh, okay, okay. These ones got to be farther out. I was just kind of shocked by that when I saw it, like, I, I haven't seen it again, though, and I don't really see a reason why that dwarf did that, other than the fact they were in a melancholic state, and I think on the wiki it said that they would do that, but I've never seen it again, so I don't know if that, that particular thing was moved removed from the game or what. I could see why it would be, like, it, <laughs> it's pretty upsetting, like, actually. But yeah, it was uh, it was kind of shocking to see that. Also, they they did used to have a bunch of names in Dwarf Fortress that aren't in there anymore, like words and stuff. Just like uh, certain parts of the anatomy and stuff that aren't in the game anymore. 
and like I, you know i just kind of remembered it one day while playing i was like oh yeah what happened to all those gross words that were in the uh de dictionary but i guess they're not in there anymore probably for the best let's see here i haven't looked at chat is it exploding or something um <laughs> oh here one second one second whatever i forgot something uh There we go. Good to go. They're gonna get to work on that level. And uh, they should get it finished up pretty quick, I would imagine. That's gonna be like a uh, 50 dwarf population sort of living area. Gotta remember too that our dwarves are just coming from like an abandoned necromancer tower. So I don't know what <laughs> exactly how healthy our civilization is. They did bring wagons. We have been getting migrants, so it can't be all that bad, right? I guess we'll see. Um, let's, let's have a look. We are from the Sword of Gliding. And we have a queen, Queen Arab Saigantan, uh, Baroness, Baron, Baroness, General Monam's Tegaz Lakat, Diplomat, Outpost Liaison, okay. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, honestly, like, so, I guess they're all just packed into that one tower, which does seem strange, but I guess it's working out for them. Okay, so we have our, uh, our floodgates all set up down here. Excellent. Now, um, hmm. Gonna set up another floodgate. Or you know what? I'm gonna set up a door, right? And down the under way. Just like that. And also a lever. I get a lever set up too. Right outside this door. Just like that. And then we'll be pretty much good to go, I think. Do do yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I'm gonna head back up to the surface here. And, uh, let's see. Now, it, it would probably be smart of me to put a floodgate up here too, but I'm also like, I don't know, do I care? I don't know if I actually care to. It just kind of seems like a hassle. So maybe I'll I'll just not. Maybe I'll carve out that channel a little bit deeper. How are we doing on food drinks? Looking good. Looking good. Got 90 drinks left. Not a whole heck of a lot, but it's fine. I'm going to have a look up here in the northeast, actually. I forgot we had all that plants and stuff. I'm going to start picking some. Uh, hopefully some of it's grown back. It probably has. Yeah, not much, but it's something. I think I could set up a gather zone, actually. I, it's not something I normally do, but it's smart. Right here on the ground, we have some bayberries. I don't know if that's something you can eat. Bayberries? Probably. Uh, okay. Cherries? I got cherries on the ground over here. We can gather that. Here, let me see if I can gather these bay bayberries. I think you can. Okay. Yeah, I'll set up a, just a big gathering area. Right over yonder way. Just like this near. And set it to be a gather spot. Set gather information. Pick fruit from trees, pick berries, slash pull tubers, and gather fallen fruit. Yes, we're going to do all of that. Um, yeah, get to it. Excellent. That's not something I, I do. So, like, I'm hoping dwarves don't, like, start climbing up into trees, and I'm just, like, puzzled as to why dwarves are starving to death up in trees and stuff. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I'm trying to have high hopes about it. then how are we looking over here dwarves already hard at work looking good looking good getting to it oh right they were working on that channel that's where they were just then okay I was trying to figure out why they were off and away somewhere let's have a gander over here okay floodgates in place that door is in place it's still working on this lever oh that's right we have our mechanic over here Katten who is uh, currently working on... Oh, this is this was our mason mechanic, right? I forgot I set those guys. Um, okay, one second, one second. Let me, uh, let me think for a second. Let me redirect my pitiful brain power. I'm going to cancel these mechanisms from being created right now. There's hardly any stone up here left anyways, so it's taking him a long time to make each mechanism. Not very efficient. I'm going to have these destroyed, actually. As well as these mason workshops. Taking too darn long. Might as well just rebuild them down in the ground, you know? Just a moment. Put them down here. 
And doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go. Mechanics and masons, done deal. Now I think we have this guy over here should start making the lever any moment now. Can't you just have one dwarf eat the other up into a tree? I don't think so. I wish you could. You can make step ladders, and I think like they can climb up into the trees and get stuck or something like that. I don't really know how it works, but yeah. Yeah, we had um. Where was it? Somebody just said John Carpenter. Jonathan Carpenter just said they gave up on gather fruit from trees. Too many stuck dwarves. I've heard that happens. Like it's not something I've done. But I've heard that happens, so I've been kind of wary of trying it, you know? Master Dax 2, thank you very much, my dude, my bearded bastard. I came in around Skull Horror, and I gotta say, that series was a 10 out of 10 DF experience. I wish I could recreate that, honestly, because that was one of people's favorites, for favorite fortresses I've done. It was special. It was really special, you know? Something about it. I always liked it. Let's see here. I gotta link up this lever here to our floodgate. Boop, boop. Right there. Quickly, two dwarves. Come on, get to it. We got a dwarf going right now to link up that floodgate. And once that's linked up, we should be pretty much good to go. Actually, I can get to work now. Um, ah, looks like some water is already flowing. Oh my goodness. A puppy barking in the background. Two shakes. joys of pet ownership. Yeah, she'll bark from time to time, just at nothing, as dogs are wont to do. But yeah, so I'm gonna start carving away this channel. This is gonna be pretty dicey. I'm hoping nobody falls into the water. Maybe I should set the, uh, the necromancer to be the only one doing this. Like, I don't really want the necromancer to die in there, but, um, here, one second. That, that's what I'm gonna do. They won't die. They can't breathe, you know, because they're an undead creature. So I think they'll be fine. But we'll see soon enough now, shan't we? Going to cancel this whole thing here. There we go. Now let's see, cat all. Get to digging. Now if cat all here falls down into the water, they should be fine, I would think. I think they can climb back out. Won't be that big a deal. My my fear is that like like if this was a, a living dwarf, you could see right there, Catal was just pushed back for a second by the waves as they came roaring in like that. If we had any other dwarf there, they could have fallen back into that filled up water channel there and drowned promptly. But Catal here can't breathe. Doesn't have to breathe, so should be fine. Right there, yeah, Catal was just pushed down to the water. Kinda dangerous. We'll just give them a second. It's gonna be kind of dicey here. Yeah, they keep like canceling the uh, the order and stuff. Oh man, thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's stupid. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I think I think we're good now. How you doing, cattle? No job. Really getting screwed up with this water. Keep at it though, my friend. That's actually kind of handy though to have a. Uh, a necromancer miner like this don't have to be so afraid of getting drowned and I mean like if cat all did drown then well, kind of what happens I guess oh well no more dangerous necromancer <laughs> but at this point the, the necromancer is kind of endearing to me I suppose if I gotta admit it yeah just kind of what happens that's how those necromancers get you I'll tell you so we have still have one little space here I was gonna wait to the end for that one there but hopefully we can get that one carved away now. I don't know what, where Catal's going. Where are you going right now, you baboon? What's being dug? Oh, underground? <sighs> don't do that one. Uno momento, por favor. Gotta find out what spot they're digging real quick. You can't cancel their dig commands for some reason, but you can get rid of the spot they're gonna they're about to dig and reset it as lower priority and let go take care of whatever you want before 
should be up on their way now to dig out, dig that channel, and they are. There they go. Gonna get that spot carved out. Shaloop. In a moment. There we go. Okay. All carved out. We're good to go now. Got this, this whole channel here is just uh, got the water flowing. Um, let's see here. Wouldn't be a Krug for if you didn't allow a necromancer into the folds. That's right. It's amazing just what happens. Wouldn't be a dwarf for if you didn't allow a necromancer into the folds. <laughs> just kind of how the game goes now. Let me see here. Okay, those guys are set to dig again. They should be back on duty. We have water down here already. Seven of seven salt water, as well as a dusting of mud. So, yeah, I think this should be good to go. I'm curious to see how fast this water comes flowing in. Um, you know what I'm gonna do, actually? Just to ensure that this gets done. Because we want this lever maybe pulled twice, just back to back, like, really quick. So what I'm gonna do... It's just set up like a little chamber like this. Okay. I didn't set this to be pulled yet, right? Yeah, we're not going to have that pulled. That entire tube behind that floodgate is completely packed with water right now. So there's a lot of pressure built up. So what I'm going to try to do is just open this door just like for just a half second, you know, just to see how much passes in. Maybe if it's like slow enough, like a slow trickle, we can... Because I, I don't want this room to be filled with water. If it's like shallow water, it'll evaporate over time. You know? But, uh... Wait one second. I gotta make a door, too. Do I, I don't have any doors. I gotta get out of here. Looks like this guy's making a door right now. Yeah, I'm gonna slap a door up on there, and then after a dwarf comes to pull that lever, I'm gonna lock the door behind them so that once that floodgate opens and the water comes in, we can get it pulled again just, you know, at a moment's notice because the dwarf will be locked in there by the lever. Just a... Uh, Temporary thing. Okay, it looks like that door is built. Marble door. Okay, we do have doors, actually. Here we go. Someone should come and put that door in place. In just a moment. Just a moment. I, I wish there were competitions in Dwarf Fortress. Wouldn't that be cool? Like something... I mean, you could set up your own competitions, of course, in Dwarf Fortress. Um, like, I mean, I've done that in a few of my fortresses, but, like, I wish there was something a little bit more concrete, I guess, like, in terms of, like, like, the game. I don't know what you could do, but, like, you know, some sort of a crafting tournament or something. Okay, here. This dwarf here is about to pull this lever, right? I'm gonna slow the game down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I've, I've done it 15 times. We'll see what happens here. This dwarf is gonna come pull this lever. Boop, boop, boop. All right, I'm gonna lock that door. They still have not pulled the lever, but it should just be it should be pulled in a second. Boop. Lever's pulled. Waiting. Floodgate open. Here comes the water. It's coming in quickly, but it's not as instant as I thought it would be. Just give it a moment. Give it a moment. Okay. That's actually a lot slower than I thought it would be. Okay. I'm gonna speed things up slightly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is normal speed. Good, excellent. This is exactly what I wanted. Good, good, good. So that water is just gonna come and slowly fill up this whole chamber here. I'm hoping this dwarf over here doesn't fall asleep in the meantime. That wouldn't be so good. Just stay awake. Stay awake for a moment longer, my friend. Who is this? Tossid, Tossid the woodworker. You've been here since the very start. Nice, reliable dwarf, Tossid. There we go. Right, I can rely on you. You're not going to fall asleep or anything. You're just going to stay awake, perky as a dwarf can be, just happy as a as a dwarf can be. <laughs> just, 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 you're fine. There we go. Don't fall asleep. The water is almost covered the entire floor. It's it's shallow too. See, it's one of seven. If you look up in the top right there, salt water. I know it says salt water. I'm still a little concerned that's going to forever taint the. The earth here, but I, I think it'll be fine. Almost there. Almost there. It's really slowing down. I mean, it's connected up to the ocean. You'd think it'd be a little bit quicker. One of the first fortresses I did, actually, I uh, was trying to make a well. 
and I didn't realize like water pressure was a thing. I figured it was like every other game, and I, I could just make a tunnel that leads to the bottom of the ocean would be absolutely fine, right? Wasn't fine. <laughs> Not at all. Man, this is taking a while. Come on, hurry up with this water. Almost there. Almost there. Just tickling that far wall. A couple more spaces. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set be pulled because I think they'll be fine. Pull the lever. Boop. Okay, levers pulled. Floodgate closed. Door unlocked. Get the hell out of here, you dwarf. And we're looking good. Okay. Now I'm just gonna give this water here a second. It should evaporate because it's not very uh, deep. It's got levels of two of seven or one of seven. You can see you get the dusting of mud in the ground. It does say salt water. But again, we'll see. We got our closed floodgate over here. Should be good. Should be good. Is this an evil biome with weird rain? It's an evil biome, but it seems really tame, actually. It doesn't seem like a bad evil biome. It's a really good evil biome. <laughs> There's nothing bad here. It's kind of kind of silly. <laughs> Let me see what we got here. You know what? Something I, I did uh, a little bit ago, which was really interesting, was this is completely unrelated to anything that's currently going on here in the fortress but i just happen to think of it a succession game like if you know dwarf fortress community um like you know what a succession game is for the most part i would think that's where you go into dwarf fortress and you create a fortress like this one here and you play it for a year and then you pass it to someone else like optimally you would have gotten a bunch of names beforehand and they'd be all on the list and you pass it on to the next player and they take control of that fortress and play for a year and then after a year's up, you pass it on to the next player. And like as you go, the fort evolves in some weird and wacky and often crazy and insane to play ways. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just how it'll go. But this one that we had worked up in my Discord a while back was it was like an, a succession world. And I think it worked an awful lot better than the typical succession game in Dwarf Fortress. Usually in succession games, um, it, it kind of gets frustrating because, like, you know, you do stuff on your turn and then you pass it on to the next player and, like, like you can't tell what's going to happen, you know? Like, maybe you're working on something and another player comes and, like, you know, does their own thing. And, like, that's fine. I can understand the appeal of that. That's why you like your succession games. That's completely fine and valid. But um, we were doing a succession world where you play for... Um, we were doing a week each. You know, you pass it to someone and they get to play for a week. Do whatever they want. And then you pass it on to the next player, and they get to play for a week. Um, like in real time, too. Like, <laughs> like I can play the game. I have it for a week. I can do whatever I want. But, like, you can choose adventure mode or fortress mode, right? And then after that, you pass it on to the next player. And they can do whatever they want. Fortress mode or adventure mode. Anything like that. But, like, the stipulation is if your fortress dies or your adventurer dies, then that's it. You gotta pass it on to the next player. And that's pretty cool, because, like, you get a world... Right? And like, I mean, you probably got to set up some house rules before you go into it. Just so, you know, like if you don't want it so that you make a fortress and then somebody on their turn is like, well, I'll play your fortress for a year. <laughs> like, I mean, it's fine if that's what you want to do. But like, we'll kind of do the succession world thing. So that's not happening so much. Um, but yeah, you know, you can end up with a, a whole world with like interconnected stuff and player created things like that. It's a uh, pretty neat. I would, I would recommend it. Still haven't really tested it out too, too much. Um, the game kind of fell through, which, you know, of course, that's going to happen if you're playing those types of games so much. You know, just people got lives and stuff happens, that sort of stuff. Puppy just comes charging in and throws herself down on the ground, just rolling around like a... <laughs> what are you doing, puppy? Slapping her ears around. She's probably going to have to go out again soon, guys. Just a heads up. Planning up another level here of our our uh, dormitories should come out pretty good. We, we have the template down for the most part, so it's not so bad. Actually, I should take a look in chat here. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. You guys are all behaving yourselves. I like that. Bunch of good dwarves. Let's have a look here. No. Oh man, this gets tedious, huh? It's fine. Just what you gotta do, right? 
How do I have this? Ah, oh wait. How did I have this? Oh, that's right. I I've I've gunked it up. Have I? No, I have not. I have not gunked it up. I'm just not thinking. There we go. Just like that. What a silly bastard. There we go. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll just plan these up real quick. And uh, then I'll, I'll set the dwarves to doing their stuff. And then I'll be right back. I'll let the dog outside. That sort of stuff. This puppy, I'll tell you. Like, <laughs> I'm thinking this puppy here has... She... <laughs> I love this puppy, all right? Let me preface that, this by saying that. But this puppy makes my life difficult. I love her to death, right? This puppy is my best buddy. But she's gotta go outside so much, like an incredible amount. Before her, we had two dogs for, like I think we had them for 15 years. And they would go outside like maybe four, five times a day tops. I figure that's a pretty average dog going outside to go to the bathroom out. And uh, they, they were good about it. But this one here, my God, it's not unusual to let her outside a dozen times, something like that. It's unusual. I, I don't really know what her deal is. She's great. I love her. Again, I truly do. But my goodness, she's got, she either got the smallest bladder in the world or something's going on. We brought it to the vet, but, um, you know, they're just like, yeah, I guess she just <laughs> goes to the bathroom a lot. We don't know. Give us our money. Vets, I'll tell you. But yeah, good puppy. It sounds like she's on her shit out there. I hear her running around and stuff. Yeah, I'll set the, the dwarves to rolling here and maybe uh, change up the tunage a little bit. Because I know we've been listening to this one song now for like, <laughs> how long has it been? Five hours? <laughs> it hasn't been that long, but gotta be getting there, right? Alright, how are we looking here? Okay, that's good. Good! Oh, yeah, she's on her shit. Here, one second. I'll be right back, guys.
Oh shit. Uh oh. That's no good. <laughs> Interesting. Well, let's have a look here. Oh no, that's bad, man. All right, all right, here, one second. Okay. Realized I didn't eat anything today. I got my Sprite and some Oreos. <laughs> Proper dwarven nourishment. Let's zoom in here and take a gander. Wheel! Looks like we're in trouble. Got some goblin zombies. Crossbowmen. Uh, we have some intelligent undead here. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that a little bit closer. Mm, what kind of intelligent undead is this? There we go. Dark zombies. Okay. Armed with... Yeah, I mean, they're totally kitted out with armor and weapons and all that stuff. There's no way we could fight these guys. Like, at all. So, we're gonna have to rely on our cages. Thankfully, we built those things. This won't be a big deal, though. What we're gonna do is take our little dwarves, and we're gonna run, run down here. Um, add a new burrow. We're gonna add a burrow, okay? And I'm gonna set it right here. Okay, just like that. Head into our military screen. A for alerts, B, burrow one. Gonna turn that on. And now hopefully everyone should run there. I'm thinking they will, and in a hurry. Let's see how this goes. Oh, maybe our, our animals too, they should head down there. I'm gonna, I, I forget how they react if there's a pen. I'm gonna get rid of this pasture though. I would not doubt that there's like actually necromancers too that came in with this group. I've got to unpause now. And it looks like things are making their way below ground. All of our pigs are. We've got some piglets here running quicker pigs. Quicker. Quicker. You're not going very quick at all. Oh no, they're screwed. Our pigs are screwed. Oh no. Yo, you see that too right there. See, I knew it. There's something about... Right here we have some water buffalo hair that's been reanimated. Sitting in this butcher's workshop. I don't know what did that though. Let's have a gander. Hmm. Hmm. The human spearman, Dark Zombie, clenches a, fitch, a fist, <laughs> clenches a fish, the stray boar grimaces. Hmm, okay. Wheel. Um, well, we still got our piglets. We still have several piglets here. I think those zombies are going to take a long time just dealing with the, um... Okay, what's, what's an intruder? I think just a necromancer just popped up. Human clerk necromancer, right? Get out of here, you pain in the butt. Runs off. Yeah, I have a feeling that those zombies are going to take a long time to get down to the fortress. They're probably going to be chasing around stuff out and about for a while. But they should eventually make their way down before we starve, hopefully. But we'll see. Okay, no, we're looking, we're looking pretty okay. We have this group of zombies. Just kind of slowly making its way towards our base. That's an awful lot of zombies, isn't it, guys? Man, I hope those cage traps hold, or else we're screwed. It's really not a lot. We'll see. Don't give up hope yet. We got this. Oh. Okay. Okay, we've already got some stuff heading in. We caught one in a cage trap already. There's still quite a few more though. I think we have we have 16 traps here, right? Total. And right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have 14 creatures left. So there's a good chance that one of those can get through. If that happens, we're not gonna be happy campers. Two. Okay, we got two caught in cage traps now. Goodness gracious. You know. <sighs> Orangutan forbid we put up a couple more traps before this whole thing went down, huh? Not good. Not good. We got this, though. I 
Uh, if if the pigs or like that water buffalo hair, if that turns into zombies, we're gonna be fine. I'm mostly concerned about these armed zombies, like the ones with weapons and armor and stuff. We can handle pig zombies, water buffalo hair zombies, not a big deal. You can see we're like halfway done with these traps here. Still going. Let's have a look. These ones here, actually. Okay, so we have a bunch of these corpses that are out here. They're just recruit corpses. So, like, they don't have anything. We could potentially deal with those ones. I'm very concerned about this one here. Catat the Dwarf Swords. Swordsman, Dark Zombie. That one's gonna just plow through our dwarves if we have to fight it. Especially, I mean, this guy too. Ulet the Human Lasher. That's not gonna be good. I don't know why this guy's heading back out. Um... Hmm. Okay, what we're gonna try to do is, uh, okay. Gotta think, gotta think. I'm gonna DVD, I'm gonna uh, set all this to be forbidden, all this stuff down here, because we don't wanna go out there at all. But what we do want to do is build a wall right over here. And maybe uh, I'd put a door up. I think we've, we've got doors down below, so we can still access those. Marble doors. Hopefully. Uh, and I'm also going to extend our burrow to encompass this area. So that we can maybe get some food and stuff. I mean, we're going to have to get access to this food stockpile if we want to survive at all. <laughs> or else we'll be, uh, we'll be done in fairly short order. You can see the, uh, the dwarves are already getting pretty thirsty. I'm gonna extend this bro to just encompass these workshops down here. This water's drying up. Nice, excellent. We'll have some nice farms, assuming we don't get killed by dwarven dark zombies now. <laughs> we'll see, okay. I'm gonna unpause things and we'll see how this goes. It's unpaused right now. I don't know what this, this uh, hammer, hammer man over here is doing exactly. Looks like a lot of the dwarves have come back and are now enjoying the food stockpile, so that's that's good. They can't see the zombie. That's okay, okay. Why are you running out? Is my main question. Currently no job. I think these dwarves here are just a couple of brave souls who are like, Oh, a threat! Let's go run out and get killed by it real quick. <laughs> you idiots. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna turn the burrow off, advance time by one click, and then turn it back on. Sometimes that'll like make the dwarves double think their actions. Doesn't appear like that's gonna happen though. It really just looks like these dwarves are uh, gonna go head to head with this zombie over here who is going to definitely murder them. Hmm, okay, well. No sense in trying to stave off the inevitable, right? Okay. Well, they've, they've suffered through a couple of hits here. Here, I'll slow things down. They are fighting right now. We have this uh, woodworker, too, who seems to be fighting. Uh, they're, okay, no, they're, they're not just fighting. They're luring the zombie into the hall, those brave dwarves. Hey, and the zombie got trapped. Okay, that's enough of the bravery, you guys. You want to get the hell back into the fortress, please? Please. Would be greatly appreciated. <sighs> Do we have somebody building this stuff? Why? Like, why is nobody building this stuff over here? Like, I forbid this stuff, so I don't, I don't think that's what's selected. Um, okay. Okay, I see it's inactive now. Like, you guys shouldn't be heading out there. There's no burrow for you. You should go back up. Up. There you go. Get the hell out of there. What are you doing? Bunch of idiots. Load cage trap. How are you loading cage trap, you ninny? There's no cages. <laughs> it's all off in forbidden area. Like, where are you going right now? Let's not go that way, please. Um. Hey, my dwarves. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna delete this burrow. Completely deleted. 
I don't understand the Burrow system in Dwarf Fortress because you got the Burrow set, right? And sometimes it's super reliable. Like they will just stay in the Burrow if you have it active. Other times they're just like, yeah, screw it. We'll just <laughs> we'll just go off somewhere else. No, don't, don't do that. Just stay in the Burrow so you don't die, please. Would be great. Would be excellent. I'd appreciate it. Okay, add a new Burrow. Burrow 2. We're going to try this again. Uh, I'm going to encompass this whole area. I'm just going to try it like this again. If this doesn't work, dwarves, then you're going to be cloistered down underground again for your own safety. So we'll see. Behave. Behave yourselves. That's all I ask. Burrow 2. Active. Let's go. Don't be a bunch of dummies. You better turn around there, Red. There you go. There you go. Get back in there. Now let's see here. Construct building. Uh, who is constructing? someone constructing? I don't know who I'm following right now. Oh, it's this one here. Shem. Shem the woodworker coming to build this wall. Okay. Get to it. Construct that wall. We got the door in place. The door is in place. That's good. I should have did this beforehand. It takes two shakes if there's no zombies around. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hmm... Yeah, these guys are up here. They're making a plan. They know about their comrades caught in cages down below. Talking things over. Trying to figure out the best way to go about it. Let's hope they don't come up with a good plan, eh, dwarves? Okay, we got the water buffalo hares up here. <laughs> Literal just water buffalo hair. See, <clears throat> this is something I found interesting. And I don't see the Dwarf Fortress community talking about it all that much. But, like, a, a zombie, um, from what I understand, the only parts that can be brought back to life are parts that can grasp. So, like, a head could come back to life. Or a hand could come back to life. But not a foot. Or not a leg. I believe is how it works. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But here we have water buffalo hair. You wouldn't think could come back to life. But you can also see that if I look at the water buffalo hair, it has water covering on... The different parts of its body like its upper body lower body neck head so while one is apt to think of uh, water buffalo hair it's just a clump of hair a pile of hair i believe this is hair in the shape of a water buffalo with like the head intact that could grasp still <laughs> like you could be bitten by a water buffalo ha hair i don't know if that's the case but i think that's the case you can see like why does water buffalo hair have water covering its throat, its nose, its ears, its tail, right? Like this is water buffalo in the shape, uh, water buffalo hair in the shape of a water buffalo. Just no skin or meats or bloods or anything. It's terrible. <laughs> and it's also just amazingly dwarf fortress. Okay, so these, these poor dwarves are locked underground, and it looks like the zombies have wisened up slightly. Um, they're not rushing down underground anymore. Which doesn't aid us, but it doesn't exactly harm us either. I'm just trying to think of the best way to go about this. Because, like, we could, potentially, if we were the ballsy types of dwarves come upstairs and try to dispatch these hairs real quick you know and also grab some cages and go reset those cages down below that would really guarantee our safety for a bit longer are we ballsy dwarves we here at tomb spire i think we might be i think we might be let's have a look here i well i was gonna say i, I got those axes for a reason i started off with seven battle axes but uh we don't have those down here do we um so what i'm going to do is i guess uh, all right let's just do it let's just slam into this necromancer you're not gonna you're not part of this you're gonna cause trouble we don't want you everyone else um i put everyone in a squad right and now I'm looking around. I gotta make sure there's no zombies nearby. Because, like, I think there's a good chance we could just run upstairs, kill those water buffalo hares, and then get down underground. 
Okay, nothing down here? Nothing over here? I think it's just those hairs. Okay. The Oh no! Why is our, our squad's name the Oily Shaft? Oh. Door Fortress. What are you doing? <laughs> Cripes. Listen, forget about it. It's fine. Okay. Oily shafts. Let's go. Assemble. At the bottom of the stairway over here. Man, I hope this doesn't really screw us. I'm gonna speed things up slightly. What's fighting? There's a panda fighting. I'll tell you what I don't want to fight is an undead panda. I think that would murder us. Okay. Orbs are moving out. They're moving out. They're at the bottom of the stairway right now. Looking around. Looking around. Double checking. I think it's just these hairs. Okay. Let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to move out. Try to dispatch these hairs. Double checking again. Triple checking even. Just want to make sure these uh <laughs> these hairs aren't anywhere near us. I think we're good. We got a couple guys up here up to the northwest. One of them seems to be heading our way. But we're already engaged with these water buffalo hairs. Take them out. Okay, we killed them. No problem. Water buffalo hares dispatched. Um, okay, and those guys are heading back. Okay. Okay. So, with that, I'm going to go back to my dwarves here. See, this is the kind of stuff I typically edit out in my videos. Like, I don't know if you guys are getting a kick out of this, but, um, you know, it, it's exciting in its own way. Like, I'm having a good time here just trying to micromanage the dwarves and try to get them to prevent killing themselves and stuff. Let's see, I'm going to take all of my dwarves out of the squad here. I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to disband the oily shafts. I'll get rid of them, but, I mean, that's kind of a good name <laughs> when you get down to it. One in a million. Everyone out of the squad, though. I don't want you in here. Okay. I'm going to turn off the burrow for a second and then turn it back on to kind of like reset their little brains. And I'm going to include these carpenter workshops in the burrow as well as these cage traps. Here we go. And I'm also going to create a pile for animals. Right over yonder way. I'm hoping somebody will grab these cage zombies and bring them over to that pile there. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, Annie Mousy Mouse. Glad to see you around. Love your content. Thank you very much, my friend. It means a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad the fortress is continuing for a little bit longer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's see how this goes. I've got it unpaused. Unpaused. I'd like to see somebody resetting. Don't, <laughs> don't make wooden crafts. We're not gonna, we're not gonna focus on that for now. Don't know wooden crafts. I just want somebody to go and uh, load cage trap would be great. How about you? Are you loading cage trap? I would like to think so. Load cage trap. Load cage trap. How about you guys? I'm gonna, I'm gonna set these guys as well, the miners, to engineering duties as well. I'm hoping that'll speed things up. Maybe they'll go grab a cage and if they could just man one of them, that'd be great. Or dwarf one of them, that would be great. Okay. We're going, we're going. Super tense, man. I got all kinds of like menus and stuff popping up, but like it's just kind of the way you got to do it. Up here in the north, we have some zombies. We got this guy over here getting some ideas. You can see that. You can stay out of here. There he goes, following his uh, dark zombie master up to the north. They look to be pretty settled up in the north there. That's good. Get to it, dwarves. Let's have a look. Load cage traps. Still loading those cage traps. Going good, though. Going good. Going real good. We should be all set on that shortly. You know, I'm going to look away from those zombies for one second, and they're all just in a sprint over towards our stairway. Look at that. I think one of them... Got this piglet running around over here. I wish it would come down to the fortress. 
it could lure them over to us if things go wrong. No, they seem pretty satisfied up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who am I missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is another zombie somewhere that is not in this group. Where is it? Where are you? Okay, here it is, over in the west. Just kind of, I don't really know what it's doing. It's <laughs> just kind of over the water here. I think it's stuck. That's fine, that's fine. Okay. We're looking pretty good here though, dwarves. I think we got all those cages reset. We have, uh, we're trying to get the zombies moved over here. I don't really want, no, don't, don't put empty cages here. Just move those zombies, please. That'd be great. Actually, no, it would be pretty good if we can get those empty cages here, huh? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna set up another animal stockpile here. Maybe we can get some more of those cages down underground. And maybe if we're smart, we can like, make another doorway over here. That we can kind of like, <laughs> semi-moderate. Zombies will leave eventually, I, I believe. Siege zombies will leave, but I think it takes them longer than like goblins and stuff. Okay, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm, I'm down for it. We got one, okay, nope. Sticking up there. That's good. I don't know where that necromancer was, where where that necromancer went. That necromancer was somewhere, but apparently just disappeared off somewhere. I don't really mind. Okay, well, so be it. I, I think while we have some time here, we should probably get this mining or uh, farming area here set. What do you think? Yeah, probably. Let's let's do that. We're gonna get this place set up. Uh, BP, two, three, four, five, and we'll do it kind of like uh, like this. This farm area is gonna be so big that it's we're not gonna be able to ever utilize it all. But you know, better to have too much, I say, than too little, right? Let me see here. I'm just gonna set up like a, a sort of a checkerboard side of sort of a configuration. See, like I get really bothered sometimes when things aren't symmetric. So that's why I do things like, you know, like really bunk things up and just like, who cares? It's fine. There we go. Look at that big, awful place. Like, <laughs> We'll just make this one like this and have like a weird little strip on the side. Isn't that bothersome? It's fine though. It's fine. Like, I don't love this. I don't like that I'm bothering people. It's just kind of like how I play sometimes. Like sometimes, like it bothers me to make things symmetric and it, it, it helps to challenge yourself sometimes I feel. I'm going to get zombies down in the base just because I'm torturing you guys like that. <laughs> How about this guy over here? We got to look at this pond zombie over here. Just kind of can't figure out what it wants to do. That's fine. Just hang out over there. I don't watch this. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> Looking at the chat. I'm sorry to make you suffer. Okay, so yeah, we got all those those traps ready. Look at that, some jerk over here threw a mining pick, copper battle axe in the doorway with our door. Really, you're gonna do that, huh? What the hell's wrong with you? Who did that? Um, I'm gonna set up a weapon stockpile just in the hopes that somebody will move that. Somebody grab that freaking axe, please. Get it out of there. Like, quickly. We might have to close that door in a second, you know? Could be dangerous and deadly to not... Not move the damn thing. You rat bastard. 
All these guys are so bothersome up here. Look at them. What is this piglet doing over here? This <laughs> this piglet has been running around since the very beginning. Oh, no, it's not a piglet. It's a red, red panda. What are you doing, my friend? I like this one. I wish we can catch it. It's spirited. Maybe. Maybe it'll wander down at some point. Yeah, I don't know what these guys are doing. How do you deal with that, you know, as a Dwarf Fortress player? Like, we could go up and fight them, I suppose. I suppose, but we would also die. Even if I had a fully kitted out military, I don't feel safe going up against uh, intelligent undead most of the time. They're very difficult, and, you know, they're kind of like Forgotten Beasts, too, where they can have some abilities that will really screw you. I am going to delete this burrow real quick. I'm going to start up another one, and I'm just going to encompass, like, everything below ground, pretty much. Just so the dwarves can actually get some work done. How's that sound? Hopefully it sounds pretty good. How's that? Looking pretty good, I feel. Looking pretty good. We're gonna go down here. Sorry, I know this flashing is unpleasant, but uh, it'll just be brief. Okay. Under here. Boop. And one more up over yonder way. Boop. There we go. Burrow on. Burrow three activated. Get to it, dwarves. Where are you going? Where do you, where do you think you guys are going right now? I just, I don't know where you think you're going, but there's a good chance you shouldn't go there. Tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna deactivate this, this part of the burrow, because you guys shouldn't even be pushing your luck. Like, why would you be going over here right now, my friends? You shouldn't be. That's foolish. You're very dumb. You're going to get killed. There we go. Turn around. Turn around. Get the hell back there. Good dwarves. Good dwarves. Okay. I think for the time being, we can feel fairly secure in this sort of a configuration, right? We got the, the zombies don't appear to be coming for us anymore, though they could at a moment's notice. Uh, our dwarves are downstairs. They have access to food. They've got seeds. We can start farming. We don't have anybody that's actually going to farm, though, do we? No, uh, dedicated farmers. Let's have a think. Let's have a think. Uh, Clothier. You're not really doing that much right now. So, I'm going to take you off clothing duties. And you're instead going to be a farmer. I know that's a big change of field for you. Quite literally. But, you know, it's kind of what we need. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 okay. You're going to get to farming. And maybe we should set up more than one farmer. Just really start pumping some stuff out. Um, you're making that. It's fine. How about you woodworkers? I'm going to get you guys to farming. And I'm going to try to remember to take off your farming duties when those zombies go away. But I have no confidence that I will. Get to it. Woodworkers are heading down. Who else we got here? Uh, manager, manager, what are you up to these days? You're set to butchering tanning jewelry. Hmm. We haven't done much with the jewels down there, have we? I had intended to a while ago, but I guess I never got around to it. We're going to set up a jewelry workshop right here. And we'll start cutting some gems. Maybe we can uh, get something to trade, assuming that anybody ever comes to visit us again. What are you guys doing? See, they keep coming down, like, over down to the southeast where our fortress entrances hmm. they're up to something but what they're having some sort of a ritual around this panda carcass perhaps throwing the blood up into the air and dancing and what are you doing this guy over here so like in dwarf fortress each siege is made up of a bunch of little leaders with like a unit that kind of follows them around like, this guy here is clearly the leader of these zombies that are just kind of following him. They're moving around kind of erratically, like uh, angry hornets, right? Um, sometimes these leaders can get hung up, though, and, like, the followers won't know how to act. 
So it is good to take out the leaders if you can. Not that you could ever be so precise in Dwarf Fortress. I don't like how they were both just up there for so long and then this one just turned around and is like, eh, let's go figure something else out. I don't think this standing in the corner business is uh, working out so well for our attack plan. <laughs> it is not. I would just feel a lot better if we could just get rid of this siege somehow. <laughs> this scared me for a second. I thought it was lava. I'm like, what is so much lava doing there? It's not. It's just furrowed soil. No worries. We're going to get to planting. I'm going to set up one field here just for strictly plump helmets, and that's going to be it. And then I'm going to set up one for sweet pods. And uh, sweet pods are good. Sweet pods are good. Tails are good. This one here. Uh, quarry bushes. Cave wheat. Uh, plump helmets. No. No, I'm not going to set up plump helmets. Cave wheat. Z leaf fallow. I've never fertilized fields ever in Dwarf Fortress. I feel like it could be handy, but like you don't really need it either, I don't think. Like, you already produce a ton of food just from, like, one stock, uh, one farm plot, so... It's not, like, something you have to do, but I guess it could be handy, huh? That farm bothers me. <laughs> don't it? Don't it just? That's kind of the intention. I'm kind of a ghoul. Let's see here. Keep that undead watch. I wish I could, like, set up a perimeter or something. You know? That would like warn me, like, oh, enemies have entered the, pri the perimeter, and like you could be warned, you know. Or else I, I have to keep an eye up here on these guys at all times because you can't tell what they're gonna do. It's kind of bothersome. Like this, this group over here breaking over to the east. I don't really know how these things plan out what they're going to do. Assuming they plan anything, I doubt they actually do. But there does seem to be some sort of something going on. Like, why did these groups come in? They attacked some animals, and then they went for our base, right? But then they sat up in the corner for a long, long time. Why? Why did they do that, you know? And what are they doing now? Like, some of them seem to know where our base was and went down there, right? Then these, these ones are just like, yeah, we're kind of over that whole thing. Maybe we won't do that anymore. They're just kind of shambling around threateningly. We obviously need more cage traps up on the surface, don't we? We need some way to deal with them up on the surface, but I don't know what. I kind of like when Dwarf Fortress gets like a, like a tower defense sort of a mode, I guess. Like where you're kind of just defending your fortress against, uh, you know, invaders that show up and stuff. That's always fun. This red panda. Look at this guy. <laughs> Man, I don't know what this guy's plan is. Just cheating death over here. I like him. Where do those zombies go? <laughs> Just acting as a, a distraction. It's a decoy. Okay, dwarves. We have to get back to work. Let's see here. So we got our farmers down here working away, planting some plots. Excellent. Wonderful. Get to it. Uh, down over this way here, we have our miner digging. Wonderful. Other miners? They should be digging shortly, I would think. It's going pretty good, though. Not too bad. I am kind of stunned about how many rooms we have carved out already. It's going to be approaching 75, right? we got to get them smoothed up, though. That's very important. Got to have those primo rooms for our dwarves. Right now, they're just sleeping in that grungy little barracks that's like, or a dormitory that's in our meeting hall. <laughs> Not a good place to lay your beard at night, but that's all we got right now. Things could be worse. We still, as of yet, haven't lost any dwarves, right? Just uh, some animals dead. That's about it. No, we're doing good.
paranoid though, very paranoid. I think like, um, as I said before, if we trained up our dwarves and could fight, I wouldn't even feel comfortable fighting those intelligent undead. Those things are very strong sometimes, depending on what abilities they have. Okay, and we got, we got combat here. Great Horned Owl, okay. Great Horned Owl appears to be fighting. One of them is, maybe this one? Um, I am unsure, unsure. Yeah, I guess at this point we're just, it's a, like an attrition sort of a thing. We just have to wait until they leave, which really stinks. I'd really like to set up like a, uh, like a wider wall around our area. So maybe we could just lock them out entirely. I don't like the whole idea of just locking things out at all, but I don't know, maybe until we can come up with something better. I, I don't like how much it's stunted us to have those things out there and just kind of having us be terrified here. Where are you going? Where are you going there, Sparky? I'm watching you. You coming in? Look at this guy. Just threatening us. What are you doing? What's the plan here, zombies? Either come in or you don't. I hate these guys. I hate them. We gotta come up with something. We can't let them terrorize us like this, can we? No, we gotta do something. Um, like, if we have a big moat or something? That we could just, like, let water into and just, like, I don't know. I don't even think we could kill them with that. Like, if we let in an entire ocean's worth of water, I don't think it would affect them. I wonder what this necromancer thinks of all this. I can't imagine the dwarves just kind of glancing over, being like, Hmm. Hmm. Undead outside. Hmm. Go figure. Cattle's just like, I was near to a sea. It pleases me. He feels fondness talking with an acquaintance. Let's see how Catall's doing. Uh, worships Fergig and uh, Lorit Ophantobol Kor. Okay, has a couple of friends in the fortress. Let's see this god, Fergig. Fergig is a deity of the Cloister of Ash. Fergig most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with darkness, the night, nightmares, and dreams. Hmm. Good to know, good to know. It doesn't look to have any uh, really close relationships in the fortress. has a friend. Well, it has a close friend. The necromancer. Hmm. Let's think here. If we could come up with a way to... trying to think here for a second. <laughs> I kind of remember, do we have the front gate open? Stuff could just walk into our fortress if it wanted to. And our dwarves could walk out, conversely. Hmm. Yep. If we came up with like a, you know, an under, I, I was saying, a, you know, a moat above ground that we could just wash things through, right? Look at these bastards sneaking down. Look at them, all of them at once, just kind of coming down like that. What are you doing? Are you coming in? They just came down for a second, just trying to scare us. Oh, I hate them. There's one. One's coming in. They're turning around, you creep. Oh, I hate these guys. How about we set up a ballista right here and just fire it down the hallway as soon as they pop in, huh? Wouldn't that be nice? Maybe we should do that. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Let's see. Maybe we can work up something. Let's try it. BWI. I'm gonna set up a work work uh, siege workshop. No, it's not I. It's S. Okay. I'm gonna set up a siege workshop over here. Now we're gonna have to make some things for this. We gotta make a ballista, right? We gotta make three ballista parts, which I think might have to be made out of wood. I can't remember. But then you can make the bolts 
Um, like, we don't have any metal currently, but, uh, we might be able to make them out of wood or something. It'd be kind of funny just to sit a dwarf in a ballista, just pointed at the stairway, stairway here, and just have it fire off as soon as something pokes its head in. I doubt we'll be able to hit anything, and if we do, it probably won't do any damage because of wooden ballista bolts, but it'd still be kind of funny. Let's see. Alright, so I've cleared away some of the pile that was over here. And I guess, well, something that we'll have to do is... Can I do that? Can, I, can you carve a constructed wall into a fortification? I don't... I, I didn't think so. But I guess we'll see. It's got this like little red flashy thing, like somebody is going to do it at some point, but maybe not. Maybe like uh, maybe a mason can do it. Oh yeah, look at that. It's weird that you can carve a constructed fortified, constructed wall into a fortification. It just seems weird for dwarf fortress. I don't know why. Oh, here, one second. I gotta go charge my phone so I can keep up on chat. One second. Here, I'll leave the game running. Just, uh, <laughs> wish the dwarves luck. pretty good I think okay okay anything happen oh boy my phone died yeah I can't see chat one second this is janky setup over here sorry I'm gonna let my, my phone charge a bit guys just behave yourselves for a minute Everyone's like, there's a zombie, it's in your fortress. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say we're good. Siege is still ongoing. I can see. Got those those bastards are still out here, so looks like little has changed. That's that's fine. That's good. Good. We're a good place. I I consider this a good place as far as dwarf fortress goes. Who constructed this place? We have a, a siege worker somewhere? Uh, okay, so you need wood for ballista parts. That's fine. Our expedition leader is constructing ballista parts right now. From logs they are getting from I don't know where. Where'd you, why was that log even there? I guess you found a log somewhere, huh? Actually, you know what? I think we got some over here. Uh, in this pile. I had dumped some logs from up on the surface, so... There should be a couple in this pile. Hopefully there's enough for one bolt at least. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, let's see, how are we looking? Underground, we got our, our farm plot is going. I'm going to make a bigger food stockpile, just like a cram something over here so we can just harvest the plants and put them somewhere for now. I don't think our barrels are underground, so our barrels are still up above ground somewhere. So we can't really 
store food safely, which isn't great. I'd like to be able to store that food and um, you know get it put away so that the seeds don't go to waste. That's kind of a big problem sometimes. It's a problem I have anyways. Running out of seeds, just like uh, I, I hear a lot of time that like people cook their food and um, that that kills all the seeds and stuff. But um, I haven't really had that problem so much. I, I'm not sure what causes my disappearance of seeds, but like <laughs> I feel like every once in a while I get that you know I get that message where dwarves are like no seeds available, no seeds available, and it just keeps happening. I'm not sure what causes it though. I know if you cook food, then it destroys the seeds, whereas if you brew it, then it saves the seeds, which doesn't make any sense. It just seems like a weird system. I wish it just saved seeds no matter what you did. I don't really understand why it's different one way or the other. I also wish you could, like, you know, maybe if there was a system where you could, like, preserve seeds or something like uh, you know use this plot for seeds instead of food crops or something you know I don't know I'm not sure how farming works in real life to be frank <laughs> I know you put seeds in the ground that it grows into stuff but like that's about the extent of it maybe if there's a way to like you know I like how do they get seeds in real life you know like I'm growing a, a growing a field of corn where they set aside some of it to regrow as corn, right? And some of it they uh, process into food. I would imagine. I guess I don't know. But maybe you could do that. Maybe, like, at a farmer's workshop, you can say, like, you know, make corn seeds, and they you know, need to go grab some corn and turn it into seeds or something like that. That's all I'm saying. Look at this wonderful living quarters over here. That's looking pretty, pretty fine, pretty spiffy. I should probably start smoothing that. We're going to get some dwarves on the task of smoothing this entire area. And, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to set this miner here. Actually, the uh, expedition leader. Expedition leader, I'm going to take you off of mining duties for now. I'm going to put you solely on siege duties. How about? And you other guys. I'm going to take some of these guys off of the, uh, engineering duties have one guy uh, muff cat or expedition leader is going to be the only siege operator slash engineer in the entire fortress you know people wonder how I get along uh, doing like labors and stuff in dwarf fortress this is it right here just going through the list one by one <laughs> it's really not so bad you get used to it Takes a little bit of doing, but eh, again, you get used to it. It's fine. Here, I'm gonna pop open that chat again. One second, my uh, my phone has been charged. My ancient phone from like 2017. Two shakes of a gibbon's tail. audacity of these guys over here just terrorizing our home it's disgusting frankly makes me sick <laughs> just over here like there's something you ain't nothing how's that siege workshop looking do they, they finish it you think uh, let's see here how you build siege thing where is it? Siege engines. Here we go. Ballista. I'm gonna set that bad boy up right here. One, two, three. There we go. Now we got that fortification carved in that wall. And I'm gonna get this ballista set up right here and shoot southward down through the fortification that we cleared away. Okay, I got chat coming in a second. One second. Two shakes, two shakes. Okay, okay, there we go. Krug uses a Nokia is the first thing I see. <laughs> Not far off. No, it's it's a good it's, it's a it's a good phone. Uh okay, yeah, getting to work on this ballista now. 
Those zombies are still out there. I haven't seen them poke their heads down again. But that doesn't mean they won't. This door is unlocked, so they can come down any old time they want. They, they're they just not. I think those zombies are smart. That first round came running down into our fortress, got caged up. Now the rest are wary. Couldn't blame them. Couldn't blame them. Turns out those rotted brains of theirs still have some intelligence in them. There we go. Ballista going up. There we go. It's pointed over to the west now. I'm going to change the orientation. Down to the south. There we go. Change action. Uh, we're going to set that to... Not... Uh, we're going to say not in use right now. If I set it to prepare to fire, the expedition leader will come and just sit in it endlessly. And that won't be good. <laughs> Sorry, some soda. That won't be good because they'll get like, you know, thirsty after a while and... Mm. Speaking of which, Diet Sprite, it's good stuff. Really, I suppose, um, while we're getting this thing ready, we could come up with a better trap for them, too. As long as they're not coming down here and messing around with us too much. I figured we could set up something. Hmm. Of course, like, if they don't come down here, period... What's the point of setting anything up, you know? I'm not going to set up some big elaborate thing if the zombies are just like... Well, if we stay up on the surface, then they'll starve down there eventually. It's not going to work out too well for us, you know? How are we looking over here? So we have one dwarf currently working on stone detailing. That's going to take forever. Uh, how about, like, everyone is going to be a stone detailer now? You know? Might as well. I mean, if we're stuck down here, guys, you should get to work. Everyone to it. Even you, cat all. No excuses. Uh, still got these masons here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave them to it. But everyone else can get to uh, work. Detailing stone. We got a lot of space to cover. And you miners. Uh, yeah. What the hell? get to it. Expedition leader, that's the only one we're going to have working on the siege duties. We should probably get this thing hooked up with a bolt. We don't have any ballista bolts yet, <laughs> which seems kind of foolish. Let's do that. How do you make a bolt? I forget. Assemble wooden ballista arrow. Okay. We could make a metal one, but we don't have any metal. That's fine. That's fine. This will probably be fine. We'll make one. Assuming we have the proper materials. I'd like to think we have some wood down here, but I, I guess I don't know. We should probably get some proper bedrooms set up before much longer. Like, I'm realizing... Like, how uncomfortable is this room here? Let's just take a look at it for a second. We have one long table, a bunch of chairs. Hey, that's comfy. But... You know, it's like half smoothed out, so the rest of it's really rough still, but it's just kind of ugly. And we have a bunch of beds lined up on one side of it that people are trying to sleep in. We have a group of piglets here just screaming because their parents were killed moments ago. Down the hall up to the north, we have a bunch of zombies caged up. They gotta be making some sort of wailing, moaning sounds. Not conducive for sleep habits at all. Then down to the south, we got our food people in here belching, eating food. Mouth sounds. Dwarven mouth sounds. That's probably the worst thing I've ever heard of. Like, that, <laughs> that's terrible. Not a good sleeping place. No, we need some rooms. Some proper rooms. I'm glad we got these these uh, three by threes down here. Dwarves are going to be happy for that. But it's going to take, like, another four years, dwarves. So, you know, <laughs> just just calm yourselves down a tad, eh? <laughs> Not good. Not good. It's really just a terrible place to live when you get down to it. <laughs> Uh, okay. Double, 007 Hutching said, is this my first time streaming? Uh, pretty much. I haven't streamed Dwarf Fortress before. I wasn't even sure if I can get it to work this morning. I woke up at like 7.30 and I'm like, uh, alright, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> I just like rolled out of bed and I'm like, I, I switched on a OBS and I'm just trying to figure out how to get it to work. And I think I got it. Surprisingly. 
normally I can't work any sort of technical stuff at all. Not that this is extremely technical. I mean, children stream and stuff. Goodness. But, like, you know, regardless. Got the caveman brain going on. Uh, if we keep running into this problem with zombies coming to our fortress like this, it's going to be beneficial for us to learn how to deal with them, you know, in like a combat sort of sense, a militaristic sort of a sense. We might have to learn how to do that at some point. So, to that end, we might have to start training. Although, like, I don't know, I have a hard time balancing sometimes, like, getting the fortress duty done because it's going to be good for our sanity to get these rooms done you know at least enough rooms for our current dwarves but it's going to be good for us uh our, our living thing our survivability to be <laughs> be trained fighters as well too so i'm not too sure how i should balance that exactly they're going about this pretty quick they're going to get quicker and quicker too as we go I'm satisfied. Uh, we got our expedition leader down here harvesting plants. See, if a zombie popped up in the hall right now, that's not a blessed thing we could do about it. You gotta be up there, my friend. No worrying about such things. We gotta get you operating siege equipment and that's about it. I think you could turn on uh, these standing orders here. There is um, dwarves all harvest. I'm gonna turn that off. Only farm is harvest, okay? That'll be fine. I'm hoping Muffcat over here goes and sits up in the meeting hall and that's about all they do. What gonna be about it? Yeah, that's good. Just hang out in here, my friend. Maybe uh let's let's have a seat here. Prepare to fire. I'm not going to fire quite yet. But at least we're sitting there, right? And if something popped its ghoulish head oh no. The red panda just got struck. Finally. Hang in there, my friend. I don't know what hit it. I, I figured it was getting attacked by a zombie. Uh, no. <laughs> I think it fell out of the tree. Honestly, it looks like it was just hit. It's one of his legs broke. Uh, <laughs> ooh. Hmm. Its neck took the for full force of the impact, and the part is smashed into the body as an unrecognizable mass. An artery has been opened by the attack. See, that's where hubris, hubris gets you. <laughs> Leaping through the trees. Oh, now it died. That's a shame. <laughs> hey, what's black and white and red all over? It's our, our fortress here. It's us. We've got a dead panda up to the north there. And... A little dark humor there. Um, Let's see. See, this is bad, though, because I've begun just ignoring these zombies altogether. Like, I've, I'm beginning to lose interest in tracking their movements. But they could just rush down into our fortress. You know? That wouldn't be good. Not at all. Hurry up, you dwarves. My goodness. I wish that we just peek down. How about we take one little practice shot, just to see... How this is gonna work. Let's make sure there's no zombies close by yet. Uh, no. Oh, here comes one. Here's, here's a peppy fella. Come on down here. Come on over here. Come take a peek. A gander, if you will. Into our little fortress. Come down the stairs. Just poke your ghoulish little head down here. <laughs> so we can take a shot at you. There you go. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. No. Come on. Get over here. <laughs> Just like teasing each other. No, no, go, go, no. I don't want to, you go. Come on, you idiots. Let's go. Fine, I give up. Let's take a shot. Let's see how inaccurate this is. I am going to, okay. Pause the game first. I am going to change the action to fire at will. And then I'm going to go over the ballista here. Look at the ballista right here. Hit F5, and I'm going to follow the arrow. Let's see how it sails. <laughs> that's it. That's that's it right there. 
it went what maybe seven feet uh hit the wall and exploded into a wooden shrapnel that's all we got and we don't have any more bolts okay i was misguided i i hope we have our hopes tempered for this whole thing because i don't think this is going to work out very well at all <laughs> let's make some more goodness hoping we can manage to make a couple more but i guess we'll see I guess if we're talking about our hopes. I hope these zombies come down and get stuck in our traps someday. But I guess I, I no longer have my hopes very high at all on that. First stream ever? No. I, I did stream like uh, last week or something like that. Uh, I did a drawing stream where I just drew some, drew some pumpkins. It was pretty fun. Not too bad. I had streamed for like, I think it was like five hours or something like that. How long have I been going with this one? 1.45 right now for me. When did I start? I think it was around like 8.30 or something. It's not bad. Not bad. I don't know how people stream for like 8 hours and stuff. That's a good chunk of time. I could probably do it though. I do have to, like realistically, I have to stop streaming at like 3 or something I believe. Got some family coming over for stuff. But, uh, yeah, until then, I'll be hanging out with you. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can progress a little bit more. I've got a feeling that if these zombies ever leave, more zombies are going to be right on their heels. This kind of happens a lot lately. Like, I feel like in Dwarf Fortress, um, like, when you're near necromancer places, a group like this will show up and completely stunt all of your progress for years until they leave and then another group will be on its heels and again you're locked underground and it just it stops all of your progress like totally for, for me anyways maybe there's a better way to go about this though like how could I erase all of these undead that are on the surface right now they do kind of keep coming in like you know tempting us they keep coming right near the mouth of the fortress but they don't get that close. Maybe if we just like, like these guys are really close. These guys are sneaky over here. You see them just kind of like huddled around this edge here, just like peeking over. They know where the dwarves are. They're waiting for us to just poke our little beards out, but we're not gonna, we're not stupid. We're not stupid here at Tomb Spire. No, um, like if we could like put some more traps up on the surface, that could potentially help us out, you know? It'd be dumb for us to even try, but... It could work. It could work. Yeah, look at these guys. See, they, they kind of run over and then they run back. This guy over here sitting by this pig carcass over here. This ghoul. Togi. Togi Onslaught Goat. Uh, completely nude. A nude zombie. Just picture that, okay, just for just for a moment. Just I want you to close your eyes and picture this right here. This dead forest. You got dead trees all over the place. Not a leaf to be seen. You got no grass. Just dry brambles and twigs sticking up. Over here in this marshy area, you got a couple of ponds. Okay? Maybe the water's green, brackish, got scum floating on it, you know, lily pads and that sort of stuff. Now I want you to picture just a rotting naked zombie just hunched over by a dead pig carcass there's blood splattered on the ground you got some bones things just lurching around it's terrible really you know like it's easy to look at this as just like oh it's a little flashing you that turns into a coolish little icon from time to time next to a, a red <laughs> red p there but you know if you really think about it oh it just started raining too add some rain to that mental image there just rain pouring down hitting against this Ghouls sloughing flesh as the thing just sits there in silence, enjoying its grisly meal. Terrible. Maybe you can hear the sea off in the distance, over to the east. Of course, <laughs> terrible. And up here we have a panda, just dead in the forest. This game, like, I, Dwarf Fortress does this great thing where, like, one end of the spectrum, it's like the silliest crap you've ever seen, ever. And the other end of the spectrum, it's like really the most terrifying stuff you've ever seen or heard of. Completely out of drinks now. That's not good. Um, hold that thought. We're gonna 
do something about that. BWL. Gonna make a still. Gonna make a still right over here. Right over yonder way. And who wants to man that still? Actually, what the hell? I'm gonna have our expedition leader do it because there's no way in hell we're ever gonna hit anything that comes down that stairway. Brewing. Gonna turn on brewing. Get to it, Muffcat. Don't fire the ballista. My goodness. Have we been firing the ballista this whole time? Yeah, I got it set to fire at will. I think Muthcat's been making bolts and then trying to fire them down the hall. Yeah, a, a bolt just fired out of there, by the way. You didn't see a gun on the hall, because again, it completely just smashed into the wall the second it left the ballista. Dumb. Stop loading the ballista. Okay, that's, that's enough. Enough ballista antics, my friend. This ain't gonna work. Uh, not in use, okay. I'm gonna set it to be removed, just so I stop. Messing around with the thing. Don't don't actually remove it. Just you know, don't mess with it for a second. I'm uh yeah. There we go. Just make us some drinks, please. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So just made ourselves a still down there. Gonna start pumping out some drinks hardcore. Gotta get to it. Got no drinks right now. <laughs> Gotta brew something. Got some fish, got some meat. Make it into something to drink, please. I'm just kidding, we, we have plants, we have some plants. That should be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, our expedition leader does not know how to brew drinks, so there's not going to be many coming out of here, I don't think. This is very inefficient, the way we're going about this. But, we get the job done somewhat. What is everyone up to, by the way? Plant seeds, detail walls, got people sleeping, eating. Okay. Let's rack our brains for a second. All right, I'm gonna zoom out. And keep an eye on our, our drinks. We got five drinks right now. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Chat, how do we deal with zombies milling around outside our fortress? Like if this is gonna happen, it's gonna keep happening. How could we deal with that? Uh, without going out and fighting them necessarily, cause like that's something we could do, but like we don't, really have the equipment for it like if they're just wandering around out there what could we do we don't really have a good way to lure them into the fortress like we could go out and try as i said before try to construct more traps out there but like that's incredibly risky Can zombies be lured? I don't think so. It means somewhat, but like, not reliably. And it could very well lead to dwarf and death too. Some dwarves will see an enemy and just be like, let's let's die. <laughs> They'll just run towards it no matter what. It's kind of hard to tell which dwarves will do that too, but like, hmm. Enlist the pandas. Walls, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know, I guess we could go out and try to like, start building rings of walls around our base, huh? It's a shame they can't be drowned, right? Nope. Impossibility, I'm afraid. Oops, sorry, I gotta zoom back in here. But yeah, that siege is ongoing. And they're just hanging around out there. Maybe if we could, like... See, this this is a problem over here. We got this one guy, the, the one we were uh, imagining about earlier. Still hunched by this pond over here. That's gonna be a problem if we want to do anything outside, cause uh, it's going to see us, you know. Additionally, like these groups are moving around now, so it's gonna be even harder to do anything up on the surface. Especially when you got this guy over here. This one over here is keeping a firm eye on our fortress entrance. 
Not good. Not good. Maybe. <laughs> mm, no. Man, I don't know. Maybe our only choice is to go down into the caves. Start a new home down there. Maybe this place is too, uh, too hell blasted. Too far from the good orangutan's grace. From the good gibbon's grace. Not, not too sure. Not too sure. Well, it's fine. We're, we're doing pretty okay down here underground. I guess we just have to focus on that. You know what? Now is a good time to speed up the time, I think. Right? There we go. I've got it set to max currently. It's going to make it so that we cannot possibly react in any sort of situation that warrants it. But, um, dwarves will work faster. <laughs> so that's good. Right? We're at 14 right now. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, almost 12 rooms. Yeah, we'll get this layer done and then we'll set up some bedrooms. Maybe take a look at her, some dwarves. How about that? Take a little, little, little load off. I think we could deserve it. Right at the current time, we got 30 drinks. So that's good. Uh, how are we looking on our... Okay, we're making those cabinets and coffers and doors before. Almost done with that, surprisingly. 50 of each. I didn't think we'd have enough marble for it, but oh yeah, actually way more than enough. Um, a zombie up here fighting with an owl. I think that's stopped. We're good. Man, oh man. Bunch of troublemakers. That's fine. We're doing good. We're doing good. Okay, back down here underground. Look at that. Yeah, we're going to settle up, smoothing out this whole area here. Get it nice and clean. Make some nice places to live. Yeah, I'm going to set our, our... Okay, the miners are actually already set to uh, smooth. How about you, Expedition Leader? Muff Cat. How about you get to it? I don't feel like we're as close to these dwarves as we could be. And I think that's a cry and shame. Oh... Suppa, uh, Suppa ja Jasu? I can't pronounce that exactly, but thank you very much. I appreciate that, my friend. You cool bastard. You cool bastard. Um, any particular goal in mind with this particular fort? Uh, you survive, mostly. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Like, we were going pretty good. We were going to make some sort of a, a mega structure at some point, but we got kind of gunked up because the uh, some zombies came, some intelligent undead. And that just made things very difficult. Another thing I want to do, actually, before we get started here, we got to clean this stone out. We can't just, you know, live with this stone here. That's, uh, that's not going to do. So we're going to do that. We're going to clear out all this stone. It shouldn't take too long when things sped up like this. The dwarves are just going to run in. Grab the stuff they gotta grab, and uh, I'm just putting it right by the doorway there, not too far away. And then we'll we'll start turning that into something too, you know. It should go pretty quick. Actually, while we're here, BWM, I'm gonna set up a mason's workshop, right over yonder way, and I'm gonna set up another one right here, right over yonder way, just like that. Get those rocks out of there, just like that. Got our two workshops done and what I'm gonna do is set up a stone stockpile right there okay right on top of this dump pile and what I'm going to do is set this pile to give to both of these workshops okay just like that and what kind of stone is this this is diorite so I'm gonna have these dwarves make some diorite stuff um, we're gonna make 10 doors. Okay. Hopefully they get to that promptly. And they should be making it out of diorite too, because I think that's all in this level. Um, gonna make 20 doors, 20 cabinets, you know, because like, as much as I've said I like the chaos and stuff, it would be kind of neat to see this whole layer decked out with nice gray doors and gray cabinets and gray coffers, all the same same color but maybe I'll, I'll throw a little something extra in there too because I know you like it 
<laughs> Would be funny. Oh, uh, Teacher Mook. What was your favorite short fort of all time? My favorite short fort. Thank you, by the way. Uh, my favorite short fort of all time. Uh, it's got to be Skull Horror, really. I mean, the place was great, right? It was just fun. Something about it. Something about it. I mean, it's really in the same sort of a situation that this fort is, but this one just kind of seems uh, in incapable. <laughs> you know? It's, it's fine, though, really. Um, banged those doors out, no problem. Can make some more. And uh, actually going to make out some... Uh, some cabinets. Make some rock cabinets. Make some rock coffers. And then we're going to be all set. Two shakes. We're out of drinks already. Hmm. That's no bueno. Let's remedy that. Hopefully we can make some more. I think we're producing enough food now with this farm where we shouldn't be starving to death. I think. I'm gonna put that in bold, I think. That we won't starve, or dehydrate for that matter, but we'll see, we'll see. I am a silly bastard sometimes, and sometimes I uh, get, get a little careless, you know? Oh, did they not make these? Let me see here. No, they stopped, okay. I gotta reclaim this stone, I forgot. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, get to it, dwarves. We're gonna make some cabinets. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, in the meantime, I'll take a gander into chat. Long live the Ravenhead. <laughs> Hopefully not. The Ravenheads last too long. <laughs> Way too long. Fortunately, though, we don't have that problem anymore. I just dealt with some water buffalo hair earlier and luckily it wasn't a steel clutches type ordeal where we were fighting the thing for years on end <laughs> i hope this turns into a series as based on a stream version yeah i guess we'll we'll see we'll see i don't know i'm not sure I'm not sure how that would work exactly uh so we had our cabinets done I'm gonna make some coffers gotta get some coffers right I'm gonna have a nice chest in the dwarven bedrooms absolutely Gotta have it. Got 40 drinks. Make sure we're still producing those. I don't know why we keep stopping producing drinks. I think maybe we're running out of barrels or something. Uh, okay, got scared here for a second. Looks like a zombie is fighting with a crab. Getting pinched by a crab. This whole mob of zombies is chasing down a crab right now. Orangutan, rest your soul, you crustaceous hero. Boy, they really let that thing have it. <laughs> Everyone's beating down the crab. Poor bastard. Poor bastard. Having a look up here. Okay, okay. Still working on those coffers. Going pretty quick, though. These masons do some damn fine work. I must say. Okay. Let's get some doors set up. Give me a lot of click clacking with my, uh, my keyboard. Hopefully it's not too bad. I guess I should probably invest in a, uh, a quieter keyboard if I'm going to be doing streaming. Also, it might help if I don't put my mic directly over top it. You know. I don't know. Just thoughts. <laughs> oh, crap. I got marble doors here, too. I was just trying to do the uh, diorite ones. Wasn't paying attention. Well, I guess it's going to be a, a whole slew of different colors. You know what? That's fine. Gotta embrace the chaos when you can, you know? There we go. Look at that. The dwarves get straight to work slamming those doors in places. Ooh, look at that. No marble ones either. It's all diorite. That is just spiffy looking. Good job, I say. How about some beds? Uh, actually, can I make sure I've got enough, enough things here as it is? I'm gonna put some diorite cabinets in place. One cabinet per room. Same with coffers, same for beds. Maybe a little something extra, extra, if you're good, my dwarves. Should maybe make some uh, some statues. We put some statues in here. Actually, if we were feeling really feisty, we could have engraved these surfaces too, which would have been better. Uh, maybe we'll do that afterwards, though.
I like watching them put these things in place. It's just so quick, you know? That looks nice. I like that. Good job, dwarves. Coffer time. Die right, please. Actually, we don't have enough coffers quite yet. I guess I could probably... Hmm. Let me try that again. I guess I could probably go in and uh, put a darker outline around the cabinet. It's kind of hard to tell where it starts and where it begins on the tile set here. I did, I made this tile set here for Fang Mountain. That was a, a short fort I did a while back. Good times. Yeah, I need a couple more coffers. How many more bits of diorite do we have? Uh, more than enough, more than enough, we're good. How about we make some statues over here too? Of just whatever you want. There we go. Get to it, dwarves. Take a gander over yonder. <laughs> Here, two shakes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to set these dwarves to making some more stone stuff. And BRBRQ. Here, one second. Be right, be right back, guys.
How are we looking? We surviving? Looks pretty good to me. I had set up a little uh, management order there. So that we should hopefully not run out of drinks anytime soon. I hope we just keep pumping them out. It should be should be fine. We'll see. Look at that though, that's pretty good. Okay, gotta make some more uh, gotta put down some more coffers. Almost done there. Look at this poor little room right here. <laughs> I do pity whoever gets stuck in there. Um gotta put some beds down. I'm gonna get rid of these masons' workshops and then uh, get some stuff put in there. I keep getting paranoid whenever I see the combat pop up in the top there. I'm gonna slap down some statues real quick. Where should I put those though? Yeah, I'll just put them in this unutilized corner. I only have ten of them though. I was hoping to get more. Oh, no, I, I guess we got more than 10. Never mind. I know what I was thinking. There we go. Not shabby, not shabby. Coming along. These are going to be some fine bedrooms. I'll tell you that much. I am going to make a couple more, a couple more mason workshops, though. Hopefully make our remaining statues. Okay, there we go. Diorite statues. Are we out of diorite? We might be out of diorite, actually. No, I don't think so. They're finding it somewhere. Oh, maybe this dump pile over here. I don't know. They're finding it. They're resourceful, these bearded bastards. <laughs> They'll get it from somewhere. I'll put some beds. I gotta put some beds down. Hopefully we have enough beds for a while. Like, we had a carpenter pumping them out at the beginning for a few months straight. Look at that, though, huh? Sometimes one of these living areas comes together, and it just... Hmm. Très magnifique. <laughs> completely fluent in French, as you can tell. No accent or anything. Is that French? I think it's French, right? Sorry. I probably offended someone with that. Plenty of beds. Really not as many beds as I thought there would be, though. Crying shame. I also thought maybe the beds would have been inaccessible like up on the surface or something well, well I guess that could be the case they only put down a couple of them what are those zombies doing out there man getting sick of them getting real sick of this crap I would like to come up and get those beds think we could do that I think so Um, I think, yeah, the beds are going to be in these two craft dwarf workshops right here. They may get spotted by this zombie over here. And I guess my hope is that if they are spotted by the zombie, they don't go running off like idiots. Because that's going to be all sorts of problematic. I've slowed things down again. Let's see what happens. Dwarves should come up out of the stairway and get beds out of these carpenter workshops. There they go. There they go. I don't know where the hell you guys think you're going right now. To be perfectly honest. You don't have any job right now. There's really no reason you'd be walking up to the northeast right now. Why are you going that way? There's no burrow there. There's no burrow there, my friends. So why does this happen? Interrupted by Togi Onslaught Goat's corpse. Are they seeing this corpse over here? Listen, you baboons. Can we not? Uh oh. I, I've got a feeling things are going to go ass ways, surely, my bearded bastards. We got people now running all over the place. I got 
Damn it. I should have listened to that red panda. Hubris. This is what. This is what happens. This is what comes of it. Guys, get back down into the fortress immediately. Okay, one, two, you guys get down there. Three, four, five. You, no, don't come up here. Get the hell down there, you. There you go, you're down there. What we's gonna do now. Okay, they're, they're going, they're heading down. Okay, everyone's down, everyone's safe. Whew. That was kinda, that was kinda terrifying. Not gonna lie. I think we're good now. Okay, that was a mistake. I guess we can't do that. That's fine though. All right, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of these beds. We don't need them anymore. One, two, three, four, five. Five beds, gonna get rid of those. And we're gonna get those placed down underground safely in the bedroom. And eh, I was gonna lock the door. I'm feeling paranoid now. Now that we've stirred up the zombies, but I think Togi's gonna be cool up there. Yeah, Togi's back over here, just sitting by the pond. Not not so aggressive. I kind of like Togi actually. Now that we did that mental mind imagination journey with him, Togi's grown on me. You though, I don't like you. These dark zombies. Troublesome. Troublesome. Ah, uh, Krug is a freaking natural at streaming. That's good to hear. It's very good to hear for like my first stream over here. I haven't done this before. I was kind of nervous, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not hydrated. I'm not nourished. I just kind of rolled out of bed and I'm like, you know what? Let's do some streaming today. And uh, yeah, we're having a stab at it. I'm glad it's going well. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. I love you all. You're great, my bearded bastards. Look at that, though. Oh, man. Like, I know I screwed up this layout already by making one room smaller than the rest in this particular line just because I love chaos. But look at this further chaos down here. This one yellow gem cluster, this cluster of pyrite just amid the sea of green, or uh, gray, gray. <laughs> That's great. Look at that, it just ruins the entire thing, but it, it's great. It's great, you gotta love that chaos. Just a sprinkle of chaos, just to liven things up a bit. I like it an awful lot. Anyways, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to ignoring the zombies because like it takes an awful lot of mental energy for me to just keep tabs on them all the time. I'd rather them just sneak into our base and destroy us when we're not looking. It's a lot less stress that way. Okay. Uh, oh, did I just cancel that order? I didn't mean to. That's fine. You know what I, d I don't like in Dwarf Fortress is... Managing seeds. There's an awful lot of seeds in Dwarf Fortress, like, all the time. Like, in this pile here, we have grape seeds, pigtail seeds, radish seeds, all kinds of seeds all over the place. And, like, a dwarf will just be like, okay, I'm gonna go to this pile and put down this one radish seed on the ground. That takes up the entire spot. I'm gonna put my potato seed next to it, and over here some alfalfa seeds. Like, like, they're not even stacked up or anything. It's a seed, you know, you can put a pile of seeds in a place, really, not just one. Imagine just a grid of just one seed, just <laughs> on the ground. Like, oh, that's, that's our pile of it. It's our seed stockpile. We have one radish there, and over next to it, we got our, our one potato seed. Like, I know they'll take the seeds and put them in pots and stuff, given time, but... I don't know, sometimes you end up with so many seeds, like... I don't know. You can manage them better, I know you can, I just, I'm, I get lazy sometimes. And, like, if you want to, you know, go to your trader and be like, Hey, uh, I'll take these grapes. You know, that's fine and good, but then you'll have some grape seeds laying around somewhere. And it's not often that you'll be like, hey, give me one grape. You'll be like, hey, give me some grapes and taters and carrots and all this stuff. So you got all these random seeds all over the place, you know? It's a hassle, I tell you. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to grab these beds. Again, that's, that's just going to have to be fine. We do have these beds here that I guess we could try to put down underground um i'd like to just get enough bedrooms for our dwarves that we have and i don't think that's going to even be possible but we can at least try right here i'm going to cancel some of these 
How many beds were in the dining room? I think it was like five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna try to put these down. Let's see. I'm gonna assume these ones that I'm currently placing are the ones that are in the meeting hall, but I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now let's see if they do actually construct these. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's gonna work. That's gonna give us 10 bedrooms, um, which, yeah, isn't gonna be enough because we I think we've got 14 dwarves right now. Really a pitiful population number for a fortress that is approaching its, how long has it been? It's gonna be two years old, I think, right? I think so. Let me take a look in chat. I haven't actually glanced in chat in a little bit. <laughs> Let me see. How is your fortress going, bro? It's going pretty okay. We're locked down underground. We've got some zombie action up top, which yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but yeah, could be worse, I suppose. They could be down in our fortress, right? We'd be screwed. Uh, the mad lad. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else here. Been wondering forever if I use Dwarf Therapist, DF Hack, or if you just raw dog jobs. Yep. Just raw here. You get used to it. I don't know. Like, it's like what I was saying before. Like, it's the whole Steam release thing if I get excited for it. Like, I'm so used to Dwarf Fortress without anything that it's completely fine. Like, it's... it's Steam release is great. Like, I'm happy that it's coming out just to benefit, um, you know, Bay 12... Tarn and Zack, absolutely, but like for my own personal enjoyment, it's not going to add anything, I don't think. I do appreciate recently the looks we've been getting behind the scenes, and um, like the tile set and stuff seems so cohesive that it just seems really satisfying. But again, you know, it's, that's not really going to do all so much for me, I don't think. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's have a look here. So I, I made these bedrooms, I'm going to assign this bedroom and see. Who we got? It looks like... Okay, so... Katten. Is that is this Katten right up, up here? Kibish. I always forget, because this is a weird thing. Another weird... Again, I'm so used to Dwarf Fortress things that I just, like... I get used to some of the weirdness. But if I want to assign this bedroom right here, you're given this list. And the colors are brown and green. And it's like, which ones have bedrooms? Which ones don't? I guess... <laughs> I forget. I think the brown ones have bedrooms. So the green ones do not have bedrooms. It's a weird system, you know? Like, I love Dwarf Fortress. You gotta believe me, I do. Okay, yes. Katten. Katten has a, a bedroom up here. So this guy here, this guy's just sleeping in a bed. Who's this? This is Kibish. And she is sleeping in this bed. I'm gonna assign this room to Kibish. Here you go, Kibish. This is actually your bedroom now. Enjoy it, my friend. And let's see here, we got a Muff Cat. Muff Cat, our exhibition leader. That's gonna be your room. Over here we have Cat All, the broker. That's gonna be your room. And I, I, I was really hoping for like, uh, pairs of dwarves. Like this one here, it's English and Lore Bam. It's a pair. So that's gonna cut down on the numbers of rooms that we need. But I don't think we're gonna encounter a lot of that. Go then, you can live there. Kubuk, there you go, my friend. Katten. Here you go. And a couple more. It looks like... Hmm. We got one, two, three. Three more dwarves who do not have rooms. Uh, sorry guys. That sucks. I really wish you could make, like, uh, stone beds. Honestly. Like, that's not even, that's not a complaint about Dwarf Fortress or anything. Like, I kind of like the challenge of having to, you know, find wood for beds and stuff. Like, it's an interesting challenge. But, like, uh, you, you know, like, wh why couldn't you make a stone bed, really? Like, realistically, when you make a wooden bed, it's just made out of a single log. So it's not going to be comfortable, right? Like, it's just a log. How are they turning a bed into a log that... A, a bed more comf more suitable as a bed than if you were to use just a straight up boulder, you know? Like, think about that for a second. Like, how could you make a bed out of a single log? I guess, 
really, you would just take a log, a nice wide log, and if I was of dwarven proportions, I guess I would just scoop out a little cradle like like a bassinet, like a dwarven baby something or other, right? And just like lay in there, like a little like a little <laughs> bowl shape, right? Like it's not totally comfortable, but I, I, mean, I guess like, I guess it would be something, right? And to that end, you could do the same thing with a stone, right? Just carve a boulder into a little dwarven shape and just like, a, you know, lay in it, right? I mean, I guess I already do that with a coffin. Of course, I'm not awake to feel how uncomfortable it is, so whatever. But like, realistically, if you made a bed, actually, I watched a video on this recently where somebody made a bed and um, it was like a, like a colonial style bed. And I thought it was really fascinating because it gave me better insight into like what the process could be like in Dwarf Fortress. Um, which, I mean, it's, it's not like this in Dwarf Fortress. That's why it requires only a single log. But like, um, <laughs> in real life, you take a wooden frame, right? It's just like a rectangle and you get like the ropes that go across like a little net. Okay, and then on you like, you know, just like lace the rope back and forth a whole bunch and it makes like a little net and then you put the mattress on that, right? And I mean, I guess it's really, it's not too surprising, but it's kind of a neat process. I'd suggest looking it up. I don't have a link for you to watch or anything like that, but I don't know. It's worth looking up, I'd say. This uh, video I watched, it was with these two reenactors and they were putting together this bed and I thought it was pretty fascinating. I'm sure you could find it easy enough if you looked it up. These dwarves just enjoying their bedrooms and stuff. I really like this. This is a nice peaceful place. Like they've got it all prepped for the future, like to house all these dwarves. But for now, it's just this big expansive place. You can hear their echoes ringing through the halls and they're just enjoying what this place is going to look like in the future. I guess maybe thinking about what it will look like and probably trying to keep the idea of the zombies outside out of their minds for now, you know, I would think. Um, oh, back to chat here. Let me take a, take a gander, RQ, like, uh, K Carol, thank you very much, my friend. Can't believe I've been here from the start. I think you helped me pull myself out of a real big depression hole. Thank you, Krug, for all your content. Well, you're very welcome, and I will say the back, say that back to you, actually. If you've been here from the start, then, uh, thank you for being there with me as well. Like, um... Uh, I, th I was talking about it earlier, like, you know, I'm, life's a roller coaster sometimes, and when I started making these videos, I wasn't really in the most pristine of circumstances uh, mentally, and I, I think now I'm doing a lot better, which, you know, hasn't helped helped my upload schedule, because, you know, when I was in those bad places, I was kind of a in a workaholic slump, but, um, or not, not a slump, workaholic trance, I guess, um, but yeah, I'm doing better now. As I, as I was saying before, so like, yeah, thank you for, like, we had, we had teamwork. We all saw, our, saw ourselves through a, saw ourselves through some times together, if that makes any sense. Take what sense you can from that statement. <laughs> this damn siege workshop, get the hell out of here, you depressing thing. <laughs> you didn't work for us at all. <laughs> Peter, Peter, thank you. Thank you, my dude. I love you too, really. It means a lot. You guys are too freaking good. I miss when you would call us all names. What do you mean? What do you mean call you names like you bearded bastard? You bastard? What do you mean when I would call you all names? <laughs> what, like swearing in my, my old Steel Clutches videos there? How crass, how crude. Not on my Christian YouTube channel. Unthinkable. Goodness gracious me. Got a bunch of statues here. Oh, that's right. I, I just ordered these dwarves to start um, smoothing out this level right here. We should really start getting this place prepped for when we get more dwarves in the fortress, in Tomb Spire. I should start calling it by its name, too. Also, we gotta start work on our orangutan effigy at some point. You know what? Between streams here, how about this? I, I want to continue this fortress. As I was saying before, though, I actually... I, can't even believe it's nearing three now but i got like a half hour left before i gotta hop off of here um maybe i'll make this this thursday streaming thing regular i don't know what do you think would that be cool um uh, maybe we could just do that maybe make a thursday streaming sort of a thing and i can like work on videos too and like do those as well um i don't know i was thinking of maybe trying to turn this stream vod into like a 
edited video of some variety. Maybe do some drawings and stuff for it. I don't want to give you any big ideas about it, but I don't know. Maybe it'd be something we could do. Unsure. Unsure. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I think a regular streaming schedule might be something that's uh, pretty cool to do. Wouldn't it be? Yeah. Man, you guys are freaking great, huh? Kesu, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for the content. Are going to do the long night someday? Love the atmosphere on that one. I hope to. Wouldn't that be cool to do on stream, though? You get to, guys get to see all the... <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Maybe I should do, um, like, a Halloween stream or something like that at some point. Like, maybe not even Dwarf Fortress. I, um, the last stream I did, I had <laughs> brought it up very briefly, but, like... Somebody asked about like scary games or something like that and I was just saying how I don't handle scary games very well at all. Like it's it's actually horrible and like I don't know. It's really bad. I um I got one of those Oculus things, right? My uh uh oh. What is this? Why is someone anguished? What is your problem? What's your problem right now? One second, one second, I gotta check on this dwarf here. Why are you anguished, my friend? Uh, oh god, that's not good. That's actually a terrible trigger warning. Uh, Jesus. So, uh, this dwarf, I guess, suffered a miscarriage. That's horrendous. I, I've only ever seen that one other time in Dwarf Fortress. Go figure it happens now. A real freaking stream bummer, huh? I don't know why that happened. I don't know what causes that. Our, our, our dwarves are well nourished. They have food. They got drinks. I don't know what causes that. Um, you poor dwarf. That, that adds a bunch of character and makes that dwarf very endearing, though. Uh, here, who, who's this? Lorbam. Lorbam the clothier. This is the clothier. Okay. Okay. Finish up some work. I'm very satisfied. Let's see. Lorbam is with Ingish here. This is that family that came in with the two children. So they've got two children, two children, Katten and Faf. Uh, boy, man, I don't, I don't particularly like getting very attached to dwarves. Okay, because you get attached to them, and then some stupid stuff happens. But I'm, I'm getting attached already. It kind of stinks that we're like stuck in this little ass fortress with <laughs> just a few faces. Because now I'm starting to really like these guys, and if something happens to them, like this horrible zombie siege that's just outside, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be pretty anguished myself. But it's fine, that's why we gotta, we gotta strive forward and protect them and do our best for these dwarves, right? No more, no more careless antics. Gotta do our best. Anyways, what was I saying? Uh, scary games. Scary games are terrible. And I don't, I don't handle them very well. Uh, I was just playing the other day. I, <laughs> I got an Oculus, right? And I put in, uh, what the hell's that game called? Dread Halls? That game's terrible. That game's really bad. Big time. I can't handle that at all. Like, in the least. Really bad. Uh, I, I had booted it up, right? And... I opened up a door, I think, and I like I walked through the door, and then like the, the hallway turned to the right, and I looked around the right, and I could see another hallway branching off to the left, and I just see something. There was something that like swooped past the doorway real quick, and I was like, no, and I, I'm like trying to like power off the thing really quick, and whatever it was started walking out, but I, I didn't even see what it was or anything. I was too panic stricken at that point. I can't do it, man. Like, I'd like to be like, nah, it's no big deal. It's just a video game, but. I'm gonna shoot you straight, right? <laughs> I can't handle, I can't handle that stuff. That being said, I think it might be fun to do something like that on the stream if I like commit to it or like, if I did like a charity stream or something, it was like, hey, I'm gonna play scary games for a while and just donate to charity or something, we'll do it for Halloween. Like I'm fleshing this thing out way too much for something that I don't wanna do at all. But, um, Anyways, yeah, if I did something like that, then I, I would kind of be forced to do it, right? And you could all watch Krug Smash literally die on stream. It would be fun for a lot of people. It would be memorable. <laughs> hey, spring has arrived. Excellent. Woohoo. There we go. 
I'll tell you. Hey, look at that. The siege is over. Okay, I thought that might happen. There they go. Hopefully these zombies now make their way off the sides of the map. I hope they take all of their filthy ghouls with them. And they should. They should. I think we're going to get started on a wall. Like ASAP. It looks like all the zombies are making their way off the map right now. We've got these three, four wretched ghouls right here now. Um, the intelligent undead are gone. Good. <sighs> okay. Okay. We're good. The zombies are gone. What the hell time is it? It's 2.35. Okay, we still got a half hour. We still got some time to play around with. Alright, I was going to say, okay, maybe I should end it here. But no, no, no. I'm not going to. I won't do that to you. Let's see. Um, we've got a bunch of dwarves down underground. I am going to, real quick, like, I'm going to take everyone. I was going to say take them off that duty. But I'm just going to cancel this uh, cancel this order. How about I'm going to not have these walls be smoothed out at all. There we go. Okay, there we go. Everyone back into the fortress. We got 40 drinks. We got some food. Got some other crap. What we are going to do is start work on a wall. But what kind of wall? Got a bunch of... I mean, we could say wood. Obviously, wood would be a good idea. Wood would be good. Um, okay. Okay. I, I I like to bite off way more than I can chew, which is something, a habit of mine that I've identified but have yet to temper. I like to bite off way too much more than I could ever possibly chew. It's just kind of how I be, I suppose, and it's the way I roll. I'm going to cut down some of these trees over here. Okay. Uh, do do. I'm gonna cut down some of these ones over here. Right over here. And these guys right over here. Cut down all these trees. Okay, we're gonna make a nice little area for us. Uh, let me see. No, no planting seeds. Right, I forgot I set these guys to, um, doing some sort of farming duty, but we're not gonna do that anymore. Woodworkers. Get back up on the surface. We want you, uh, cutting down some trees ASAP. And as for you miners, we're going to get you downstairs, and we're going to smooth out this coastline a tad, just so we can build a nice wall, have it be straight, and uh, something. It's going to be straight and easy to build on, because, you know, building above-ground structures in Dwarf Fortress is really fun. I enjoy it an awful lot, but it's also an extreme hassle. And it kind of goes along with the uh, whole biting off more than I could chew thing. Like, sometimes I will plan off, plan like a, like a mega structure or something and it just gets to be way too much. Um, you'll see what I mean shortly, probably, when it comes to building this wall. First thing I'm going to do is uh, smooth out this, this coastline right over here. There really isn't that much bad in this area, huh? It's just like, I guess sieges will pop up every once in a while, but it's, it's manageable enough. Not so bad. Not so bad. Take a look here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to start work on this wall. And I'm going to make it just kind of like this right here. Okay. Wood. We're going to go with wood because, I mean, it's all over the place up here. It'd be a shame to not use it, right? B. C. W. Okay. Uh, I would like to make it not such a boring layout, like a big square. I don't like doing that, if possible. Tell you what, we'll just get started up here in the north. I'm going to speed things up a little bit, too, just so we can see how much we can get done in this last uh, 20, 20, 20 minutes or so. There we go. Get to it, dwarves. Let's see how fast you can mine. Oh, right, still got the burrow on, damn it. That's why they're not going outside. There we go, get up on the surface. There you go, good dwarves, off with you. There they go, mining, mining, mining away. There you go, bunch of good dwarves, bunch of good dwarves. Excellent work. Take a look at this job list real quick and unsuspend some of this stuff. There we go, we're gonna put those beds down underground too. That's, that's excellent. You know, maybe I should do that, actually, while we're at it. Uh, I'm gonna set up another job to come underground and I'm gonna 
make a pile that accepts like literally everything. Uh, we'll do furniture, sure. Ammo, why not? Coins. No, 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 not that, not that. Finished goods, leather, cloth, weapons, armor, sheet, all that. I'll make a big custom pile right over here, just so we can get all that stuff that's up in the trade depot and stuff crammed underground. So we're not running into this issue where we're trying to like run out and deal with zombie crap and you know, we don't wanna do that. We'll make another big wall right over here. Is he biting off more than he can chew? The question I have to ask myself frequently. Probably, probably. Just gotta be aware it's one of my proclivities, I, su I suppose. Okay, another big chunk of wall right here. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm already redoing parts of the wall, but I think I should make the gate right here. How about, uh, do I wanna do that though? I'm not sure if that is what I wanna do. Maybe I'll make a, make a tower here at the corner. How's that sound? It would be cool actually to get this be, to be like a, like a stone wall, you know? I think that'd be cool. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six. Okay. One more. We can't have these walls be irregular in shape. That'd be monstrous. Who would even do that? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I'm like that. Okay. That's looking pretty dandy, ain't it? Brian Butler, thank you very much. Maybe some wandering wild boar man will stop by and offer advice on how to better prepare for these sieges. An overly complicated well, perhaps? This stream looks looks and sounds great. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe that could happen. Or possibly a slug man. For those of you who weren't here earlier, um, there was a slug man adventurer out in the wilds. They're still out there somewhere. But, uh, you know... We kind of, uh, what happened with that? Uh, they were out and about and just decided to settle down, right? That's how it came, came, that's how it ended, right? Like, didn't really do anything too fantastic to end it. The, uh, slug man that we were playing as had a whole bunch of ape and monkey friends and had a pretty rough encounter with a moose that they barely survived and then decided to just settle down after that like maybe this adventuring life is too much for a little slug man eh hey an elven caravan maybe maybe you'd like some wooden crafts hmm I'm, I'm sorry i guess we don't really have that much to trade with you my friends maybe they brought something cool though it's gotta be worth a look right let's have a look they got a dingo and a cougar that's it for the animals but um other than that let me see Bunch of clothing, clay, fruits and nuts. We really don't have that much to trade with you, unfortunately. They brought some cool animals. I might be uh, tempted to scrape up something, but you know, they don't really have that much. Not too interested, I guess. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I had said before, hey, we're not going to do a big square f wall, but here we are. It's kind of square. How many is that? One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that it? Is that the... I gotta make sure I'm doing this thing even, right? Probably not. It's probably fine. One, two, three. <laughs> you know what? It's it's gonna be fine. This one's gonna be a little bit bigger. It's not gonna help us sleep at night, but it's fine. This one here is gonna be like our main wall, or our, our main, uh, our main tower. So this one's gotta be bigger, right? This one's gonna be faced out towards the zombie scourge. So it's gotta be bigger. We don't really have an option. Maybe we'll make, oh, wouldn't that be cool if this instead of a tower is going to be like our, um, like the main gate? I think that'd be cool. Yeah, we'll do that. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. I'm liking how this is going. I'm really liking this. Yeah, 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 okay. So we'll go like, uh... Did, 
Just like this. Okay. And then just like this. Okay. Okay. You still with me? Gotta get rid of these. We'll make a couple of narrow little gates in. Okay. I like this. And over on the western side here, I'm gonna make another gate. Doop, doop, doop. We'll do these ones three wide, just for the hell of it. BCF, one, two, three. Oops. Two, three, there we go. How's that? I like that. So we're gonna have this be the main gate, I think. And uh, we'll have two gates leading out and two gates leading in, just for the hell of it. There's no real purpose, I guess. Just might be fun. I think it'll be cool. I'm gonna build a couple walls over here too. What was that? Got a little uh, item blocking site. This is gonna happen a bunch. Yeah, it's gonna happen a bunch. This is what happens when you build above ground structures. You get that um, item blocking site thing a whole bunch. What I'm gonna do here is actually channel out a little farther. Just get rid of this ground here. We don't need all this this soil here gonna make it a little bit harder because like if we have a wooden wall going up um, it's gonna be pretty easy for enemies to climb over especially zombies they're gonna be hanging around out here and stuff so you know what we want to do is just channel away as much as we can of the outside so they don't get any funny ideas you know maybe not a full-on moat but at least if we have it like this then oh, migrants hey migrants where are you down there down to the south wonderful Come on in, you bearded bastards. One, two, three, four, five. Got some animals. Six, seven, eight. Oh my god. Okay, slow down. Nine, ten, eleven. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, okay. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, okay. Our fortress has basically doubled in size. Uh, and then some. We're up to thirty-two now. That's from fourteen. Okay. We're now a hamlet. Yikes. All right. Wait, oh. that's something. We should probably get to work again, doing some stuff down underground, eh? Uh, actually, you know what? You know what's really important is we gotta set up some more traps and stuff. Actually, okay, so that's kind of the purpose of this wall, right? Is to uh, maybe make a, a system that we can use to funnel undead into an area. Maybe like this will be good, so we can be up on the surface for a while. That sort of stuff. Yeah, we're just gonna stick to that for now. We're gonna work on a big moat, work on this wall, and work on our gatehouse so we can have a way to funnel some undead into a trapped hull of some variety, right? Worst comes to worst, this way we can still be outside during zombie sieges, get a little bit of that fresh necrotic air from this <laughs> evil area. It'll work out. It'll work out. You'll see. You'll all see. It'll be fine. There we go. Okay. You're going to get to work on that moat over there. Continue this wall down to the south. Where we're going to find another corner. I'm hoping this thing isn't too, too big. Maybe we should just get rid of this wagon, all these workshops and stuff, and move things up slightly. Yeah, all this stuff. We're going to get rid of all that. Just, like, keep that corner down there. Um... Pretty, pretty barren. Just have it to be the way down into the fortress, I think. Let's see. Yeah, you guys in chat are great. I love you. Wonderful. Uh, hey, Krug. See, uh, cool to see you streaming. Appreciate all the good work you do and how enjoyable you make it to watch. Well, I try my best. Dwarf Fortress isn't exactly the most watchable game, believe it or not. <laughs> I mean, look at it. <laughs> I love the game, but it is rough. Let me see here. Okay. So, one, two, three. I'm going to try to make this this tower down here. I'm going to do this for you. You guys, I'm going to try to make this symmetrical, okay? Uh, maybe I'll put it... Actually, I don't want to make it too far down, but... I guess I kind of got to. It's fine. It'll be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go like this, right? We're gonna do it like that. 
Man, oh man. It, it's kind of nightmarish to build above ground structures sometimes. It just, it takes a lot of, uh, like micromanagement and stuff. Like, see these walls are floating out above, or out, um, yeah, above, like, air pretty much. So you kind of got to go and, like, figure out a way to get up there for the dwarves and stuff. And, like, this isn't the most efficient way to go about it. It's kind of, I don't know. It's not the best way to go about it, but it's, it's going to get the job done. It's going to get the job done. gonna do it like this so that the wall reaches the ground and I think that's gonna be fine okay, I have a, I'll have one entrance into the tower and we can also get started on the floor in here oops accident sorry gotta get rid of that there we go try again sometimes I do walls instead of floors and if I don't catch it in time, it can be kind of a mess, but we were lucky this time. I'm gonna build some stairway in the middle here. Let me see. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna do actually a up down stair. Because there is a little bit, bit of space down in the basement of this tower. And it'd be kind of cool to do something down there. Not that there's much space at all, but I kind of like that. I like little, uh, little spaces in Dwarf Fortress that, like, dwarves wouldn't necessarily go. I don't know why. That's actually kind of a weird thing to even like but like uh, little like back alley tunnels or like water systems and stuff it just kind of neat I can explain it no farther than that I'm sorry I'm sure there's a lot of questions let's see here um, dream has been great how much more time we got uh, I guess like nine minutes I'm sorry I'm having a great time actually I'm glad you guys are having a good time too but got some family coming over. We're going to be doing some stuff. I will, um... Uh, did, did, did. No one tell him the lower part of the east wall doesn't match up with the top. What are you talking about? Give me a damn second. Oh, oh boy. We've got a, got a strange mood here, my dwarves. It looks like it's Datan. Who is that? Datan. Datan, bone doctor, new dwarf. Have not assigned them an actual job yet. Well, my friend, I'm not too sure what their plan is. Hmm. Oh, crap. See, I didn't mean to do that. This dwarf is just locked here underground. One second, one second. Got some stuff to sort out here. Oops. Oop. There we go. I'm gonna make an upstair right here. And th this this wall does line up. What do you mean? You, you crazy. There we go. I didn't even need to make this stairway over here, I wasn't thinking. You just build it from the inside. I forgot, forgot there was going to be ground on this level here, but yeah, that's, that's fine. Look at that, this thing's coming together pretty well, actually, this whole uh, wall thing. What I'm going to do is build, uh, I'm going to continue this moat over this way here. We're going to dig straight through where this pond is, and we're just going to keep going. Take it over this way here, over to the main gate. Just like that. It's gonna work out. Okay. Just like that. And... Hmm, 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 hmm. We're gonna get that dwarf. Okay, that dwarf is up now. No problem. We don't need any of these stairways. It was stupid of me to even build them. So I'm gonna get rid of those real quick. Back above ground, though. I guess... Okay, we're gonna build one more tower. Like over here, like this one we got. Okay. Actually, I gotta I gotta line things up first. One second. I think it'd be cool too to make this wall be like a. Here, one second, one second. I'm just thinking. Using way too much energy to think. I think it'd be cool too to make this wall like two spaces wide instead of just the one. You know, unnecessary, but. We could also make it a little bit higher if we do that too, which would be cool. And uh, would be a little safer, you know? Tougher to crawl over. If you make a wall in Dwarf Fortress out of like smooth stone blocks, it's harder to climb up than like, 
if you make it out of rough boulders, which makes sense. Uh, r rarely the case in Dwarf Fortress, but in this case, yes, it makes perfect sense. Um, that it would be harder to climb up smooth stone. It's actually even more difficult to climb up like smooth natural stone. Like if you carve a place into stone and you know just have a, a cave wall, it's harder to climb up that smooth natural cave wall, which I think is cool. Uh oh, looks like the sex bots came back. Get out of here, you. I don't need you. Hide user on channel. Get out of here, sex bot. <laughs> back to hell where you belong. They're out of here. No worries. Five minutes. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep streaming. Keep going, dwarves. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully gonna carve out that. We've just ignored the, the elves this whole time, which is kind of rude, but it's also like whatever. Okay, we carved through this pond. That's why all this water is here. It's kind of draining out now down towards the ocean. Man, I'm really hoping to make some progress on this before those zombies come back. You know, I just want to get this thing done. Let's see. Okay. Okay. We're going to drain out another pond from the looks of it. That'll be fine, though. Actually, we should be a little bit more uh, judicious with, the, with how we're doing this. Because if we start... If you know, a dwarf comes over and starts digging the pond immediately, there's a good chance they'll fall in. So I'm going to carve it out for just from the side here. And then after this is carved out, we'll start to work on the pond and it'll drain out in this big open area so a dwarf won't just fall into water. You know, a little safer. How are we looking at our stocks? We have plenty of drinks. Look at that, dwarves. That's great. Uh, going to gather some plants. We have our plant gathering area over here, which is still highlighted. Um, do we have nobody gathering plants right now? Oh my god, our strange mood, I forgot. <laughs> what an idiot. Here, have a look, one second. Uh, let's see, I don't know what kind of workshop this dwarf needs. Hmm. I'm, oh, you know what, I was going to say, I'm inclined to think they need a craft dwarf workshop, but we have one up top, which we don't. We don't have a craft dwarf workshop anymore. I'm going to build one real quick. Let's see. I'm hoping they build it. ASAP. Is that what you're doing? There's a dwarf. Wonderful. Now, let's see, is the bone doctor on their way? They are. Okay, cool. Off with you. Claim the workshop. Let's see how they do. They're off, they're collecting stuff. I think this is going to be a pretty easy one. Let's see what they got. This is a, a water buffalo bone. Going up here, just soaked with water, aren't you, my friend? My goodness. <laughs> That's him with graves. This is a just water buffalo bone. That's it. Okay, there you go. Off with you. Get to work. Mm, 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 mm. Taking a look here. One second. We really got to get these walls done before the zombies come back. I am increasingly paranoid every second that passes. Right now, we're we're in mid-spring, and they just left at the beginning of spring, but they can come back, like... When did they come last time? I'm trying to remember. We saw the first Dwarven wagons came in autumn, right? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm not too sure. I think they normally come in winter, but I don't think that's always the case. I am unsure. Yeah, I was saying before that I was um, not going to try to make a just a plain old rectangular base, but I think that's what we're going to go with. Just for simplicity's sake, we really have to be quick on this. Maybe after we get ourselves a bit more situated, we can worry about making a nice fancy above ground structure, but for now, this is just going to have to be fine. Like the towers aren't even necessary. Why am I doing that? Like we have su such more, we have much more important things to be worrying about. <laughs> Dumb. Okay, let's see here. One, two, beyond. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see. Tell me. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm trying to line it up, guys. Wait a second. Wait a second, Leah. Okay. Just like this. Mm 
There we go. Oh, okay. Isn't that lovely? Gonna have one little door peeking upwards, just like that. Let's add some floors in here. Oh my, ain't that lovely. I think so. Looking good, dwarves. Looking real good, I say. Let's get some of these trees chopped down out the front of our gate here. In a hurry, too. Let's get to it, dwarves. Those zombies could be coming back any second now. If we're not ready, then it's going to be a whole nother year underground, and I don't want to do that. It's good to reference the J job list here to see what jobs are suspended. You can go through this list and hit S on each of the suspended jobs to unsuspend them. It's pretty quick. I notice it's three right now, but I don't want to stop playing. It's fun for me. I've got family coming over. I have said this a couple times now, and I should realistically, you know, be preparing and cleaning. Oh my God, this guy has not started the artifact yet. Um, Let's keep on task here for a minute. Let's, let's focus on the important stuff. This dwarf needs metal bars, okay? You already got some bones, need metal bars. This is gonna be a totally awesome artifact. You can tell already, you got bones, you got metal. I mean, you can't lose, really. We don't have metal bars, okay? We don't, we have nothing to speak of. So, what we have to do is make a wood furnace. I'm gonna bang out a wood furnace real quick. Port site. Can someone get to work on that, please? That'd be just stellar. Of you. Our clothing's looking pretty bad. Problem for another day. I'm not gonna look at that quite yet. <laughs> Ignore it. It's fine. Let's have a look here. Wood burning. Um, gonna turn that on. Okay. I'm hoping the dwarf comes up here and builds this place really quick. It needs an architect, not wood burning, but there we go. I, I think somebody's gonna get started on this real quick. Uh, gonna have to build a smelter too, actually. I wasn't even thinking. We'll do that over here. And I'll make you be a smelter as well. Look at this horribly unoptimized layout with my 17 idlers. <laughs> Nobody's working. Everyone's just lazing about. It's good though. It's good. You know, they like to relax. Take some time off. All right, can I get more of these trees cut down while we're at it? We can really clear out the front. We gotta finish up that moat because we don't want people climbing over the walls. Realistically, too, we should probably be laying some boards down at the bottom of this uh, this moat so more trees don't grow up. You know, then stuff can like you know climb up the trees and get over the walls. It'd be a whole thing. Don't really want to deal with that. Uh, Oh, God. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Someone died. A major artery in the heart has been opened. Oh, no. I'm sorry, my friend. It looks like somebody died cutting down trees. Who was that? Shem. Shem Fabumlorbam. We have to get this interred quickly. Our first corpse. The first corpse of Toon Spire. Hmm, not exactly a momentous death, but it's one to be memorized, to be memorialized regardless. We'll have to do something interesting with this body. Well, on that note, my beauty bastards, I think we're actually going to cut things to a close here. We have our fortress pretty much situated. We have our main gate. We have our moat going up. We have, I just noticed that north wall has that little bend in it. That's got to be nerve-wracking, huh? I didn't even realize I did that one, but, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess we're going to call things... Hey, thanks for joining me today. I, uh, I, I, I guess I'm gonna do this again next Thursday, bright and shiny. First thing in the morning, we're gonna go until I'm done. Maybe a little bit longer than this one, but yeah, we'll play it by ear. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time, you bearded bastards. And I said that way too soon because I don't know how to shut off the stream quite yet. One second. Uh, 
And until, <laughs> until next time, you bearded bastards. Um, 